Hello, everybody, and welcome to Save or Die Outcast. This is our live game here in Toronto, and we're going to do our very first session of Outcast. So, we've rolled before. Here we got some character sheets. Lucas. Thank you. Nick. Thank you very much. Jamie. Thank you. And Jan. Thank you. All right. So, uh, just a quick, who are we and why are we here? We've already talked a little bit about our characters, but uh, let's start with Nick. Just give us a quick intro on, on who you are. So. On who I am? Well, on your, who your character my is. Character, okay. My character is Arrakis. He's a normal individual village person who has, through exceptional circumstance, found himself being trained in the wizard schools of the Varasi Empire. He is a shadow specialist. Uh, he's a red robe mage, which what that means will come out, I think, as we play through mm -hmm. the game. Um, he's a bit of an outsider. He's got himself into some troll with the law, and so he's kind of, uh, yeah, he's an outcast. All right. And, uh... <coughs> I am Renatus Fur. I am a thief. Uh, I did have a previous life, although not much is known about it, um, because I like to keep that to myself, but Basically, you know, I had a wife, I had kids, and through circumstances that I couldn't necessarily control, I found myself living in the wilderness where I made some interesting friends. And right now I live in the margins of society, you know, stealing, mugging, getting by however I can, because at this point it's about survival. Um, there may be sort of bigger things in my past that may come to light, but that'll be more of something to discover as we go on. Excellent, excellent. And can we go with you, Mr. Mouton? Yeah, I'm going to be playing Garp. Um, he's a bullywug, uh, and he is shrouded in much mystery. He's a fighter, and he has a halberd. So hopefully through the campaign, you all can um, kind of just explore him and learn who he is. Okay. Bullywug. You, can you tell us what a bullywug is for those that don't know? Yeah, yeah, a bullywug is basically like a frog monster. So this is a... Frogman, who is walking around and um, fighting. And uh, we have a picture of our Bullywug yeah. for our players who have not seen what a Bullywug <laughs> looks like. Look at that tongue. That's why he's got 18 charisma, 18 hotness. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Oh. My Bullywug is, uh, one thing I will share, he is 18 hotness Bullywug. Nice. Um, he is the most beautiful Bullywug a Bullywug will ever see. Sexiest yeah. frog in the world, man. What's like the modifier for a human looking at a Bullywug? Oh, it's going to be bad. He's it's got six bad. charisma. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. So humans will find him attractive, but if he ever runs into another Bullywug, they're going to be like, Ooh, I'm going to fuck you. Like, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, what was your Bullywug's name again? His name is Garp. Garp. Yep. All right. And going along with that same naming plature. Yes. Um, I will be playing Growl. Growl is a bear. He is a glacier bear, which is a subspecies of American black bear. Um, so he's not the biggest bear. He's not the most threatening bear. Um, Growl had something happen to him at some point in his life. He doesn't really remember what happened, but he knows that one day he was smarter and he was able to turn he had powers to turn into humanoids, into a human. He could turn into an orc, and he could turn into a forest gnome. And at first he was very confused as to what was going on, and he felt very weird about it. But eventually, as a bear who's wandered into settlements a lot, he noticed that if he turned into one of these forms and walked into a human settlement, they wouldn't shoo him out, they wouldn't fight him, they would be nice to him and give him food. So he learned over time to get accustomed to these settlements and to get better at getting going in there and getting food. And he's right now at a point in his life where he's kind of figured out how to hang out with humans a little bit, although they probably all think he's weird. But all the bears he's hanging out with also think he's weird. So he doesn't really fit in anywhere. He doesn't really know where to go. And you could say maybe he's a bit of an outcast. Uh. <laughs> he said it. He, he said, said the name. He said, he said the name. name. <laughs> all right, everyone take a drink. <laughs> yes. Mm. All right, so we're going to start off our campaign. Um, we are playing in the world of Arcadia on the mega continent of Solemn in this area that is surrounded by the Devouring Marsh. Now, if you look on our map over here, this uh, green outline with blue streaks is the Devouring Marsh, and it kind of forms a, a horseshoe, and we're going to be playing on the inside of this horseshoe. Uh, this is a, a separate kingdom which has been brought into the Verasi Empire. Its capital is a place called Veilbrook. 
um, and it, it's recently been renamed. It used to have a different name, but when the empire came in and conquered it, they, they changed the capital name as sort of a sign of like, we're here now, we're in charge. Um, but we're not working, we're not starting in the capital. We're starting in the middle of the swamp. And if our players will look at this map, and we'll get it for the viewers at some point, um, the swamp has a very narrow choke point over here. It's fat on the other sides. This choke point is called the mouth? The maw, the maw. It's actually the called maw. the maw. The maw. Yeah. Conveniently, <laughs> it's been called the maw for ten years, and then you had your maw religion in the last campaign, and we is where it started. Conveniently <laughs> playing in the area. Is, sorry, going. are these mountains? You said this is swamp. swamp. This is swamp. This but is you can swamp. cross through here. Right. This is the narrow place, and there is sort of a there's a large business involved in getting people through people and goods through the maw, which is tough. And I think some of you have been working, maybe moving things through that swampy area. It's like watery with low ground and there's burrowing monsters. So the landscape is constantly changing and there's like bridges that have been built, but then like they decay in a year or so. And so it's always, it's a mess and it's a dangerous place and there's monsters there. But there's also this tower on one side of it. And that is where we're gonna be starting our campaign. There is a half elf wizard named Autumn, who resides in that tower. And most of you, we'll get to you in a moment, Nick, know this person. Okay. Grau, you have a friend, that's this wizard, yes. who has helped you navigate the ways of society. When you show up and you just say, give me food and people shoo you away, yes. you have someone that you can be like, why did they do this? Yeah. Autumn, the half-elf, she's nice. She's a red-robed wizard, which means she's not good, she's not evil, she's somewhere in between. She's in it for herself, <clears throat> not in for herself, but in it for exploration and you know, in investigation of magic. Um, and she lives in this tower, and she's been a, a friend of yours. She's got, she's a pretty good mage. Every now and then you will find like a little bird, come, well actually, with you, you'll have a, like a gust of wind that will like come by your little encampment somewhere, and it'll be like, <clears throat> Autumn wants to see you. And I was like, deliver a little message and be like, oh, well, I should make my way over there. Yeah. The two of you, I think, live fairly near to one another, right? Yeah. We are probably in like the same encampment. Yeah. Yes, for sure. And I like to scavenge, you know, sometimes travelers try to brave the swamp alone. And mm -hmm. I find them and sometimes they're not whole, but I just take what I need from them. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do to get by in this difficult world. 100%. The two of you will sometimes get a little bird with a, a scroll attached to its ankle, wrist, leg, um, that'll like come by and just sit in your camp for a couple hours to a day and then you can like take off the scroll and then the bird will stay there until the spell expires and it'll fly off. Mm. And it'll let you know that Autumn wants to see you because she is interested in the two of you. She's also, you know, half elf. She's a little bit of an outcast herself. She lives in the swamp. She has some jobs from time to time and the two of you actually fit in really well with the sort of people she likes to work with. She really enjoys the like, just a step removed from society. Like she yeah. lives in the swamp for a reason. She's not like hanging out in cities, you know? Do we feel like she's like a high level wizard or have we like met her enough? You have met her enough. She has her own tower in a dangerous swamp and she like has spells that last for multiple days and reach out to you okay. from pretty far. So, so yeah, we feel like she's like huge, yeah. She, she's she got some power. Um, I don't think you know exactly where it is with the Two of you each roll me an intelligence check. I am rolling at minus one. <laughs> no, no, you are rolling a d20 rolling plus a d your plus entire 10. intelligence Oh, stat. that's right. Uh, 16 plus eight, that's 24. That's very good. I'm gonna be rolling with my saber die dice for the first mm. time. Oh, that's right. Uh, that's gonna be 15 plus 10, 25. Lucky 24 dice. and 25. <laughs> Check my notes over here. Those are the books we need to seal. Yeah, yeah. 100%. <laughs> okay. Where is it? Oh, it's in here somewhere. <laughs> um, you have noticed an unusual thing about this wizard with your, your time with her. Um, which one was it over here? Okay, this is what it is. Um, the little bird that shows up to deliver a message to you, you have both seen this spell before mm -hmm. um, in play. It is not a wizard spell. It is a cleric spell. But this woman is obviously a wizard, so yeah. half-elf, she might be multi-classed wizard cleric. Beyond, Maybe there's yeah. something else going on. 
Um, but she does end up using cleric spells in addition to wizard spells from time to time. So I would feel a bit of curiosity. I would be like, ooh, that's kind of unusual for a wizard to do this. Yes. In fact, half elves are the only race that can multi-class with two spellcasters at a time. Got it. Oh. Okay. Yeah. But it's super rare. Like yeah. if you meet one, it's probably the only one you'll ever meet in your entire life. It's mm -hmm. ultra rare. But okay. you do notice that she has both. She is a wizard in the swamp as well, which is an ultra rare thing. So. Yes. Yeah. She's a bit of a, a, a curiosity. And we'll, yeah. we'll get to know Autumn over the course of the campaign. Maybe if you like working with her. Maybe we'll kill her. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we doing next, boys? <laughs> um, Nick. Yes. You're new to the area. You're okay. much newer to this area. So am I passing through? I'm sort of on the move, trying to stay out of... You're on the move, trying to stay out. You've recently passed from the north side to the south side of the swamp, um, and you were in this town right here at the edge. The town is called Keygate, and it's where all the goods move back and forth through the swamp, at least on the, the southern side. Okay. Um, and I think while you were there, you saw a, a poster that was like looking for work, specifically looking for a wizard to help me out with something. Okay. And uh, you. The campaign doesn't work unless you've taken this job. So you have taken this job. Yeah, I think probably I've been traveling for a little while. My funds are running low. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really have much gold left. So probably upon reaching this town, I'm looking for work. Mm -hmm. Spend maybe a day or two there, run across this poster. Yes. Um, looking for a wizard. You know, there's probably no other wizards in this town that can fill that role. So yes. I think maybe I'll, uh, I'll go and check it out. Yes, uh, and the posting would have said, you know, I will meet you on the way through the swamp at the halfway point. And so you just started to head back through the swamp, and sure enough, there's this uh, half-elf, red-robed wizard. Um, so what, what do I see her tower first? No, no, you'll see her first, and then she'll lead you through the swamp to her tower. Oh, okay. So she was just, like, waiting for him. Yeah, well, he doesn't know the way, so she knows that she needs a wizard for for some work here, and so she went out to meet him part way. And then you've been guest in her house, in her castle, in, okay. her, in her tower, for a couple of days while the others have arrived, because she has some work, and you guys are gonna be the ones to do it here. What is, uh, what is my impression of her? Well... She seems truthful, or does she seem like she's hiding things? Is she interested in my background? Yes. So why don't we just start with you meeting Autumn? Because you'll meet her in the swamp and she'll just say, you know, come this way with me. And the water is sort of, you know, it's murky. She'll wade up to her knees in the swamp and then she'll like walk you through this area where it's dry land. And then you'll see some boards that you can walk across. And she hasn't really asked you too much while you're on the road. Like you took the job and you were willing to come into the deadly swamp and then follow a random red robed wizard somewhere. Sure. Um, so like, you're probably good enough. And maybe she's taking you back to her tower to devour you. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, so do we make some small conversation? On yeah, the, what on would the... you, yeah. What are you interested in asking her? She well, I think when we get here, you know, it's uncomfortable we're wading through the swamp. So I see her and I know she's a half elf. She's wearing red robes, so I immediately know. So I say, you're the, you're the person looking for a wizard, right? I am, yes. Uh, you're the man who is, uh, took the job. Yeah, I'm here. How far away are we from your house? This place is uh, pretty inhospitable. Yes, it is. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you chose it. On yes, purpose. I did. <laughs> well, there's a refurbished tower here. It's refurbished now. Moved in, found the place was a dump, had to rebuild it a little bit, used a little stone shape here, a little that over stone there. Shape. Yeah, you know, a little fabrication. It's fine. It's great. It's a good tower now. You sound like a powerful mage. Oh, you're flattering me. What, do you, no. uh, what do you need me for? The post didn't say much. I have um, some friends coming to help pick up some supplies, uh, and they are just the loveliest bunch of people you'll ever meet. They are, they're just so sweet and so wonderful. Um, but what we're, the job is picking up some glassware for a laboratory, and I really need someone who's actually seen the appropriate glassware to take a look at the inventory to make sure we're getting the right things. The others can handle security and they'll help keep everything safe, but I, I just need a fellow wizard who who knows what the right beaker looks like and who knows not to accept, you know, half quality work. Of course, I'll uh, spend a great time studying in, in laboratories. You don't need to worry about that. Oh, good, good, excellent. These excellent. friends of yours though, are they, uh, they able to keep things to themselves? I'm not really trying to uh, make a name for myself out here. She looks around the swamp. Well, they're my friends, and they, they keep my secrets, so um, 
Well, as long as they do, then we'll be all right. Is there, an, is there anything I should know about you? She says, pausing in the small. <laughs> <laughs> I stop as well, and I'll consider her and say, um, there's nothing you need to know right now. I've okay. had a history. I'm sure you've had one too. Everyone has histories. It's okay. I don't, I don't mind a troubled past as long as you're, you know, working to improve yourself and, and you, you do good work. That's fine. Yes, well, uh, you know, I never did anything wrong. It's more just, well, <laughs> things get out of hand, but... Uh, Don't they? You know how the, you know how they are around here, you know? Why don't you get a check mark against your name? Oh. How long until you're hung up from the gallows, so... Yeah, well, I wouldn't know anything about that, um, but... So you don't, uh, you don't work with, with them? With the state? With well, it's a little hard not to run into them from time to time. Okay. But I... You'll keep my name away from them. What is it, by the way? Arrakis. Arrakis, it's nice to meet you. I'm Autumn. I'll be your hostess and your wizard for a little while while our other friends come along. You don't have a problem with... Um, <clears throat> um, hmm, how do we say this delicately? Uh, uh, unusual sorts, right? What do you mean? <laughs> Well, I mean, some of our guests, some of your, your colleagues, um, she kind of fumbles with her staff, like poking in the water, testing, you know, the spot in front of her. They're just, um, they're, they're a little, they're so sweet. They're so wonderful, but they're just a little unusual. Don't, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I mean, if you're a wizard, you, you've seen. Yeah, I mean, seen... I've got no problem with quirky people. You know, people Perfect. have unusual personalities. That's fine. They certainly you know? do. Yeah, it'll yeah. be great. Yeah. Um, just come on by the tower. There'll be a couple of days. There's some refreshments. Um, it'll be fine. It'll Are we be far fine. out? I don't really want oh, to Oh, you were a couple more hours. Uh, just keep following me. This way, this way. Yeah. And she will lead you through the swamp, little by little. Okay, I go, I go with you. Know, I'm, I'm cautious of this swamp. It feels dangerous. It ought to feel dangerous. Yeah. Um, and you will run into a couple of creatures, but she seems to know the area well enough. And when she sees like there's a, a snake there, she'll pause and like shoo it away with her staff. And um, you don't run across any dangerous creatures on this part of your journey. What does her staff look like? Uh, it's pretty ordinary. It's pretty bland looking. It's just like a stick, stick. of oak that's a little bit twirled from you know being twisted over the. Uh, maybe she shaped it, or maybe it was just a twisted oak yeah. to begin with. So she's not uh, casting any spells during this journey. No, she doesn't appear to be casting any spells during this okay. journey. Um, yeah. Um, I think if I can get a moment while she's like ahead of me walking. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, lots of those. Yeah, I would like to cast a detect magic spell and just check her out and check her out this area just to sort of see. I, I will only do it if I feel like I can do it without being noticed. Well, when you do cast spells, there's a vocal component. Of course, yeah, but I you know if she's, if she's far out. Far okay, ahead, you, like, you can slow down to the yeah, point yeah, where yeah. she's guy. Okay, all right. <laughs> Give him the bad dice. <laughs> <laughs> all right, she does not notice. Great. Um, Players, they'll always throw you for a loop right away, right yeah, at the beginning well, yeah. of a campaign. <laughs> Somebody suggested magic items, and I just thought, yeah, yeah I mean, let me look. Let's have a little quick check. Um, you will notice one active spell effect on her, and what if it's not even her? <gasps> and you will notice uh, the robes are magical that she wears, the red robes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and her sandals are enchanted. Okay. okay. Can you get the school of the magics? Uh, it's ten percent chance per level. You are level two. I am. Uh, we have a uh, percentile. Yeah, we do. Twenty. A D. D hundred. D hundred. Whatever you want. There. Let's go. All right. That's uh, ooh, a ooh a ninety four. So no. Oh yeah. Yeah, low is good. <laughs> okay. So no. That's, no, I mean it's for each effect. So that's for the the effect on her. Then yeah. for the robes. Um, seventy. Nope. No. Nope. On the sandals, forty-four. Nope. Nope. Okay. You okay. don't get any schools. But she's decked out in gear. She's, she's got, got two sand. things. She's got magic two gear. Things. Yeah. Two okay. things. It's not a big. Has he? Oh, where are we in Solemn? Because we don't know, I guess, how common magic is here. Has he ever seen magic before? He's a wizard. I would yeah, assume he's seen some yeah, items. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, the, yeah. Magical items are actually fairly rare these days. Okay. Um, the, this is the Age of Iron. 
Um, this is after the world was sort of torn asunder. In previous ages, there were like vast magical empires. The Age of Might is when all these like great magical items were created. Um, the Age of Heroes is when like the really good magical items were created. Really, I didn't see any in the last <laughs> 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 We didn't even get to see the scroll. <laughs> well, the thing is that in the Age of Heroes, they were only making top tier shit. Got it. And then in the Age of Might, they made the mid tier shit. Got it. Yeah, yeah. That's actually Age of Might is where all of the, the plus one shit was, was made. happening. When you had these empires who were just like, I'm going to make 50 plus one swords for my people. Yeah. That all got created in the Age of Might. Okay, cool. So I think I have a healthy caution of her. She's mentioned some high level spells. She's got some high level. She's got some magic gear. She has a constant spell effect on her. Yeah. She seems someone not to cross. So I will, um, after casting my detect magic spell, I will hang back until it runs out. That's only gonna last um, four minutes. So yeah. I hang back for a little bit. I will catch back up with her. And yeah. I'll, I'll start like making idle conversation with her. I try and sort of endear myself a little bit to her, knowing mm -hmm. that she now is a. Someone to be respected. Yeah, she seems eager to get through the swamp as quickly yeah, as possible. Yeah, yeah. So she, she'll she tolerate some conversations, but then keep you moving. Um, you'll end up in her tower, which is four floors above the ground, and you guys will be here in just a moment. Um, and it's got, you know, at the very top, uh, it comes out a little bit, like there's a, a set of parapets on the top, and then down two floors. So like on the second floor, there's a second like outward set of parapets. It's a little unusual. You've got like... Okay two outward jutting walkabouts that you could go all the way around. All right, I say it. It's a nice tower, given the circumstances. Oh, thank you. You made this yourself? Well, I found it here and I, I refurbished it and I added the, the fence around and the little gardens on the inside and um, yeah, just- You the... don't have trouble with monsters here? No. <laughs> okay, all right, so I can, uh, I can relax, I don't need to take- Just stay within the wrought iron fence. You know, while I'm here, though, I don't need to take combat spells. No. Okay. No. All right, well. Thank as you long as you stay you. within the wrought iron fence. Yes, okay, well, it's fine. You know, it's it's been a while since I've been in a tower. Well, uh, unfortunately, I'll, I'll have to restrict you to the ground floor. Um, the rest of it, you know, it's dangerous. Where there's laboratories, you really have to get to know the area before the other areas could be. It, you could hurt yourself accidentally. I wouldn't want you to be setting off one of the um, innate defenses of the tower, and, and you know, just be terrible if I came downstairs and you were just, you know, filled with darts. That would um, be. It would, it would be a real shame. Upsetting. And you can understand, I might not want to show you where all of the the traps and defenses in my home. Well, are. I appreciate that. It's I'm a, sure we'll get to know each other a little bit. Over the years, you know, maybe in a couple decades, we'll... The de years? Oh, decades. I'm sorry. I... Human, right? Yeah. Oh, right. Short lives. Um, it'll be fine. We'll get to know each other. Okay? Sure, sure. Uh, and then you can hang out here while the rest of them arrive. Uh, you two are coming as a group. You are coming as a solo. So would the two of you roll a d20? Highest roll arrives first. I got a 17. I got a 9. All right. Uh, Garp, and and I have your name written down here, Renatus Fur. Yes, you just call me Ren. 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 Excellent. That was a mouthful. Blah, blah, blah. All right, Ren and Garp, you will arrive next. A couple days later, you've been to this tower many times before. You've come through the swamp before. This is sort of where you work and where you do your stuff. Um, you've had a couple of jobs with Autumn in the past, and they're usually pretty simple, like, I need something picked up. Um, and it's never been a problem. She pays pretty well. She's really friendly. She doesn't judge you for your circumstances. She's a nice lady. Okay. Uh, Ren, uh, walking towards the tower, will walk in silence and not make much conversation with Garp unless Garp initiates. No, Garp will walk in silence as well. Um, we're kind of just heading to the tower. You're just kind of vibing. Yeah. As I'm walking, I'm, I'm actually quite adept at swamp survival, so I'm doing all the things that you would expect. I'm like checking for, sometimes there's a little deeper hole, mm -hmm. sometimes there's things that are lurking beneath, so I'm looking out for I'll all those things. I'll speak up when you do that stuff. There's nothing here, old man. <laughs> We've done this path a thousand times. Why do you keep looking? You don't make it to 60 without being careful. <laughs> I hope I don't make it to 60. <laughs> uh, Ren will smirk and continue walking. Excellent. Yeah. Carefully. We'll get to the tower all open the wrought iron fence. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens. No, it's okay. it's just, it, a fence opens real easy. Like. Okay. Yeah. Um, I open the fence and I will uh, go inside. What do I see? 
Well, inside the fence, which is, you know, it's wrought iron, so there's slats through it. You can see pretty yeah. easily there's a little bit of a garden. There's a couple of trees that provide some shade. Um, there's some nice benches. There's a little fountain that produces clean water that you can drink and, you know, fill vessels from and whatnot. And then you've got the, the big tower with the double, um, I don't know what you would call it, battlements that stick out. You know, one on the fourth floor, top floor, one on the, the yeah. second floor. Um, and then there's a, a big double door in the middle. Uh, it's open, or one door is open, the other is closed, and you probably actually see the wizard. Well, I think I've probably seen her coming through the fence. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think I shout up to Autumn, there's monsters! <laughs> <laughs> and as the door opens, I say, Watch your step, Bullywug. You're not welcome here. Who the fuck are you, old man? <laughs> oh, yeah. Autumn, who's this guest that you have here? You hang out with a monster like this? I say to you. Ren, I just look at you, and it's a kind of very withering look, and I just keep walking. You watch your tongue. I'm no fucking monster. I uh, will take a few steps back out of the room that I'm in, maybe mm -hmm. try and retreat to a different room I'll do, and wait for autumn. I guess to... while you take a few steps back, I will do like a jump forward. Oh, shit. Um, so I, I'll jump like 30 feet, and then I'm Jesus. assuming like you take your steps. It's like a, a huge, like, <laughs> yeah. it's a frog carrying a giant ass yeah. black, yeah. and he like, like uh, hops 30 <laughs> feet in your direction all of a sudden. I mean, uh, when Garp jumps, I will say, Garp, not inside the tower. Let's not, let's not have a repeat of the last time. You two are friends of Autumn? Can you hear me call her name? Does it mean you're friends? Does it mean I'm enemies? You're a fuck. Okay. <laughs> I uh, I cautiously sort of watch them. As he jumps towards me, though. Yeah. After he calls me off. Um, after Ren calls me off. Um, yeah. Like he did jump with his act, his like uh, glaive like this. But once Ren speaks, he'll kind of like pull it back. Up. Yeah. I think I have like a hand in a bag, yeah. trying to pull out components, and then Ren calls him off, and I will. I wave my hand to you and I say, doing. "Diplomacy is better than warfare." And I'll walk over to you and I'll hold my hand out and I'll say, my name is Ren. What's yours? I'm Arrakis. Nice to meet you, Arrakis. Um, Are you a friend of Autumn's? Well, we've just met. I'm here for a job. As you're talking, if you're like in the doorway, I'll walk past you and like shoulder bump you. Okay. Just like shoulder check you past. I'll look you in the eyes and I'll kind of say, young blood, it burns hot. <laughs> Maybe. I'm, uh, I just had a few, a rough couple of months. I've had a rough life. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> I'm on the inside just screaming for Autumn, like just yelling. Yeah, so, yeah. she'll she'll come down the stairs in her red robes. I, uh, I whisper to Ren though after you barge past me and I say, how do you find yourself in the company of a monster? Ren will take a moment to consider. I take a moment to consider what you've said and I say, never judge a bullywug by his spots. <laughs> you notice, though, that Garp has no spots. He is completely olive. It's a good looking He's frog. an olive green. It's, it's a, a good looking, looking frog. Looking yeah. frog. Yeah. You've seen bullywugs in like books, and you always notice them with like those ugly spots. No, he is completely olive green. He's normally got like warts and shit. Yep. And uh -huh. His skin is like so, pure. I think I say, though, um, are you in service with the Empire? Hmm. Service has a connotation I don't like. I serve my need to survive. I do what I have to. Um, they work with monsters. He's not with them, is he? No. Uh, you could say everyone who lives on the fringes of society is a monster. You know, if people see me walking in the street at night, and I'll kind of like indicate the fact that I'm dressed like an outlander, I've got like, I'm a, you know, I'm weathered face. I'm very scarred from obvious combat. And I'm like, people would consider me a monster. Speak for yourself. I'm on the edges of society. I'm a monster. I'm a good <laughs> uh, I'll, uh, Like, I look at you. What do I see? Like, uh, what do you look like? I'm a, a man in red robes. I've got long black hair, um, brown eyes, eyeshadow, uh, carrying a curved dagger. Would so I... Look. Neil, would I consider like the way he's dressed, that would be like unusual in the sense that I would have seen or heard about this kind of thing before? So one thing that all of you will know about wizards, except for Grau, 
because you know you're growl. Because yeah. you're a bear. <laughs> uh, the wizards of this area come in three colors. There's the white robes, the red robes, and the black robes. And these generally show your disposition towards magic. White robes um, consider magic a tool to help others. Black robes consider magic a tool for just sort of natural exploration and understanding of the world. Black robes are usually a little more my magic is to help me. Uh, and vaguely, the white robes are good, the red are neutral, the black is evil. That's kind of like the general vibe, but it's not necessarily the vibe. Like, you could be just sort of a self-centered person who wears black robes, but you're not actually evil and murdering people. You just, you, you're out for yourself a little bit. Yeah. Have we ever heard of a story of like black robes, like dressing in white robes to like lure people in? No, no. Um, but there is a, the, the way the magic system works here is that there's like a set set of education. There are these set wizard towers. And you have to go through a process. Like you, you learn as a young kid and then you go through a trial and then you don the colored robes of the order that you choose. And these, these special towers are erected or the special education centers. They're usually towers, but sometimes they're airships. Sometimes they're water ships. Um, these places will allow you to like come and practice and, and train and learn if you're a wizard and they don't judge and they don't discriminate and so there's sort of like um there's a an network of education yeah and so in these areas like you'll see white robes and black robes and red robes all hanging out together and anyone that like tries to to screw the the social structure is like in big trouble yeah. technically that's the fourth order the brown robes the renegades and they are like sort of they, they, they cannot exist in society because if they're found, they the magic order doesn't work if people don't play along, and so they take care of their own who defy the rules. When I look at a wizard, can I tell their rough like rank and power level in the wizard thing by the no. quality of their robes? Well, you can... Not necessarily. There's, there's not no like ranking a, system. There's no ranking system. You don't have chevrons or bars or anything like that. Um, but obviously, like the nicer robes are definitely worn by like the cooler or at least wealthier wizards. So okay, with all that context, I'll kind of look um, Arrakis up and down, and I'll say a unknown is the source of fear. And a wizard who chooses to walk the path of the center is more dangerous than a wizard who wears the black. Centrist politics again? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I wanted to say a centrist wizard. <laughs> I, uh, I can tell you've never met many black robe wizards. This is when Autumn will come down the stairs. Oh, and good, welcome to Tower Serenity. I'm glad you've met. I, I wish I was here to meet, to introduce you myself. Um, everyone, this is Arrakis. He's new to us. He's gonna be helping you out on your job. Arrakis, this is Ren, and this is Garp. Garp. This is Garp. You said you were okay with this. Yeah, I thought you meant like a thief or something, not a <laughs> fucking bullywood. He's a guest in my house. I get it, okay, we're in the swamp. There's frogs. It's fine. He's Garp. a bullywug. Ren will, I, I will turn to Arrakis and say, um, if you need etiquette lessons, um, I could provide them for you. I then not say etiquette lessons from the people who make their life in a swamp, but listen. Gentlemen, gentlemen, hey. we'll all be working together here, please. I'm sorry, Autumn, I'm sorry, uh, Garp. I'm, I'm a little bit nervous recently. I've been through some shit, but uh, a friend is a friend. And... I don't care. He looks at you. <laughs> yes, um, please don't use Arrakis' name in public, I think you said. He, he's trying to keep a low profile. That would be ideal, yes. Garp will smile a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Garp, uh, th there's one more coming. Don't give him that name. I will give him a different name. I know what you were thinking. <laughs> He'll use my actual name. Arrakis? Well, he needs to be friends. But, yes. But you, you don't, want to, you that don't want us to use it. Well, not in public, but you can call me it. You definitely need Between etiquette lessons. I know. That's good for the swamp, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, a little bit later, rules. Yeah. as the party talks, we, we got to get growling here. He's just oh, been yeah. sitting quietly. Um, <laughs> a little while later, after everyone's becoming too accommodated, there's some refreshments, there's some food that's here. Um, that's brought by like an invisible servant who just like brings a plate of drinks out and we'll set it on in the main atrium. One at a time, like one invisible servant or are there multiple? Um, you have been here enough that you know that there are multiple ones, but at this moment, there's just like one, you know, a silver tray coming out with some glasses on it and some refreshments. I'll thank the servants. Yes, I, yeah, I will thank yeah. them as well. Um, but a couple hours later, Grau will arrive. And Grau, when you travel the swamps, do you travel in human form or bear form or orc form or forest gnome form? Bear form for sure. What 
was my message from Autumn? Um, was it was it just like come see me? Autumn would like to see you. Okay. Do I usually, when I come see her, I feel like she's usually alone, right? She's usually alone. I think you actually have met Grau and Ren before. You've okay. probably done some jobs together. I think you're loosely acquainted. You might have spent like a week okay. together. Yes. Like, yeah. Do they know I'm a bear? That is up to you. I feel, so I feel like they probably do because Grau is really bad at hiding it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen him turn into a bear, you know that this guy is fucking weird. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, and does not, yeah. Okay. So I'm familiar that with this bully walk, that's good. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if I arrive here, and I notice there's like people inside chatting and stuff, I've probably been instructed as like, don't fucking run in as a bear and get <laughs> Yeah. Go into human form, be polite. Okay. So outside Rao will turn into human form. Which one? Human. Oh, human. Oh, human. Okay. Um, and he will enter um, and he will come in. Yes, hello, hello. I'm, 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 I'm Grau. It's very, very nice to meet you all. I'm, I, I'm a traveler from far, 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 far away. Hello, it's nice to, to meet. The entire time he's doing this, he's looking at Autumn because he's expecting a treat for this. <laughs> <laughs> Garp will uh, kind of laugh and just say, the fucking bear's here. <laughs> um, Autumn will come on over and, and pull out from her pocket like a, a little cookie that she keeps. She's got like a pocket full of cookies that she just hands you. That was going to go fucking in on this thing. Like, he's just like, <laughs> Okay. I, I have two questions for you, Growl. Yes. Uh, first question is, do you want a beer? Um, I'm good now. Does everyone want beer? Yes, I would like yes. a beer. Yes. Oh, that was a great show. Thank you, thank you. Just pass him down. <laughs> was there one you wanted me? Do you want the no. lager? Uh, I'll take whatever, yeah. I'll take okay. Could, is there another cider? This is the yeah, beach I'll one. Yeah, I'll have another cider. Here. No, it's good. It's okay, good. This is that, I Give me that one. This is the cider. Oh, I'll, I can do you want this? Each one with me, I can brew for that. Yeah, yeah. That. Perfect. I'll, I'll take this guy. I'm going to Uber to Best Buy to get him a hard drive. Okay. Okay. Bye. All right. Okay. I have two questions for you. Yes. <laughs> the, the first question is, what do you look like in human form? Like, do you look like an ordinary person or are you like a hairy person he's or, or what? Very, his clothes are pretty fucked. These are clothes that he's picked up somewhere off a clothesline stolen because he was instructed <laughs> that he can't go into encampments naked anymore. That's why they shoo him away. Right. Um, right. And he's pretty hairy. He's got like this like gray blackish hair all over his body. He's pretty he's pretty short. He's pretty well built. He's kind of built like a bear, you know. And um, not he's he's not looking good. He's re he's really not. He's got like mud all over him that he's been mm. rolling in, and he's probably been in the river and he's smelling like fish and stuff. Like he's not well. Do you have like a big belly, or are you like fit? There's definitely a belly going okay. on. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my second question, and this has like deep repercussions, so answer carefully. When you fall asleep as a human, do you wake up as a human or do you wake up as a bear? If I, so the way I'm imagining the transformation is we've, we talked about this, because he's a bear and he turns into this smaller human, it's like crushing something together that wants to expand like a ball or something, like a ball of rubber or something, and you're holding it together. And when you let go, it expands out, right? So if I'm falling asleep, even if I'm just napping off, I just like, <laughs> okay. I need to like, Focus, Focus on, on it. holding it. Okay, yeah. so if you are going from human to bear form, that happens instantly and really easily. Yes. But when you go from bear to human it's or whatever, like... it like takes a round to... Yeah. Okay, cool. Excellent. Well then, um, you will all be here in Autumn after handing you one of the cookies from her pocket. Yes. We'll look about and go, friends, friends, this is Grau, as he introduced. This is Arrakis. I think you know Garp and Ren. Welcome, everybody. It's nice to meet you. I'm Grau. I'm a traveler from far, far away, far away. I'm, oh, I'm so, so very hungry. I've been traveling for so long. So any, if you have any, any I, I am so hungry. It's of course. nice well, to meet you. Of course, we will, you. would you like some pork? Excellent, <laughs> excellent. Uh, and she'll just kind of turn and call up the hallway. Uh, pork, please. And... <clears throat> Then she'll give you like the, it'll be a moment. No, I'm so excited right it's, now. Uh, it's it's nice to meet you, Grau. Yes, it's nice to meet you. Yes, I'm Grau. I'm ni it's nice, nice to meet <laughs> you. Not just like, yes. you have a strange accent. Yeah, it's, um, I'm from far, far away. Far away is where I come from. Yes, As he yeah. continues to talk, I just push over my food, my plate of food to you. Mm. I fucking, I look at you, I like nod and I fucking <laughs> go in. <and> then... <laughs> so all three of you have worked together before? Well, I 
tried to teach the bear some etiquette. Wait, the what? Sorry. The growl. No, I'm Carl. I'm from far, far away. Yes, so, yes. Your yes. food growl. I food. think he was my <laughs> least successful etiquette student. Oh, you're somewhat of an etiquette teacher. Uh, I taught my sons to fight and to live at court. Hearing his voice, he will be reminded of the lessons. So I'm assuming there's like a fork and knife here, right? Mm -hmm. He will pick them up like really nice, like he was taught, but then he'll go back with his face. And kind of like, <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> you went to court? I was a household warrior. Once, a, once upon a time. Cool. You've fallen a long way. I well, can empathize with that. When we live in tall trees, there's a long way to fall. Twice. He's very, very tall trees. Yes, I can. I can. You climb. You climb trees. Yes. Do you climb trees? Yeah, no, yeah. Not, no, not, no, not big trees. You. Oaks, oaks. My favorite trees. Great bark. Very great bark. Yes. Grau, you're very yes. good at climbing trees. I'm proud of you. Yes. Yes. Grau. Yes. For oaks. I like oaks. Yes. I, I yeah, climb I, the oaks. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Garp will kind of like tap on the table like pretty heavily with his like frog hand. <clears throat> what are we here for, Autumn? I don't have all day. Excellent. Thank you for bringing, uh, uh, for helping organize our group. When, when Autumn speaks, is like the only time Garp like, really like pops up and like listens. She'll give you like yeah. an appropriate smile. Um, <clears throat> I need the four of you to pick up some supplies. My laboratory is coming along and I need some new glassware from the Tinker Gnomes in Veilbrook. Now, gnomes? Gnomes. Uh, Tinker Gnomes, yes. From Veilbrook. No, gnomes are sm smaller, smaller. I can, um, is, um, very, very, uh, would, it's, the, the, Would you like to show us? <laughs> um, he gets very self-conscious. <laughs> I, um, Wait, I, I can do this, right? But then I'm st I can't go back into human if I would. You'd be stuck as a gnome yes. for the rest of the Or you could go to orc or bear, but you couldn't yes. go back to human. Um, Growl will look at her like a, with a face of like, if I do this, do I get a treat? And, and she'll shake her head. And it'll be like, I, I, and I'll just go back into this food. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I have laboratory equipment that I've specially ordered from the gnomes in Veilbrook because they are the only glass blowers in a very, very far way. Um, and so it needs to be picked up. Now, it's very expensive. Um, I have a cart for you that you can use to bring it. It's a hand cart that you will pull. It also floats, um, it folds up, and so you can take it through the swamp without having to worry about it getting stuck in the mire. It'll be fine, but you will need to tug it yourself. It's a special cart made for coming through the swamps. Um, will this be okay? What's the payment? We will pay a hundred gold between the four of you. It's twenty-five each. It should only be a, less than a week there, less than a week back. Should be fine. Hundred and ten. Well, five for him, extra five for me. We're gonna be carrying most of these guys. Well, over here is a wizard who actually can inspect the glassware appropriately. I'm willing to split the reward evenly, uh, my holy work friend, but if anyone deserves more, surely it's me. How much, how much, what, what, 100 gold yes. is me meat pie? How much meat pie is? Many meat pie. M many. I say growl. Uh, many, many. I could trade your share for some uh, pork, maybe some uh, pork? chicken. Yes. 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 It's chicken. very agreeable. Yes. I, okay. I like, yes, please. Please, we'll give you a look chicken, and kind of yes, take it I can get you both. She yes. she gives you like a a furrowed brow. The fastest way to destroy a party is to argue over the reward. We should just take what it can offer. We've got a philosopher over here. I'll smile and drink my tea. There's nothing wrong with haggling. She has tons of money. Look. Look at what she brings us every time we come here. Every time you haggle, you make the next deal worse. We've been doing jobs and we haven't gotten anything better. I'll smile and continue to drink my tea. <laughs> we live in a swamp, for Christ's sakes. She's up here living in her golden tower. She could spare another ten gold. Isn't well, that right, Autumn? I think it's worth one hundred. I think that's a very reasonable offer for two weeks of work. But if... In order to smooth this over, let's call it one... Well, one ten doesn't divide evenly, so one oh eight. Fine. Okay. All right. Excellent. 
I was nodding along with this conversation, so, uh, but he's like unable to follow. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll hold up like five fingers to say there's like five more meat pies. Mm -hmm. Are we leaving today or can we wait till tomorrow? You can leave at your leisure. You can stay here as long as you need. Um, the glassware should be done by now. Um, if not, maybe in a few days. It'll take a week to get there. Hopefully everything will be ready when you arrive. If it takes a little longer, let me know and we will work out anything that needs to be worked out. <clears throat> um, it's very simple. Take the cart to Valebrook, pick up the glassware, bring it back. Simple mission, in and out, two weeks. The devil is in the detail, Autumn. Now, you are familiar with a laboratory. I am. Okay, well, you will recognize the equipment there. I would like you to inspect it to make sure that everything is up to par, and she will reach into a pocket, and she will pull out a list of gear. Make sure that everything on this list is there. Um, yes. Now, glass is expensive. I've already paid the gnomes in advance. If they ask for any more money, tell them they're not getting it, and make sure you bring the glassware back. We'll bring it back. Don't what worry. if the gnomes ask for more and refuse to give it? We can handle some gnomes, I'm sure. They're very small. I'm sure you can do, I mean, don't, don't ruin our, my relationship with them, but sort it out appropriately. I trust you. I will handle the gnomes and the discussions. I appreciate that, my thank lady, you. My lady, Autumn. Glass, glass is expensive. Yes. Be careful, no claws, don't drop it. Yes. And be careful and slow when bringing it, right? Yeah. Yes. Wise as always, Grau. Yes. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Um, Sorry. Um, is he a bear? <laughs> <laughs> bear? Be no. No? No, I'm bear. This is Grau. What is bear? I'm, I'm Grau. I I'm think maybe I'm a from He's far, from far away. From He's far away. Far away. Okay. Yes. Nice to meet you. I'm Grau. Your nails don't look that long, Grau. Yeah. Yes. Yes, thank you. He's learning our language, uh, um, so he may occasionally swap words. I'm from Isn't far away, right, so I don't speak very well. I'm, you speak quite fine. No, he doesn't. Uh, th thank you. <laughs> yes. Well, um, you that's fine. Know? What about the swamp itself, though? It's oh, it's dangerous. extremely dangerous, yes. Can we get some information on what we might encounter there? You live here, correct? You and the old, old man you? are just the same. Well... Caution is the better part of valor. Yes, yes. Um, there are natural creatures, which generally are more afraid of you than you are of them. Don't surprise any snakes or scorpions or um, eels in the swamp. You know, give them plenty eels. of space. Yes. Yes. Eels. I, I, I can find eels very, very well. Yes. yes. Good. Um, there are swamp gremlins. They're mischievous little buggers. You must be new. You're not familiar with the swamp gremlins. I'm on. This is my first time here. Oh, the swamp gremlins. Oh. Uh, they will take, it will take a little while to get to Keygate. Um, just make sure you go through your stuff. They, they have a little nasty habit of hiding in pockets and bags and shoes or extra gear that you're not paying attention to. They're always looking for a little way to, to get into society, but they, they enjoy the dark, cold, wet places. You're talking about the gremlins here. Yeah. The swamp gremlins. Okay. Are they um, dangerous? They're dangerous in the way that a, a drunken toddler with a short sword is dangerous. I think I see what you're saying. They can be dangerous, but if you can use your brain, you know, they're more mischievous with accidental danger. I, when swamp gremlins come, I swat, swat them away like flies. Yes. It's, it's easy. And sometimes they lay on the ground and then the brain's very, very tasty. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm Grau. Yes, Grau. Yes. From far away. From very far, far away. Yes, yes. 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 Excellent. So, uh, okay. So the Bullywog is not the strangest member of the party, at least. Th thank I'm not you. sure yeah. who is. <laughs> yes, well. A hundred gold, hundred and eight gold. Sounds a fine price for this work. Uh, I'm concerned about Valebrook itself. I've not been there, but I assume that the, uh, the law enforcement's quite prominent. It is the capital of this kingdom under this empire. You will see soldiers and officers of the empire there. Um, <clears throat> the... What did I call her? They have wizards there. Who are you running from? Them. Why? We've only just met. Uh, God. <laughs> 
why don't we talk about this in a few days' time, perhaps? Well, I don't want to be traveling with someone who's wanted by them, and he's going to, in my party, and going to get me killed. They, they um, are the, the, the uniform ones. Very yes. nice. Not nice. No. Ren, not nice. Not nice. Ren will, like, turn to Garp and be like, Garp, you're a bully wog. <laughs> <laughs> oh. They're not going to let you into town. He knows. Uh, they do have a... Sometimes can work with monsters, to be fair. Yeah, my allowed in towns. That's a question, actually. That's a great question. Um... So the thing is that most Bullywugs, not all Bullywugs, right? Hashtag not all Bullywugs. But most Bullywugs are generally like chaotic evil, evil monsters. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're humanoid, they can talk, they can wield weapons, but they have like a pretty evil disposition. Like we are the inhabitants of the swamp yeah. and we are raiders. Think of them like, like the Nords, you know, they're, they're Vikings. They're not, they're evil if you're, if yes. you're British, right? Yeah. And, and they're good if you're, Irish. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they're, they're generally raiders and monsters and they will they'll, yeah. they'll fuck people over. So when people see you, they instantly assume the that worst That I'm a raider case. and a monster, yeah. Um, but also you're more well-spoken than any other Bullywug. If you can actually get someone to talk to you for it's a few minutes. Wait a second, yeah. yeah. They might like relent, but also there's a lot of, you know. Some politics, yeah. You're, you're a Bullywug and it, it's hard. It's real hard. Um, so in, on the road, People might just give you a lot of space, especially if you're traveling with other people. Yeah. Um, and walking to cities, you might have some hard times. With um, like the guards. With the guards. Yeah. If, if you were to go by yourself, you'd probably just be shot on site. Yeah. But if you go with a person. It's a curiosity. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Maybe, how do they feel about like chains here? Like, can you, is slavery in this area? It's pretty rare. There's not like a system of slavery that runs through the, okay. the everything. There like, are regions nearby that might have it, but not right here. Have we ever tried like with uh, me and the old man with um, like Garp and Chains going into a city? Uh, well, have you tried that? I think it's something we've discussed before. Yeah, but I don't think something we've tried we, it. Yeah. we would rather have your hands free. Yeah, uh, I agree. Because... If Maybe. things, it's you know, caution. If your hands are free, we can escape. We can fight. Yeah. We can do all these things. I'm a human. I disappear. You I think we're looking for like a blacksmith who can make us like a f pair of like fake chains that I could like break mm -hmm. out of immediately. I think for that yeah. plan to go on. I don't like that kind of deception. My character would be like, "This oh, is yeah. a bad move. Like we're better off. You should be proud. Just be you, honest. Yeah. You should be proud and honest of who you are." <clears throat> okay. To answer your question. What happened in my past that was a misunderstanding. Um, whatever they think I did, it's not quite the full story, but uh, I don't know if you know them that well. They're not exactly uh, one for nuance. Mm, there are no guilty men in jails. <laughs> None that will admit it. Well, I'm, not I'm sure jail. you're. Well, I'm sure did you you're also innocent. steal the meat from the from the cans? Did no. they also no? I oh. stole something. Oh. By some measure. Nuts, honey. Mm. A book. A book. Mm. To okay. answer your question, the, the magistrate of Valebrook is a black-robed wizard who works for the Empire uh, named Zara. Now, she's the magistrate. The, the king and queen still run the place, but she sort of stands in as a, a local check and balance and a, a voice for the, the Empire of Verasi. Is she powerful? She is powerful enough to be the magistrate. Well, we want to stay out of that way. Well, at least I will. Where do these gnomes live? Are they on the outskirts of the town? Or the no, deep? they're in the center of the city. Okay. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to find your way to the glass shop. There are not that many gnomish families, and there's only one who works with glass. As I said before, there's only one family who does glass blowing for hundreds of miles, and don't, don't ruin this. I'm, I'm saying this now. When we're in the town, I'm looking at you to no offense, but uh, if you cause any trouble, I will be gone. I am not getting into a confrontation with the guards in that. It's not I, worth it. I'm very nice. I go, I, I'm, I introduce, introduce, say where I'm from, and very nice and polite. Polite, yes. Yeah, you are polite. Yes, thank I, you. I like you. Yeah. You too. Thank you. More than I can say for him. Hey, I need you all to get along, at least until this is over, and if this is not your cup of tea, you're free to go your way. I'm sure I'm, I'll be moving on once we've done this deal, but uh, I'm happy to work with these for now, as long as they understand that I'm not going to be fighting the guards to the death in the city for them. 
No, if anything please, happens, I'll be disappearing. Please do not try that. I, I do believe they would kill all of you. Well, this... if the gods decide to kill the Bullywook, then they're killing the Bullywook. I'm not going to be helping it. Uh, depends on whether or not you think you can get away. You may well, I can have get to away, fight. trust me. I can hide. Mm, then why don't you hide at all? Gentlemen, gentlemen, we are all here because we do not fit in elsewhere. And it is good if we were to look out for one another. Mm -hmm. Friends are rare in this place and this time. None of us fit in properly for our own independent reasons. Each of us has our own secrets. Let's do our best to get along. Okay. Getting along is easy, but there are no bonds of trust between us. I understand, but we don't need to highlight that. We can just sweep it under the rug until such times that it becomes relevant. Okay. Things that lurk beneath the rug fester and grow. Growl bored of this conversation and start like, he's, he's got an itch, so he's just like doing it with his mouth. Like, oh. I, uh, I apologize for my caution, but you understand that um, survival I, takes a certain amount of uh, wisdom and caution. Absolutely. You don't make it to my age by being reckless. I appreciate your caution. It is more the manner in which you display it. And uh, I've okay. never met a friendly bullywood before. Now you have. I didn't know such a thing was possible. He's certainly more eloquent than I would have expected for one of his kind. I don't know why you're calling me friendly. I've not been kind to you once. <laughs> <sighs> Most bully ones would attack on sight. So I tried. Friendly by you. <laughs> you understand it. True. Maybe neutral might be a better word. Yes. Well, the red robes understand nuance between uh, what's good and what's bad. And that's what makes you dangerous. Excellent. And I understand you may move on after this, but. I always have new work. There are many things I need, uh, especially inks for scrolls, rare inks. Um, if you'd all decide that you would like to continue working together, I could use the services of those who know the swamp well, those who are trained in the arts of magic, and those who are my friends. Friends, friends share food and company. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps also my we can discuss accommodation once this is over. If you want me to stick around, I wouldn't really want to live in a swamp, but this place is relatively comfortable. I am happy to have guests from time to time, but I do prefer to live alone. Not sleep inside here. Like, but she, make, you make mess, it's not, not good. I'll make, a, I'll make a joke and I'll say, <clears throat> you need to know a woman better before you ask to move in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You misunderstood my intentions, Ren. I just, I'm sipping my How tea. How hot is she? You know, I have not rolled for that. I do believe half of us get a 40, 61. Oh, okay. that, that makes sense, yeah. That makes sense. Here we roll, one more. With advantage. Well, that's a, that's a cocked die. If you'd like uh, to be rolling like me, all just roll save or die dice are available at saverdie.com. Yep. They look beautiful. <laughs> Physics, put them on screen. Yes. <laughs> Limited edition dice set, saverdie.com. Uh, they come in this cool case. Uh, buy them to support us. Thanks. 11. Okay. okay. All right. What was the first one? Doesn't exist. Well, right. <laughs> I think it would have fit her character, though. She's an outcast. She's an outcast. <laughs> yeah. Eleven. Eleven. It's an eleven. It's an right. eleven. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you don't mind if we stay the night, then? I prefer to uh, I would... pass spells appropriate for the journey. Of course. Take whatever spells that you need. Um, you can all stay down here on the first floor for the night. Growl. The outside yes. is... Oh, yes. yes, outside. Of course. And don't rub the outside of the... Yeah, don't scratch with my... Yes. I like the trees as they are. Yes. 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 Um, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, if you need anything, well, dinner will be ready in a little while. Uh, the servants will bring it down. We'll have some plates and tables and chairs. Everything will be fine. If you need anything, holler up the staircase. But as always, uh, please don't venture up the stairs. They are trapped and uh, you might die. So uh, please don't die. I need you all. Okay. Any questions? What's for dinner? Ah, well, um, Grau had expressed interest in pork. Pork, pork uh, yes. Yes, uh, and I think swamp we can do pig? some... No, not swamp pig. <clears throat> um, swamp pig is delicious. You've had swamp pig? 
I, delicious. I've eaten more swamp pig than a man should desire in a lifetime. <laughs> they just keep coming out of the bushes there. Must sell them on your ex-wife. That's right. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. Well, I'm going to go upstairs and prepare some things. Um, please get acquainted. The servants will bring down food. And um, in the morning, go on. It should be two days to Keygate, which is this town right at the edge of Swamp. Um, and, and we're here. Yeah, you're in the town. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So the Swamp is actually like a two or three day journey to cross it from one side to the other, depending on stuffs. Oh, so this bit isn't Swamp. No, no, no. no. Right, they, okay. They, uh, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. So Keygate, though, is it... Populated? Is it armed? It is populated. There is a, a wall that faces the swamp, but it's like a semicircle wall. The back of the town is open, but it just it helps keeps the monsters out. Um, because the swamp is hard to traverse, and this is the one traversable area, and lots of people go there. So there's sort of a congregation of opportunist hunters and um, dangerous things that come out and bite. I understand. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, as, as we're hanging out, do you think Garp and Growl, because I think Growl likes to be, he, he likes it when you play like little games with him, when you're like entertaining him. Do <laughs> you think Garp has come up with some sort of game that they maybe sometimes play together? No, maybe Garp they're... ignores you completely. Okay. Like, oh. He gave you food to show you up and now yeah. he's just ignoring you. Ren will play Patty yeah. Cake with you. Oh, perfect. Yes, like, yes. He loves that. Like that kind yeah. of thing. It practices his like dexterity in human form and he like, Garp he gets, like, likes the like entertainment of it, yeah. Yeah, no, like, uh, I will treat you like a nephew. Like, yes. you're like my little buddy. And you can ask, you're like, I, I imagine you're always just asking me questions. Yes, always. Yeah. 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 Usually about food. I'll yeah. be hanging out in, like, the corner, just kind of chilling. Playing with my glaive. The, yeah, oh, doing your katas? Yeah, he's, yeah. Um, okay, I think I gravitate mostly towards Ren, just because he's human. He's probably the <laughs> So I do oh, yeah. quite like Growl. I stay out of the way of Garp. Yeah, Garp will just, I, I'll just be staring at you. Yeah, that. okay. Just I think walking. at some point I will have a conversation <laughs> with Ren and I'll say, uh, so how well do you know the frog? The frog? Is growling on this right now? I think he can't be, we, yeah. We, yeah. we were like playing. He's probably side. sitting on the floor, by yeah, the way. Yeah. And he's like, like, he's like not like sitting like crisscross or whatever. He's just like kind of sitting like this. Mm. Not like, not like a human would do. He's got like, yeah. He's sitting very awkwardly. Yeah, I imagine. yeah, yeah. Um, I'll say to him, I'll say, I've grown to know the frog quite well, um, and his disposition is understandable when you learn um, his burdens. You just feel um, eyes on you. It's... We've all been through our troubles, right? It doesn't mean you have to be an arsehole. Other bullywogs, <laughs> they chase me. With the knife, they chase me out. When I go exactly. for the fish, they ch he never chased me. Never chased me through the swamp. Never stole my fish. He's good. He's not going to try and kill us and take our share of a reward. Well, that depends. <laughs> do, you, do you think you would give him a reason to do that? I don't think so, but does he need one? Do you need a reason to kill me? Yes, I would. I wouldn't kill you. Well, so is the same of him. Okay, why would you, well, as as why would you consider him different? The way he's acting. Have you never met someone who's got a chip on their shoulder? How did you grow up in a village and never leave? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, why well, did Once. You will learn that some behaviors that you might see as rude are just people who have put up walls to defend themselves. Well, I can understand that. I'm cautious with new people. I prefer to keep myself to myself. Humans are it's very weird, complicated. Complicated. It's weird. You can't really know if they say one thing, sometimes they mean something else. You mean we, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. We, we, I also, yes, I'm yes. Val. Um, from far away. Well, I'm from far away, so we different there sometimes. Oh, I see. Yes. Like dwarves or? No, I know gnomes. Uh-huh. And I know orcs. Oh yeah, orcs. Yes, but no dwarves, no. Um, but I'm, yes, it's, it's just different where I'm from, but here, yeah. humans, Sometimes they say a thing. We, we say a thing, yeah. and then we do, <laughs> we do other thing, and it's not. But you just have to learn and be open because friends mean food and company. People and complex animals. Yes. I know. Other animals you can eat, but if you kill human 
other humans get very angry and you get much less food. So yes. Bullywugs also do that, so he wants lots of food, so he's not going to kill you. I think I'm following your logic. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. All right, well, as long as you're sure, Ren. You seem like a trustworthy type. Um, are you sure? <laughs> well, you can hold a conversation. You seem wise. You said you were a mm, So, whether or not I'm able to hold a conversation is whether or not I can be trusted. An interesting worldview that I don't agree with. I would rather judge someone by the actions they do when they have an opportunity to do evil. That's fair. Some people... There's a time and a place for evil. Some people, when you do something they don't like, they get angry, they yell, they shoot. Ren, always very nice, and talks to you to make sure you don't do it again. Grau trusts you. I trust him. You trust him? I trust him, he's honest. You're smarter than I don't you. think he could lie. You're smarter than you look. <laughs> I look smart. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're smarter than you act. Reserve judgment, my friend. We'll see how smart I am once it comes down to it. We'll see. I'll continue to play games with Grau. I will teach him like games from the kids, like when I was a kid, like hot potato, where you throw the thing yeah. and you, it's like, and there's like you're counting down together. I mean, yes. Whoever has it last, you know, you lose. Uh, we'll play and like he's patty like cake. numbers as he does this. He's very excited about that. Yes, and I'm also game. going to give him my arming sword um, mm -hmm. so that he can practice actually holding and using a weapon. Ooh, yes. Uh, Garb's going to, as you're doing this, um, I'm going to yell out, uh, he won't replace your son, old man. <laughs> uh, I'll kind of freeze. <laughs> and I'll retort and say... Your attitude won't fix your problems. Mm. Well, I was like, I'll take I'll take the yeah. sword and I'll go and I'll start making tea and I'll sit along for a while. I'll quiet down. Oh. We're all in quiet. different corners of the room. Uh huh. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> all right. Okay. An unusual evening passes. Yes. Um, there are enough rooms down on the ground floor of this square tower. It's not rounded. It's square. Um, that you all have your own place. And come morning, you'll just find that there is a, a tray out there of small meats and crackers and a little bit of cheese out, uh, as well as glasses of water uh, for you. You, you don't see the place is fucking ruined by growl already. It's just <laughs> shit all over the place. Yeah. Did you hibernate? So, um, um, we've talked about it a little bit, but <laughs> not, not as it is right now, because if I can find food, it means I don't have to hibernate. Got it, okay. Mm. Um, mm, we on the next morning? Next morning. My spells? Yes, please. Uh, chill Torch, Sleep, Spook, Moonglow. Spook's a good spell. Yeah. They're all pretty good. None of them like overpowered. Did they're he give you any like good ones? ones? Yeah, we've got some good ones. Did yeah. he give you, um, the shadow ones that we were talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah. Moonglow and Black Steel I've got. I don't need Black Steel this time, though. Oh, do I have to? I actually don't know. Do I have to prepare spells as well? Yes. Okay. Wait, yes. Is he a spell casting? Yeah. Yes. I don't think we... Oh, fuck. I don't think... Did I write your spells down? There are spells here. Oh, perfect. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So you will get... Let me see... What's your wisdom? Um, it's decent. 13. Okay. So what's it saying? Like, spells... The... Magic fit, bonus spell, spell yeah, failures. Yeah, the second box after willpower, it says bonus spells. None. Okay. So yeah. So I think you get two level one spells. Uh, you said, what was your wisdom? 14? 13. 13? Okay, so we're doing something a little unusual for Grau, because Grau's... I can say what your class is, right? Yeah. Grau's a druid. Yeah. Druids in second edition don't normally get shape changed into level 7, but Grau has it already at level 2? Nice. Level 2. Um, and so, in exchange, you're getting a lot fewer spells. So you actually only get one spell per day right now. Okay. Yeah. That, and you you're also it limited by the types of forms he can take? Because usually druids can take... Three forms. Yeah. Oh, is that only three? It's okay. three, yeah. Okay, okay, good. I think um, as Autumn is kind of his mentor for this, and he's super, like, figuring out what all these spells are, he's super unfamiliar with it, before a journey like this, Rao would probably ask Autumn, it's like, see, wait, on this, which, which one of the, the magic should I, mm. should I do? Let me see your sheet. What do we got for you? 
um, blah, 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 no, no. <laughs> Don't ask him. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. Um, <laughs> I've seen this villain. I'm not asking him, I'm asking Autumn. <laughs> Autumn will suggest that you take um, Entangle when you're in the swamp. That's yes. good. That's good. good advice. And Cure Light Wounds when you're on the road. Okay. Those are good spells. Yeah, that's good. Advice. We're we're, yeah. we're passing through. We're we're basically not on this. We're we're going out into yeah. the city. You're going through the swamp yeah. for a little then, while, yeah, and then you're going to take a couple of days yeah. through the swamp, and then we'll be on the road. I move yeah. through the swamp yeah. extremely fast. I guess like you have, 15. I think it's 16. I it think was it's something crazy. It's, you have a yeah. really high swim yeah. speed. But you're gonna be like slow on the road though. I only go six on the road. Yeah. yeah. Right. Gra will prepare and tangle because I think if shit goes down, it goes down in the swamp. Yeah. Now, Entangle in 2nd edition works with existing plant matter. So if you were to cast Entangle on like a bare stone floor, it just wouldn't yeah. work. It needs yeah. like existing vegetation to grab people. Yeah, yeah that's, why, that's why it's doing this. And it doesn't like grow the vegetation. No, no, Got it just it. animates the vegetation to hold on. So if it's like just like really low cut grass, that yeah. wouldn't do anything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, but if it's, you know, there's vines, there's branches, like if there's yeah. stuff around. Yeah, like yeah. reeds. And, yeah, yeah. then that'll, that'll grab onto you. But if it's like a well manicured, like fancy lawn, not so much. Which tree, yeah. like a willow tree would be like a perfect, like, because like the swooping vines. I think the willow tree would be ideal. <laughs> the weeping willows or whatever? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have, like big long arms, like you just grab someone. But if you have like an oak tree, it maybe yeah. won't bend down all the way. It'd be cool if you could like cast Entangle and then also like do it a little bit differently and like try and hang someone with it. Because Entangle here is a 40 foot cube. Yeah. So it will do branches. It'll do yep. all sorts of stuff. Yeah. It's not just a, an AOE on the ground. It's not oh, a circle on the ground. Up above as well. Yeah, yes. so like yeah. the tree can like tilt and like yeah, grab, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it won't grow. Got right, it. Right, right. Cool. Is there any chance we can do a bathroom break? Yeah, absolutely. That's it. That's yeah, all right, that's a good idea. Three minute, five minute break. P break have, over. P what, break over. What were we doing? All right, back into the game. So, the party. It's the next morning. It's the next morning. Yeah. You've all gotten to know each other a little bit. The party's got some interesting dynamics. You know, there's a little trust here, maybe something here. There's definitely something going on here, um, but not much over here. Okay. Yeah, I see. Yeah. yeah. I like how Garp is kind of like the meta outcast of the outcasts. He's kind of distancing yes. himself from mm -hmm. everyone. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, it's almost like it's a defense mechanism, maybe. Uh, <laughs> right. So we're going to go back through the swamp. It's just going to be the day and a half, maybe two days to Keygate. Not a problem, right? You all got here without issue. Autumn didn't seem too concerned about the, the things. It's probably fine, right? It's probably fine. I feel like it's probably not fine, and that it's dangerous. And I am, uh, you know, what? I'm aware that of is a ridiculous statement. It is. It's absolutely fine. I'm gonna be swimming. It's, it's um for the most of it, Neil. Oh, it journey. is not fine. And I'm gonna be like oh. looking in the water um, ahead, like scouting. Yeah. Yeah. And of the okay. humans, I would be at the head of the humans because I'm the most adept swamp survivalist. I okay. I have to figure out if growl. Because Grau fucking hates walking as a human. Mm. It sucks. So he has to wait that. Oh, wait, did we see you in Bear in the morning? Because if he came out in the morning and you're just asleep. Yeah? I, yeah, so oh, I think... I will have gone up Alex, so I'm going to let my spells. That's true. Oh. Yeah, I think Grau is still not... He doesn't, like... Yeah, good. People... But you sleep outside, right? So Yeah, yeah, he would have slept outside. There, you wouldn't necessarily have seen him. No, because I think okay. I would have let my spells inside. Did, yeah, I did, think, but did you go for like a morning walk? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. I, th okay. I think for now, Grau is going to stay in human form. I think he's still very weary about people seeing yeah, yeah. both forms, you know? Mm. Um, he either wants to be perceived as just a bear or just a human because he knows he runs into issues when yeah. that stuff I mean, happens. I think Arrakis knows that something odd is going on with you. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> quite clear. Yeah, yeah, the girl obviously can't read I that. mean, someone described you as a bear at one point. Arrakis, <laughs> I feel like he's in a fever dream. He just walked <laughs> out. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> she was like, uh, oh, the people are a little bit unusual. Yeah. Um, you know, okay, you know, maybe the. He's quirky. Weird. Yeah, yeah. For <laughs> now, for now, Grau is going to stay in human form walk with you guys. If it gets too annoying for him or if something happens, 
maybe this will change, but for now he's more comfortable, Arrakis not knowing that he's also a bear. Yeah, I'm cautious walking through the swamp. I really try and make sure that I'm not getting, I'm not on the outskirts of the party. I want to be in the middle. In the middle yeah, because yeah, mm -hmm. I've got 10 AC, I don't have mage armor. I'm like swimming up ahead, looking around. I'm swimming back because I think I moved like double. Yeah. Where well, I was super uncomfortable too. because he doesn't have his bear smell, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like you're walking around like without like glasses blonde, or yeah. something. Yes. Yeah. Um, mm. I would be at the front of the party. I'd be ahead. I guess, would you be at the back or would you be in the middle? I guess you would. I think I would try to stick to the middle and just be very yeah, awkward. You, you guys might be walking side yeah. by side while I'm it walking seems, ahead yeah. and I'm like testing the swamp. It, I'm like, it, it, don't go there. It seems like I have no fucking idea how to navigate a swamp, but it's not the swamp, it's the body that I don't know mm. how to. Yeah. Oh, it's almost like a. Like your first time operating like a machine, yeah, you're kind yeah, of yeah. it's very mechanical, right? It's like you, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 and you like roll your ankle a few times yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that, yeah. Um, um, Mr. Mooten, will you roll me a d10? Do we have a ten in this? Yes. Yeah. 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 You too. Oh, well, you're gonna have to figure it out. Yeah, yes. there'll be two tens. One has a zero yeah, at the end of it. One, the other doesn't. I rolled a nine. A nine. Okay. Hoggers. That's going to be I nine hags. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you're at the head of the humans. I'm at the head of the humans, yes. Roll me a d10. Oh, absolutely. I love d10's my favorite dice. Uh, I rolled a five. Okay. Well, you're gonna need a huge penalty because you said dice when you meant die. Wow. Die is singular, dice is plural. All right, if we're at the table, you gotta know it. I'm gonna say dice forever now, because I'm. You've, you've given me something that I can know you with, and oh. now I will just say that forever. This is, you don't give me this kind of power over we, We've talked about this. I should have known better. Yeah. I really, uh, this is you my should. fault, actually. Yeah. This is my fault. You're gonna learn. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, <laughs> fuck you. I, like, I like, like rolling the D4 dice, too. D4 is nice. Because it kind of it bounces a little, you know. Yeah. D4 is my least it favorite. Ed, really? It's, it's really my nice. least favorite. I like how it ends. It's not a real dice. It's hard to pick up. Yeah, Your hands yeah, will yeah. like grip it and just slip off the pyramid. Yeah, but I just rolled do, three fours in a row. Do you roll two? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like two D10 die when, to make a D100. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you the oh, one you with the zero is the hundred yeah, place. Yeah, one has extra zeros on it, so that's the hundred. I was just saying, I was yeah. using die for plural to annoy you. I didn't even. If you like to get these beautiful die. Go to saverdie.com. Uh, Just bye. gonna. They come in a case. Anyway, Zoe. Okay, we're walking. What do we see now? Fuck. Um. I have. Well, perception. I want to keep tonight. Just, just in case. I am also trying to move silently. It's ten percent. What's your perception? If you're moving I silently, you're gonna fall way behind. You can't do. Oh, okay. You, you can't go slow. Never mind. Yeah. Um, keep in mind that. Yeah. Ten. Have you got perception? Twelve. What was, what was the, the skill that we gave me with smelling? If I was in bed. Oh, right, um, was fuck, I didn't write it down in your sheet, but yeah, you yeah. have a 50% chance to follow tracks. Yes. Because mm -hmm. you're a bear with an excellent oh, scent. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. yeah um, and there's another, there's two abilities that you have that we pulled from the skills and powers. Yeah. It was tracking and... It was something relating to perception, I think. Yeah. It was like a, did it have to do with being ambushed? I don't remember. I don't remember. Okay, we'll do that. I have something with ambush too. Like awareness? I don't remember. It's like can't be ambushed. Whatever it is, it's coming into play next session, not this session. We won't right now anyway, so. Right. Excellent, so um, you're swimming through the swamp. You rolled a nine on your D10, and you rolled a seven, was it? A five. A five, okay. So as you're swimming ahead of the party through the swamp, um, what happens, and this is, this is just for your eyes only, the rest of you are unaware of this because he's well ahead of you. Um, you'll be like swimming through and you'll see like a pair of large bulbous eyes emerge in front of the swamp with you. And then like there's a heartbeat of moment. And then for a moment you're like, what is this? And then you recognize a bullywug and like standing out of the water, out of the swamp, is another bullywug who will go, rrr, 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 rrr. I jump in there. You just like, you're by yourself, away from the rest of the party, you see a bullywog and you just leap to the attack right away. Yeah, because I, I think that he thinks that, um, I think he's probably one. Right. Okay. So, yeah, he jumps on the deck. Okay. So, it's a Well, it's a, a uh, no, you don't get a surprise, he's watching you. What do I do? It's a d10 plus your weapon speed for initiative. 
Do we you see him low. majestically leap? <sighs> we're we're going to roll that after the first round of combat. Okay. I rolled a... Yeah, I have to my spells in, so I can I rolled a 10 speed. in total. Uh, if they're wizard spells, they're all initiative 1 for first level. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, maybe not all of them, but most of them. Yeah, most yeah, spells yeah. are for wizards are yeah, the same yeah, level. It's one. You want to yeah, I, I just Thank realized you. when we introed the campaign at the start of the video, we did not clarify that this is a second edition. Second edition. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. Welcome to Save or Die. This is a second edition D and D campaign. Yes. All right. I rolled a ten. Ten. Uh, I did Modified. one plus nine. Okay. So. Oh, you rolled one on your D ten. Yeah. Fucking nice. All right. Yeah. Second edition high rolls are bad for initiative. Low rolls are good for initiative. Yes. Um, your enemy bullywog. Do you guys have? Do we have two D tens? Yes. Yes. Yes, you do. So that's gonna be this one, and it's going to be this one, right? So the percentile dice and the regular dice. Yeah, yeah, got it. Thanks. All right. Uh, the enemy bullywog is wielding a spear, which is initiative. Let me get my little spear chart Six. out here. Is it six? It's is it five? I he, kn- it he, he knows. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> all right, all right, six. Six and six is 12, so they you go first. Do I nice. get the jumping glaive attack? Um, how far do you have to jump for the glaive attack? Do you need to feet. move 30 feet? Yeah. No, this is a little bit closer than 30 feet, because 30 feet's like to where Peach is right now. Got it, um, so I only notice him. Within. Yeah, you notice him like it's eyes in the water that you're swimming through like okay. a ten foot range. Um, then yeah. I'm going to swim up to him mm-hmm. and <laughs> attack him. All right. Well, the glaive comes out. The bullywog notices that the glaive is coming out. Like he's ribbiting yeah. at you, yeah. and you're like weapon. Yeah. So make your attack roll. D twenty plus, plus two, two to hit, three to damage. Oh. Uh, natural one. Oh! oh. <laughs> way to start out. Um, save or all right. Give me a, a saving throw versus death. It's on your character sheet, lower left hand side, I think. Saving throw versus death is a fourteen. Fourteen or higher on your d twenty. Uh, five. Oh, all right. So you go to attack this guy with your your glaive. Yeah. So Garth um, is fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, this bullywug is um also really good in the swamp and you're yeah. really good in the swamp and and how do i say this without um you're not as familiar with this location area in the swamp, swamp right yeah. you're, you've got your other area so you go to attack this person this creature and you go for your like standard footing underwater maybe coming up to your chest uh, but the area where this bully bug is is just a little bit deeper. So when you go to attack, you actually drop down into yeah. the water, and the weight of that halberd just kind of helps sink you. And uh, the bully bug will counter with a plus one on its attack roll because of your your failed d20 and everything. And uh, for this, I will be using my nice golden metallic oh, shit. die. <laughs> You're in trouble. That's a nice dice, Neil. <laughs> oh, the bullywug misses you and hits Garp. Wow, or uh, growl. <laughs> no, it's a five, six, seven total. He will uh, pull out this this short sword and thrust it in your direction. Spear, sorry. Pull out this uh, one-handed spear, because uh, this guy's got a short sword and my yeah, brain is that mm-hmm. bad. Um, pulls out his spear, shield in the other arm, thrusts the spear towards you. Yep. Pfft, Completely missing. Now, the rest of you, you would roll the five? Five. I also need you to make me a perception, perception check. Perception check. Hey, I'm. Uh, actually, all three well. of you make a perception yeah. check. D20 plus 12. Ooh, 15. 15 Fail. is bad. Is that modified? Wait, like, D20 yeah, plus modified. Modified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're looking at a 32 over here. Ooh. 31. 31. Jeez. Did you roll a. I roll a 19. Okay, I don't care. Plus 12. Um, yeah, plus 12. And growl. Um, I rolled an 11, and that's, I just add my perception. Add the whole thing. 23. All right. Uh, Well, you will start to hear some sort of, like, splashing noises from ahead. Um, Actually, you rolled a 15, you rolled a 23. You'll both hear splashing noises from ahead, but for you, it's just, it's a fucking swamp. There's splashing happening. You're going to notice that this is um, not just splashing, this is thrashing in water. Different than slashing. You, although, you just heard, like, Ordinary swamp sounds that don't even trigger anything. I'm old. Anything. My eyes don't work so good. You know. Right. These are your eyes. This is what you. you no, but I'm with. looking. I would be looking at where Garfield ah, is. I, I don't see what happens. No, of course not. You don't see shit. But you, you hear that there, there's something, there's something amiss up ahead. Yeah. What would so you I say, say uh, something's going on with the frog. Let's go. Oh, 
All right, and I, without even thinking about it, I start running in the, the you direction of the noise. You trust this stranger's word that there's something going on with the frog. Well, he heard it too. Well, I heard a noise. Yeah. He rolled a 15, he didn't know shit. I would take any uh, risk to a party seriously. If he thinks it's a problem, I would run off. Okay. Yeah. okay. I, I have no reason to assume that he would be trying to sabotage me or oh. trick me. Okay, all right. I'm just trying to get a sense for your character. Like, yeah. you're, you react to the, I would, the thought I would, of a threat. I would give him a questioning look, but my immediate response, like, logically, right, I mm -hmm. could sit here and be like, what do you mean? This is well, something I wrong? And we could sit here and chat. questioning look, I'll probably say, it sounds like a fight. Let's go. And, I'll, and I will. And you I, I, I'm probably not sprinting, but I'm yeah. running in that direction. Excellent. And um, and Grau, how, when he says there's something wrong with the frog, what what does Grau hear? What does Grau think? What does Grau do it? I think for now, Grau will stay in human form and sprint ahead cautiously just to check it out. He's just curious what's going on. Okay. Mm. And I probably should have asked this question well before everything started. But how far ahead are you scouting? Um, I wanted to be able to be like probably halfway, like double up. So one round of movement away from them. So I can like- One go, round of your movement? Yeah, so okay. I can go there and then come back in like the next round. That okay. Was my, that was my goal. Perfect. Mm. Um, so that means that he's actually like two rounds out from you guys because he moves way faster in the swamp mm -hmm. than y'all. Uh, so we're gonna need another round of combat with you in this bullywog while they start splashing yeah, up. Yeah. Ch -ch 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 -ch. The one thing about playing in person, no combat music. Yes. Uh, no background music. Oh. That's true. But physics. Ah, fuck that. Phys Listen to this. Physics got us. Hey! <laughs> All right. Give me a D10. Which one was that? Oh my god, there's so many um, dice. That is a 19. You can't get. Oh. Oh, your weapon is slow. Yeah. Oh, oh. But hold on. Actually, sorry. I'm technically range two. Reach, yeah, yeah, yeah. Reach too. Yeah. So I was away from him, and then he had to close on me. Well, you, but oh, yeah. He has a spear, and his spear is reach one. Yeah. But you fucked up and you fell in the water, so yeah, I think in the yeah, last no, round it's okay. fine. Yep, that's okay. But in the future, yeah. I'm reaching. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. You got a 19. This guy's got a 12. So yeah. the other Bullywug will go first. And you've kind of like fallen down this thing, but yeah. frogs are buoyant. Like, you're not going to sink to the yeah. bottom. You're not wearing any armor, right? What, no. What are you wearing? Um, a black cloak. And a bandolier of water skins. a bandolier skins. of water skins, yeah. And it's just a cloak and water skins <laughs> got, over a frog. I got a cloak and I got a bandolier with six water skins on me. Okay, so you sort of float. Like, you, you fumble your footing, you sink a little bit, but you're, you're, you're bully will get enough that you can, like, yeah. get back up and kind of swim to a safe spot. Yeah. Um, go ahead and make me an attack. Um, it's your first. I, right, you swim to a safe spot. And the, thank you, thank you. And, and the bully will gluts out a... Arrgh! Wait, no, that's not how you. How does Bully One? <laughs> yeah, so, go. like, echoes through yeah. the swamp. Um, and this guy will shove his spear. Um, and you know what? He's not thrusting at you this time because your attack last time was so bad. What he does is he turns the spear to the side and he's going to try and whack you. He's going to try and knock you out. Because you're a bullywug, yeah. he's a bullywug, something's going on. They're sort of evil creatures, but like, you're kin. So... Nice. Yeah, but so, they're probably from a different clan. And if you read like the bullywug passage, it says like they want to like kill each other, I think. Yeah. Like they hate each other. And yeah. especially they hate the big bullywugs. Yeah. And I'm like 6'5", so I'm a big bullywug. Mm. Mm. Small number of bullywugs are larger and more intelligent than the rest of the kind. Yeah. These bullywugs make their homes in abandoned buildings or caves. Blah, 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 they are more aggressive. Da, 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 da. The of, like, the passage. Mm-hmm. 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 Bullywugs tend to disrupt the ecosystem rather than fill the niche. Yes, yes. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Tribes of lead. The invasive species. Yeah. yeah, you can't trust them. Tribes are led by a dominant male who kills and eats the previous leader when he is too old to rule. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Based. The mall loves these guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're eating. Okay. Uh, actually, so according to what I'm reading here and to what, I, what this guy's thinking of you, he's going to try and knock you out. Okay, he's going to cool. try. Yeah. They're, they, he's got reason. He's got mm. reason. Um, and it is going to be a 15 plus two, one. 15 plus one is a 16. And he will be doing... Oh, but it's a one-handed spear. Um, six damage to oh. the side of your bullywug head. Yeah. Whap! Uh, comes the... Wait, the how much HP do you have? 16. Oh, I have 10 now. That's a lot oh, of HP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're bulky. All right. Yeah, Your turn, then. I'm going to attack. 
with my blade for um, ten. Ten is not good enough. No, 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 no. Your blade um, comes whistling through the air. But I have another to attack. attack this round. Yes. I have 1.5 attack. Go ahead and do it now because he's only got the one attack per round. For a another miss. Ah. Oh. I know. I'm All right. Bad. So wow. near the end of the okay. round, you guys are running. You're, you've been mm, coming up yeah, to him. Yeah. You are still a, a movement away from them. Yeah. And you can now see there's two Bullywugs. One of them is my has a shield and a spear. The other... Is, I mean, is he your bully one? I recognize him. He's sexy. He's, he's, he's shining. <laughs> he's like, he's, he's smooth. He's glistening olive, olive. in the swamp. Yeah. yeah, the olive is just draped yeah. everywhere. He's got that bandolier. The cloak is like damp and clinging to the back of his body, like revealing all of the Ever. shapely bully one curves. I just realized you're a bottle toad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's 6'3", 250 pounds. He's like a... Big muscular guy. Man, right. That game was so fucking hard back in the day. <laughs> it was. Right. Well, yeah. Do we have another round of combat? Or well, hold on. As you're watching this, you yeah. see more eyes begin yes. to appear in the water. You see, because there's two Bullywugs fighting. So. And they're all of a sudden surfacing around are four more sets of eyes. I but they're, they're in front of the party. They're between you and him. Okay. So can I act this round, or is this the end of my turn? Have I spent my turn moving? Um, your last round you spent a turn moving. This round, they're maybe a hundred feet from you, and you're kind of moving at half speed in the swamp. So if you have a ranged attack, Shit. then you're good. I'm not sure the range of uh, sleep. Yeah, if you have a ranged attack, you're good. Otherwise, it's going to take a little while to move closer. Okay. Um, the usual initiative, anyways. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What was it spells? So it's ninety feet. Okay, All right, yeah, you could cast sleep this round then. Okay, yes, yeah, so let's launch to them. All right, D10. D10 plus speed. What are you going to do here? I get a three for initiative. Um, nice. That is a great question. Right. I'm looking at what's happening, and I see my bullywug friend in trouble, and I see a bunch of new eyes appearing, and I am going to try to... So how does sneaking work? Like, Can I get up there unaware of one of them? Right. Okay, so in... In second edition, you declare your action before you roll initiative because what you're doing modifies your initiative, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so you're in a swamp. These eyes are already looking at you. Oh, these eyes are looking at me. Yeah, yeah. You see the eyes because they're like popping up in I your direction. I thought they were direction. looking at him. No, 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 no. Because he's beyond you, but they're they're like their backs are to him. Their eyes are towards the three of you. These other one, two, three, four okay. eyes. Really? Because um, the other bully would called them that way. Yes. Yes. But they, they rolled their perception checks oh, okay, and they okay, saw okay. that there were more people coming and yep. they're here to they're here to kill the people. You're weird. Like what the it's fuck like, is what's going on here? Yeah, so they're leaving the other guy to you and they're looking at you. So in ordinary circumstances, you might be able to sneak around, Can but I, you're in a swamp, so I don't know how you would do that. Can I brace with a longsword? For an attack, or is that a spear only thing? Um, you can. Because I'm a swamp survivalist, I would know. Right. To set for a charge, you need a pole arm, like a spear, but you could just hold your ground and let them come to you and ready an attack for when they arrive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I'll do. You're intimately familiar with how bullets attack. Because yeah. I do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would. I would. I would very. Uh, I would say, like brace for attack because I know they're going to leap this. Mm -hmm. Do you use a spear? No, I use a longsword, oh, an arming okay. sword. And what about you, Grau? What are you going to do? Um. I've noticed at this point that a fight has broken out. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I'm going to do is... Whoa! Oh my god. What is this? These look like sick cocktails. Oh, oh my god. god. Honestly, Mr. Rush. Moon, you don't deserve her. <laughs> like... Did you give me a t-shirt? <laughs> okay. She's just gonna start Sorry, I was in. waiting yeah, for the combat to out. lull. Yeah, they love me. I'm, I'm working with them. We're at the Storm yeah. Girl Manor, and they have so many cool drinks. Wait, so many cool wait, 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 no, 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 this is just the... Yeah, you gotta pour this into, you into pour the main it drink. You pour into the main drink, yeah. yeah. This is just step this is, one. This what isn't even the main one. one. This no. is step one. This is the potion that you put Don't in. drink this dry ice in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, don't drink dry ice. Don't drink dry ice, kids. We yeah. <laughs> it today. It's you're so cool. You're expand to, like, a million times its size and then pop. Oh, my God. And then you will die. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, there you go. Stuff, <laughs> <laughs> you just... Thank you. Very cinematic if I just totally... It just spilled, spilled all over. It would actually should be an ordinary D&D game at that point. That oh, was, yeah, that's yeah. Actually yeah. Stuff oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw Thank that you, you ordered chicken tendies, Neil. Of course. That's do we so sink great. pour? Okay, now what you do is you do this. Like, okay, wait. 
Boom. Boom. Oh, no way. Right. Very We're cool. making and potions. We really do live in the future. Oh, oh God. Man, that's cool as fuck. Really cool. Let's go. You know. What was it called? Stormcrow? Hey, this was all like. Stormcrow Manage. Wouldn't day. it be amazing it's if so we could do this like every you know, week? I brought a subscribe to the Patreon. <laughs> yeah, please make us yeah. be able to do this so we more. All move to Idaho. Yeah. 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 And there's a light in my ice cube. Yeah. Yes. Fuck yeah. So what's in the cocktail page? Uh, so there's have. the alcohol and then the juices, um, and then the dry ice. Yeah. <laughs> Together, it makes this cocktail, which is so wonderful to drink, and it glows blue. Oh, it's nice. Here we're gonna hand her these. Yes, mm, so good call. Table. Table. Amazing. Thank you so much. Yes. You can now call me Mrs. Wooten. Oh, that's oh. Nice. Dude, I know it's it's a gimmick, but I just love it. No, it's, <laughs> it's, good. So it's cool. great. I brought a giant pack of dry ice to a party a girl I was dating was throwing. Oh, yeah. It worked well. All nice. of her roommates yeah. loved me immediately. Oh, everybody loves dry ice. Oh. Good luck, don't die, don't roll on that one. Yeah, I didn't tell anyone not to drink the dry ice, and luckily no one died. Oh, it was okay. fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, right, so okay. I'm I'm bracing for an attack. You're bracing so for an attack. So that mean I can ready an attack and take a defensive stance, but I get plus to AC. Um, when you... Player's handbook, please. Nick. Oh, How does you. it work? Um, la 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 la. La la la. I think you double damage, I think. No, no, no. If you'd need a pull arm to do that to get the double oh, damage oh, bonus. Right, sorry, yeah. yeah, it's okay. Ish. Okay, it's well, only like you've been playing this game for ten you years. Can't brace for an attack. You've got to shoot a sword. Nobody can no, ready an attack. Ready attack. I think I think you could brace for an attack with a sword. It's yeah, just like sure, but that... you just get your attack when if you beat them in initiative, when they get in range, you get your attack first. Yeah. I feel like if I'm bracing for an attack, I should be able to like it takes way less time to brace for an attack than to do an attack. But you would know that. If they're 30 feet away from you, they're gonna jump and do a fuckload of damage. So I think your goal would be to get as close as possible mm. to not let them jump at you. That's true. Yeah. Actually, that's a good point. So I would say- uh, And you, you know this because you're intimately familiar with Garp. Yeah. So actually, knowing all of that, then if, we, if we're meta-ing a little, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, what I would do then is say, get close yeah. to them. And, we, and then I would say, we need the bear. We <laughs> <laughs> need the bear. Um, and so I would actually close to as close as I can, and if I can't attack anyone, I would ready an attack, and if I can't attack someone, I would attack whoever I can get to. Cool. So if you are waiting or in slippery footing, which you are, but not you, because you're you're native to this environment, you have a penalty, which is a plus of two to your initiative roll, okay. um, and you're wanting to move forward and attack? If I can get close enough to them, okay. I want to get within their leap range. Okay, so you're moving forward to make an attack. You're casting a spell, and he just called out, we need the bear. That's right. So as I realize there's a fight going on, what I will do is the first thing immediately, he's going <laughs> to turn into a bear. Okay. And this gray <laughs> blue, <laughs> blue, <laughs> this, this gray blue bear emerges ready to go. So I think what we said was turning into the bear is a half movement action. Nice. Is that what we did? Yes. Yeah. Well, what's yes. a full round to search into a human? Yeah. Right. Yes. So you're going to be able to turn into bear and move forward, but next round you will actually be fighting. Yes. Okay, cool. So you're changing into a bear and going forward. Yes. You're going forward with your weapon in hand. You're staying in place and casting a sleep spell. I you're never, fighting your bully I, wug. I never rolled initiative for this. Right. You need to roll a d10 plus three. That would be a 12. All right, and then add another two for slippery footing is a 14. What'd you, you get a five, three? three? Speed five. Oh, speed five, okay. Arming sword. Yeah. 14, three. Uh, that's a D8, that's the long dice. Oh, okay. oh, it is a D10, so you're right. Uh, ooh, a five plus five is 10, plus two it's is 12. 12. 12, 14, three? Yeah. Okay, and you don't have a penalty to your initiative because you're not moving. Yeah. You're just chilling. Well, I'm staying still. And do I need to re-roll for this round? Um, yes, you will need to roll for this round as well. Do right. I get a lesser? A do I get a lesser penalty for having swamp survival? No, okay. not at all. Okay, so we're gonna do. So 12, 14, 3, and I had a ten. Yeah. 12, 14. I'll just write down my initiative actually. Yeah. yeah. Jay, Nick, and... What was your move? Uh, ten. Ten. I got a one again. 
All right. And Base. this Bullywug gets a, you get a 14. Um, these ones are armed with sh short swords. This one's going to get a 5 and an 11 and a 4 and a seven okay so first up is actually nick with the sleep I spell I rock this goes first so i reach into my uh like my little bag that i've got on my side and mm -hmm. i pull out a handful of rose petals mm -hmm. that i throw into the air whilst muttering arcane words there's wisps of shadow magic that float in between the petals and i uh can i borrow a d4 i will affect 2d4 hit die worth of creatures there is no save. I'm assuming that these guys are one hit die. I'm targeting, they have to be within 30 feet of each other. Yep. So how many Bullywogs can I get? Three. I'm, I'm looking at the the ones, the, so I'm not trying to target the one that's fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, they're fairly well spread out because yeah. like they're ambushing from a swamp, but within 30 feet, you can easily hit three. Three, okay. Which cool. you should be able to roll on 2d4. You should be able to. And I get a four, so yes. All right. Immediately, three Bullywogs just kind of like, mm. <laughs> They flop to the side and like roll over onto their backs and sort of float with their bellies in the sunshine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So after I cast a spell, can I draw my Chris, my dagger? Sure, but you, yeah. you're okay. done for the. Yeah, yeah, I stand still. Yeah, but I have my weapon on. I cast my. You're spell. not moving. Yeah, no, I'm not moving. I'm standing okay. still. Excellent. So that was three. The next one is a five. It's one of the bullywugs who is coming towards the party. So like those four bullywugs that popped up were on their way to the to a lot of you. You yeah. know, their ambush was a little bit interrupted Weird. by yeah. you, right? So they start swimming in your direction, and this guy's moving fast. He's got a shield in one hand, he's got a sword in the other, but he's got these like big frog legs that are doing this like big swimming motion. And so the shield and the sword are up in front and they kind of like make the prow of a ship and you see this mm. wake coming towards you. And then all of a sudden it dips below the water and then shoots sky high and leaping into the air is a bullywug. Now, you had to transform, you're standing still, you moved forward, so you're the closest one. Mm -hmm. So this Bullywog leaps at you. And what's your armor class? 13. And how much HP do you have? <laughs> <That's> seven health. <laughs> I see, and you're 60 years old. I, you know, I should have braced. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a... Wait, but is he ever... closer than 30 feet, or is he...? Well, the Bullywog moves and leaps. He moved ahead. He moved no, but what I mean is, if he's within he 30 feet, he doesn't you. get the, the yeah. double damage, right? The Bullywug was 90, 100 feet away, and so it moves and leaps, and he's going to get the double damage if he hits. Yeah, listen. You, this might be well. You know, it's a 2d6 if it hits. Yeah, at least you can go he, to has the to, he has to do... Oh, it's only a 2d6. He has to do 17 damage to kill me. It's fine. Right, and if he crits, then it's only 4d6. Yeah, yeah I mean, we've not got a fire. It's pretty basically impossible to die. Let's let's even go harder, okay? Let's not roll forty six. Let's roll one dice and multiply it by four, okay? If he crits, let's do it. No. Just <laughs> you're gonna kill your character in the first. Time. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, a a one in three chance of death if it crits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I accept my fate. Well, he's not gonna crit, right? He's, he's not gonna crit. He's yeah. not gonna. Cr in fact, we will use we'll we'll use the red blood okay, die. That'll that one won't crit. I mean. This one will crit. Okay. What does he need to crit? He needs 20. an 18 to crit. Why did you do this? <laughs> I wanted to brace. He convinced me Neil. not to. <laughs> Save or die. Is he rolled an 18? No. Oh. He rolled a 1. 20. I rolled oh a 20. God. <laughs> the you know Bullywug leaps into the air. And just, you know, we're early in the day. The sun rises in the east, so when he leaps up into the air, just by the positioning, for a moment, like, he blocks the sun, and your eyes look up, and you have to squint and turn away. So you don't see the Bullywug until it's too late, until the short sword is aiming down at your body, and... I want you to roll damage publicly. Yeah, you gotta roll. And I want you to roll a times four. Oh, yeah. One die times four. You want me to roll one die times four? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, because he's doing double damage. And then it's a crit. And yeah. then it's a crit. 46. I roll 46. Whoa. You really want me to roll Multiply. one die? No, 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 this no, no, is a no, one in three no, chance no, of death. No, 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 no. I want to do it. <laughs> no, Neil, no. That's not the rules. You roll 46. And you uh, wait, we should six. also talk about what are we doing for, like, if you hit zero, do you die? Are we doing that? Or what are we no, doing? No, no, minus, 10 minus, 10. No, minus, minus 10 is dead. Minus 10 is dead. You know, you guys aren't letting me kill my character. Like, what the hell? Well, I got I got my four D6s over here. Roll time. No, no, no. We roll okay. them all no, together. No, because like if he rolls a one, I'm alive. 
if he if he rolls forty six, I'm like guaranteed down, right? So I yeah. want that one in six chance that I'm still standing. No, mate, because if he no, he's more likely to roll an average number if he rolls forty six, and it won't kill you. Yeah, but there's a good chance I'll be you're down. dead outright if he rolls one dice. No. I care more the about the one. I care more yeah, about the yeah, one. The rules. Rules. Yeah, yeah, whatever. The rules. Fine. Okay, well, if we're going to play the rules are rules, then I'm rolling 2d6 and doubling it. Okay. Yes, yes. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, I don't like that. Fine. I want the one <laughs> dice. No. It's rules his rules. It's his life in line. Right, How can we decide what dice you roll? The rules are the rules. That's true. That'd be madness. The yeah, rules madness. are the rules. Oh, well, see, can we, we quote that later? We had, <laughs> no, because me and Neil had discussed is if I sneak attack crit someone, mm -hmm. I can roll one dice and just multiply it. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm applying it to myself. <laughs> because the, in the the thief skills, when you sneak attack and hit, oh you get you God. multiply <laughs> die damage, or you can roll multiple Fine. dice. Glenn die. I don't know what about this. He's an old man. He's the only nice person in the party. Nice person. Fuck it. Oh wait, that's on the book. <laughs> no, it wasn't really. It was a four. It was a four. Okay. 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 Two times four is eight. I'm, I'm, I'm down, but I'm fine. Okay. You're the right. the right. bullywog <laughs> pierces you from above. All right, man. This is the one that didn't get slept. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. I did not prepare my cure wound spell, by the way. Yeah. yeah it's all right. We're good. Okay. He literally could still die. Have you got medicine? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you. I come bearing coming. gifts oh. of celebration because you didn't die. Yay. You are quickly Yay. becoming my favorite person. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you guys were way yeah, more attached. Move it, like more over here. Uh, Do we, we can move the map away. I know, but we're gonna be like all. We need but to I'm eat. gonna get you small plates. Oh. Well, okay. Do Cameraman yeah. says it looks nice here. Okay. Yeah. Do we want to eat while we're on mics? Yes. Yes, yes, we do. Because they can mute the track. Okay. Just don't yeah. eat when you're talking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because otherwise we're independent mics and we can. Yeah, great. But I, I love how I'm the one arguing for my character to die. I love it. <laughs> you want to get grit. I you know, quick character some... but this is the save or die mantra, right? This is the, you know, where you can die at any given point. There yeah. is no plot armor. Yep. Um, I hate that. I was begging Koi Blue at the wedding, like, the next time that we play Cosmos, please, can you give my Never. little beautiful Never. Okay, I'm going to put it over here for Neil to put uh, something Never. Plot mm. armor, and he said no. No. But you did reveal Ancient Lord to Do me. we want to move the Do you remember? Remember any of it? Yes. What do you remember? I remember everything. I don't believe you. I don't. I quiz me after. Well, all right, I'll quiz you after. Okay. No, I would never tell a soul. Okay. Neil, did you tell her things that? She, yes, she asked questions. She's the bride. <laughs> and you can't refuse the bride on the day of her wedding. And, and she I asked know me. so much, but I don't understand how important it is or not, but yeah. I know stuff. The husband got told to go fuck himself. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, it's, that's, how it's, it's, married. it's just how it works, yeah. Okay, thank you for well, passing this to me. Oh. Oh. Go ahead, dude. Mm. We have so much more time. We have, we have like a gig at Ooh, it's Do we want to, like, do we need it. the map? Do you want to put the map away for a while? Yeah, so go we, ahead. Yeah, the map's yeah. fine. You, you chuck it. Because we can refer Oh to... my fucking god. I'm not done. Is it the Draconis platter? Oh, Jesus. thank you. And then this is the accoutrements that go with the Draconis platter. Accoutrements. And you're being taxed two tater tots. Ooh, tater tot tags. I like to say it's all. Well worth it. All right. Sorry, we're so hungry. Yeah, the We're hunger so has... Hungry. Oh my god, this looks amazing. Yeah. Very Instagram. All right, now it's initiative five. Okay. And you're down, Jamie. Next up is initiative 10, Mr. Mooten. Okay. Here's my D21. I go down with a scream. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I'm rage mode. I roll an eight. My bro. I missed. You bring out the glaive. Mm -hmm. You whip it around. You try and hack this bullywug's head off, right? But you just... He ribbits down into the water. The glaive passes harmlessly overhead. Next initiative is 12, which is Pichow. Now, you are moving forward. Mm -hmm. You transform. Um, you can catch up to where uh, Jamie's character, Ren, is. But you can't attack this Ren. But now you're a bear standing next to the bullywug that killed this. What do you think of Ren? Are you buds? Yeah, he's playing with me. He's teaching me numbers and shit. Well, this bullywug just stabbed him through the fucking chest yep. with a short sword. Yeah, How does that make I was you? mad as fuck. He left out a growl. <laughs> and he's ready to fucking go. Now, you can see that this bullywug, who's got these big buggy eyes, mm -hmm. somehow the eyes get bigger because you were just a weird looking person, mm -hmm. but now you're a fucking bear. Yeah. 
in the water next to this creature. Bears, as we all know, are dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But that's the end of your turn. Yes. Um, next up is uh, 14. <coughs> the belly will. <coughs> You're gonna make something happen this round. Oh, well, no, you already fighting missed. Fighting me. Yeah. If you already missed. Yeah, he did. There's like a stake here. This is so the good. Stake's good. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. The bullywug stabs at you with a 10 plus 1 is 11. Yes. Completely missing. And there are no second attacks this round. Jamie, it's your round. Your turn comes along. You bleed one point of HP. No, there's no oh death saves. God. I want to see. If I get a nat 20, no. can I recover one so, HP to no. zero? Come on. No. The rules are the Four. rules. So I take one HP. You were at what? Negative one? I'm at negative two. No, you're at negative two. A four. A four. All right. Negative two. Initiative. Okay. Someone always goes down first round of combat. Yeah, yeah. So show me, right? There's one bully who fighting Gar. Mm -hmm. There's three asleep, yeah, and there's uh -huh. one who's just downed. Just downed Ren, but yeah, is next to the bear. Yeah. yeah. But he's next to the bear. Yeah, what are you going to do? Also me, please. I kind of trust the bear. I mean, I, I, it kind of feels like it's in harm. Yeah. Um. Okay, I'm gonna cast Chill Touch, just mm -hmm. sort of like grab it in case any of them mm -hmm. make it to me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. So, with my issue is three again. Okay. I'm at um I'm at sixteen this round. Excellent. Um I rolled a four. Four plus uh oh, three wait. plus two. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, I see, I see. Thank so you. it's a nine? Nine, yeah. Three yeah. for your initiative, two because you're on um difficult settings yeah. footing. Oh my god. Give me a piece, please. I'm just gonna keep the stick. Okay. The you got the um, this is so good. Yeah, I'm unbelievable. This. Nine. Unconscious. Nick, what'd you roll? Three. Again? Yeah. Another two? Another two. Fucking hell. Okay. I mean, I'm not doing anything. Else. Well, no, you're up first, my friend. I haven't got the material components at hand for Chill Touch. Like, I don't know what they are. I mean. mm. But, uh... I assume if you have a spell, you have the components. No, no, I meant I was going to say what they were, but... but uh, I cast Chill Touch. My left hand will... Um, wait, hang on. If I cast it on my left hand and I only attack with the chill touch, do I get still get a minus two? Yes, because it's your offhand. Okay. So I cast it on my right hand. Um, and then I am, end the turn by sheathing my dagger. So I don't do anything, I stay where I am. I'm aware that there are three bully wolves that are asleep in front of me. There is one fighting the bear. There is one fighting the frog. Mm -hmm. So I am ready to defend myself, but I basically just I'm just waiting. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. That's three. Next up is five. That is the bullywog that is next to Ren, who just stabbed you through the chest and is now standing next to the bear. He was like, you know, you turn into a bear and then you do the bear gallop through the water towards him. And this yeah. bullywog, you know, sees you charging up. Combat's fluid. You don't actually like stop next to him and wait a few minutes for your round to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're charging towards him. He goes before you and the frog just submerges beneath the water, takes a withdraw action, and swims the fuck away from the charging bear, because what else, like, who's gonna stand you next to a charging bear? Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Okay. You charge the bullywug, and he immediately bails. Um, next up is eight initiative, which is the bullywug fighting you, There's who may or may not you. notice what's going on over there. Does not notice. I think maybe the, the position of the fighting has changed so that you are facing the bullywug and behind the bullywug is the other bullywug yeah. and behind them is them. And so the the one you're fighting doesn't actually see the battle happening behind him. Thank you. Um, and so assuming that his brethren have his back, the dumb fuck takes his spear, shoves it down your throat with a 16 to hit, will actually hit you for two points of damage. Okay, All right. Um, and then it is initiative nine, eight, eight, nine. It's your turn. You've charged up, but that bully will like dove under the waves and swam yes. away in the swampy, murky waters. Yes. What are you going to do? I'm going to enrage bear, and I'm going to attack whatever the next target is next to me. So wherever the closest bully will is, I charge at him. There's some bully wolves like 40 feet away that are unconscious floating on their backs. Okay. And there's no one like... There's no one else except for red. Okay. He's bleeding. 
and filling the swamp with blood. Um. Now you'd rolled to attack, right? You'd rolled to fight. Yeah. What are you gonna do now that there's not a target next to you? I think Growl mm. is still a fucking bear. Quality. Yeah. And Growl is going to charge after the fleeing bully was. Mmm. Okay. So whatever movement I need to catch up with them, mm-hmm. I will take. We're gonna have to put your head underwater and look for the belly wood because he's swimming away. So give me a perception check. Okay. As you as you snout under the no under the water. Yeah. Um. So that is. So I can do my perception check. I'll, I'll, I'll just roll my perception check first. So that is a, an eight plus twelve. That's a twenty. Ooh, you are one shy. So you put your head into the water. Well, I have a special proficiency to pick up tracks. You do. In battle. You do. Mm-hmm. He's a bear form. So does that smell. work underwater? Well, I feel question. like I could smell it above water. Mm-hmm. I feel like these bullywogs leave a trace in the water mm-hmm. that I can then smell, right? They're leaving, like, they're, they're, they're disgusting right. creatures. Well, it's a 50% chance, so roll me a True. d100 and roll a 50 or lower. Alright. 84. Not as bad. Mm-hmm. There are the smells of multiple bullywogs, including the one that you know, and they're all sort of confused. Yep. And you have to pause and like sniff them out and like Get it. snort pause. around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, all right. So you're looking around for the bullywogs in question. Yep. Um, moot, your turn. Do you okay. get two attacks this round? Yeah. You can make them both right now because um, everyone else is gone. I mean, it's my D. Oh, I made D20. All right. Here's my glaive attack. Okay, that's going to be 14. That's a hit! Finally. For 1d10 plus 3. Oh my. That's going to be 6 damage on that one. You immediately run the Bullywug through with your glaive, and he croaks. Can I jump back and try and help my uncle? (laughs) Thank you, thank you. Uh, Yes, you can jump back, but you can see that, like, the other ones are gone already. Like, there's one submerged, and then the others are floating. I'm going underwater. You're going to go underwater and swim? Give me a perception check. Um, is that a nine or a six? Is that dot? That's a nine. nine. That's a nine. So that's going to be nine plus 12. 21. 21. All right. Yeah. You will see the Bullywug swimming towards you. Shield um, is now, instead of being up to help make a wake, is like flat to kind of cut through the water. But you can see the Bullywug swimming towards you. It's eyes wide. I'm going to make an attack if I can. Okay, let me see. Oh, buddy, this guy thinks that you're just another, like, you, he's, you don't, he doesn't recognize you, you're not part of his Bullywug tribe, but you are a Bullywug, and yeah. so he's not thinking about you as, like, with these monsters. Also, he's a super handsome Bullywug, so he's like, damn. Hold on, I need to go for the gender of this oh Bullywug. God. Hold on. It's a girl Bullywug. Oh, she's uh, like, oh, shit. So, you know, she's going to swim past you, and then all of a sudden, submerging to the water is the strongest Tallest, most handsomely Bullywug. sexy skin, non-spotted, olive green Bullywug yeah. she's ever seen in her life. Um, what's your hotness? Uh, 18. Make me a hotness check, a d20 plus 18. Mmm. Work <laughs> that. Imagine you fail it. Natural. <laughs> she goes away. She but I go away. and attack her. Okay. Yeah. You can uh, make it's it not like a thing stuck to his nose. It's like you, yeah. she sees that she sees you. You're you're not her type. You yeah. know she's not into the Adina. She's into like the nerdy bully yeah. ones. Yeah. You know, so she goes off in a different direction. But you can meet her halfway. Okay. I'm gonna go and attack her. Um, for a nine plus two ten. Ten is not a hit. Even also, with their shield being parted. Yeah, bully ones have a natural fourteen. Also, um, is your you're using a glaive or a halberd? Using a glaive. Is that a piercing or a slashing weapon? It, you had it as piercing. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, piercing weapons, no Easy. penalty underwater. Slashing and bludgeoning, major ones. Yeah. What do you need? I was going to take this. What's taken? Oh, I right. feel like a glaive is slashing. No? He uh, put it on here. here. He put a P yeah. on here. Oh, oh, I feel really like it is slashing. Though. But it has a, a pointy tip. Yeah. I think glaive can be used alternatively. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So All right. So I chose the glaive. So you, you miss, and she begins to swim off. Do you want to give chase? Um, she swims off again. Oh, here's that gap. I'm not going to get chased, but okay. if she just swim off, I'm going to take one more hit. Next round, if you beat her in initiative, you can make an attack, otherwise she's disengaging and moving. Um, it's going to be 13 for me. And she gets an 8. She's out. Okay, cool. Okay. But, I need you to roll me a flat d10, no modifier, versus 
Is someone going to try and bind the old man's wounds? I will on my next turn. The Romance. fight's still going, isn't it? No. No, the fight's over. over. Fight's okay. over. Yeah, so it's... It, well, no, it's d20 plus intelligence. Well, first off, it's a d10 plus 3 to to get to him and bind his wounds. Oh, the initiative. Yeah, initiative. Yeah, yeah, and okay. against your flat d10 just for bleeding. Yeah. I got a 9 total. 5. All right, okay, so you're so going to bleed, bleed a point. Negative 4. And then you will arrive at the negative Now, you don't have a healing okay, so proficiency. It's, it's half my int. Well, it's d20, right? Where's that player's uh, I think handbook? He's, I think you're correct, yeah. yeah I think it's, you're it's right. It's unproficient, so it's yeah. half the stats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it depends if medicine has a minus one or something. Well, give me, where's the player's handbook? Because it's been a hot minute let's since we've done it. this. Yeah, let's, just, might, let's just yeah, check, no, check. It might be wisdom as well. Yeah, Actually. I don't remember, for some reason, I don't remember, we've been playing so much 5e lately. Mm. Fucking 5e. Fucking 5e, it's so much fun, it's god damn it. Our brains. <laughs> True. Yeah. This was a really good cocktail. I enjoyed it. Yeah. It's like a gin and tonic kind of, right? Mm. Um, I don't know what it is, but... It's definitely gin and tonic. I, I don't know about anyone else, but I'm starting to feel a little bit... It's because you're soft. Yeah. 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 You've lost your touch, old man. Well, my beer is 6.5%. <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. All right, just I don't, don't, just don't get angry, right? You just... <laughs> <laughs> leave me alone! <laughs> oh, also... If there's more food coming before you like super dig in, keep in mind we're also going to a nice restaurant later tonight. Yes. Yeah, but it's only like you okay. but yeah, think that would stop me? Yeah. <laughs> you underestimate all potential. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Roll half your int. Half your it's int, not, not will. That's what we're gonna do right now. It's not in the book, roll half your int. Okay. So I mean my willpower is higher. Roll half your int, wizard. D twenty yeah. plus seven, rounding down. Uh, that's a fail. So I am unable to bind his wounds. Mm -hmm. It's smart. I just want to point out there's a high chance that his character dies here. Yeah, I think so. If no one can make this intelligence check, he will die. Could they use entangle to bind his wounds? No. Okay. Not even slightly. Like it. But it's a robot your character. <laughs> yeah, the I'm not. Like, <laughs> the bullywug yeah. can get to the old man. I'm going to the old man. Yeah, yeah. And I am going to try and bind his wounds. Um. I don't think I took it as a proficiency. Let me just you don't take no. You did not take healing or um, oh God, medicine. I picked or... the wrong spell, guys. Why did I do this? Fine. Okay. Uh, I have ten in, so we're doing half. Yeah. D twenty plus five. Come on, mate. Come on, mate. It's not enough. It's not I just want to point out. Nice. I just want to point out at the start of this fight. I said I'm going to brace for the attack and I'm going to defend. And then someone was like, "Why don't you soy dive onto these giga frogs?" Who said that? <laughs> but to be fair, I, if he, I said you should run in because mm. then they won't have the jump speed to mm. get you. Mm. Yeah, it's Neil rolling with fancy that fucked us. That's what fucked us. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. It's Nick saying you're not going to crit on that die yes. that fucked us. Mm. Sod's law? That is my fault. Sod's law. Am, I down, am I down to minus five now? Yeah. Okay. Um, now, the bear, you've been searching the water. All of a sudden, like, you see your friends are gathered around this old man, and they're, they're doing their best to put him back together. <laughs> you know, they're, they're trying everything that they've got to put Humpty Dumpty to back together again. Yeah. You're the only hope. I will, I just want to point out, I'm a bear. <laughs> <laughs> Your last hope not bleeding out. It's like, Wait, you've only got seven inches. <laughs> He's a bear! I'm a bear! So Hold wait, on. Unless you roll an 18, his card is death. Hold on. Is that, wait, is that true? We gotta. That's not how that works. Alright, injury and death. Now right. injury you and can death. try multiple times. Sometimes no degree of luck, skill, or ability, or resistance to various attacks can prevent harm from coming to a character. The adventuring life carries with it unavoidable risks. Sooner or later, a character is going to be hurt. Um, blah, blah, blah. Hit points are a thing. You subtract damage from your hit points. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> damage multipliers. <laughs> One attack. One attack that was... Blah, blah, blah. People have actually <laughs> fallen from great heights and survived. The record holder, Vesna oh, Volvuk, survived a height from 33,000 feet in 1972, although she was severely injured. This uh -huh. book is probably from like 87. Yeah, yes, sure. yes. Yeah, yeah, Five yeah. Red Bull artists that have broken that record. Um, natural healing, character death, 
Blah, blah, blah. I think blah. medicine is willpower, not int. You think it's wisdom? Yeah, I think it is. Well, the, the negative 10 rules, I think, are in the DMG, in like the DMG. and the yeah, combat and tactics like, I did right, not right, bring. I'm turning my phone back on yeah. to confirm this. All right. So this is a serious thing. All right, bring out your very best rules, Laurie, yeah, boys. Yeah, Jamie, I loved Ren. <laughs> I, just want to, I just want to point out again, I'm a bear. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I love that I'm dead. It's great. Well, I also don't remember if you only get one check or if you get one check per round. So where is this at, you think? It's either in the DMG or it's in the combat and tactics. Actually, combat yeah, and tactics is the place. No, yeah. it be in proficiencies, no? No, no. because it's, this is an optional rule. Yeah, death at negative 10 is an optional rule to make the game less lethal because death at zero is real hard. No. Oh. There's no crits. I feel like it's easier to die with negative 10 plus crits than it is to die. But crits are a regular rule. No. We never had crits. You're going to play DD without crits? Yeah. What? Are you saying there's no crits in, without the combat and tactics? Yeah. Oh, oh. it's an optional rule in the, in the player's handbook. But we never had crits in Hardcore Heroes. That's I don't know if this is in combat and tactics. You can also search. Here, I'll. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to. I know you can search at the top, but what do you can search like that? I'm going to take a piss. You guys figure this out. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> I don't know how physics is cutting this, but we decided to maybe read the rules and see what the books say because we're at a, a critical point here. Um, and apparently, if the, the rules say you get fed, then you get back up. Wait, what? Because the food oh, is okay. coming. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes, uh, fish and chips. That, that would have been good, Nick. Here you go. Yeah. The burger that has chicken. They told me the names and I forgot. I think that's me. Buffalo chicken. Tots. Yes, that's me. We got the yeah. same, so it's. Oh my god, that's a lot of things. I would be such a bad it's so much food. Wow. Oh yeah, yes. but that's what you want. It's your first day. Give yourself a break. <laughs> <laughs> you will have a job after this year. Oh yeah, yeah. That's true. Do you all, you all live in Toronto? Yeah. Okay, I thought so. Yeah. No, we'll be back here. We love yeah. this place. Mm. I have a storm burger. Both sure. of you. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And. Oh. We have got the kids' menu chicken tendies. Is this the kids' menu? <laughs> no, it's not, but it should be. <laughs> tendies are legit for adults. Oh they my are God. not. At least with streamers. Mm. Yeah. Mm. The number of tendies I've had delivered to my house while playing D&D. &D. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You don't really like ketchup, though. I'm enjoying ketchup and taste tots. Yeah. It feels right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, How do you like tater tots? Yeah. Can I that? Storm burger. But if they made these, or are these just like bought it? Oh, they bought it. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's good. That's good. All right. Thank you. So we looked up the rules, and apparently, when you get to zero HP, the the book says you can bind wounds for free. You can use your healing proficiency to regain was it D four HP, or you can use magic to gain more HP. So uh, we didn't actually need any rolls. So I bound his wounds. You bound his wounds. Okay, good. All right. All right. It's fine. So I've saved his life is what you're mm. saying. He owes you his life. Yes. Um, and you can hold that over his head for as long as you want. Yes. I had like, when I went to the bathroom, I had like prepared like a, can I wake up for a moment before my death and talk? Uh, <laughs> I had prepared a speech. <laughs> well, we'll I know, save it for the next encounter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know the rest of you are happy, but I was kind of looking forward to the, the character death. Just a, just a smidge. Just a little part of me is like... You didn't have enough? If we're called save or die, you know... I really want it. I, I know it's going to sound grim. You kind of the campaign last session. Yes, yes. Last it's session, everyone session. died. I know, yeah. but like... I'm a hungry DM, okay? Yeah, I, I like the Maw. The Maw's a great concept. I kind of want to die. We're in the Maw right now. Mm. It's beautiful. Neil only cares about killing the party. <laughs> <laughs> there was recently a Reddit thread and people were mad. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And I replied with something according to like, oh, thank God that Ma uh, Mott like lured the party. Yeah. People got they were mad. Upset. Oh, they were you like, Neil, you should know better than trying to bake them when they're that upset. Oh, the hormones were running high. <laughs> oh. All right. Anyway, but this presents us with a brand new problem, because you were at negative what was it? Negative three. Three, and um, according to the rules. When this is this is an interesting rule that we often don't use, but since Nick is so insistent on playing by the rules, the rules yes. if you're at negative HP, every day you roll a d10, 
if the number on the die is equal to or less than your negative HP value, you gain a hit point. Otherwise, you lose a hit point. So if you're at negative three, you roll a d10 after 24 hours. If you roll a one, two, or three, you gain an HP. If you roll a four through 10, you oh, lose okay. an HP. Mm. So if you're, if you're barely negative, you'll probably recover really... Slow. No, I'm sorry, it's the other way around. It's the other way around. If you roll higher than your negative value, you gain an HP. If you roll less than your negative value, you lose an HP. So if you're at negative nine, you're gonna die unless you get healing magic. Yeah. Mm. If you're at like negative one or two, you're probably gonna recover. Um, so once you hit that negative five mark, like without healing magic, you're more likely than not to die. Yeah. You're at negative three. So you're more likely than not to survive if you can't get healing magic. Yeah. I'll the party fine. is two hours out, maybe three hours out from Autumn's Tower. And she's a cleric. She might she's have some cleric spells. spells. She's cast a couple of cleric spells, but you don't know if it's by a device, if it's by yeah, her yeah. own multi-classing. Maybe she has an assistant. You don't know. You've never seen an assistant. Only the invisible servants. Okay. Um, Got it. So, rest of the party. Okay, so the, the bully walks are flat. Or I am, asleep. I am, oh right, there's still the ones asleep. There's three sleeping ones. They're going to wake up eventually. Yeah, so we need to I, deal with that. I kill them. All right, they're fucking dead. Okay, we're going to kill them. <laughs> All right. Raul will assist in mauling them. They're so gone. I say, um, I say to uh, the bully walk, Oh. Ren seemed like a nice guy, but uh, his wounds are bad. He might not make it if we don't get him back to uh, to civilization soon. Do we carry on, or should we go back? We go back. Ra is like in the background. He's just eating a bit of like the bowl. Of... I would like we to go back. It's not even a question. I would like to groan unconsciously. <laughs> All right, well, I'm not carrying him. Okay. Well, you have the wagon. We weren't talking about it, but you've got the wagon that also doubles as a boat. It's got these wheels that will fold down so it can be in wagon mode or they fold back up mm -hmm. to become in cart mode or uh, boat mode. Okay. I put them on. We put, put them on, on the, the wagon, wagon and, and I think we have to go back to autumn. Okay. Now, you just set out from her place and you're going to end up like, you're going to have been gone for six hours and you're going to show up with an unconscious bleeding person. Yeah, yeah. Um, is there any conversation on the way to Autumn's about how awkward this is that she just hired you to do this job and now you're going to be like... Well, I'm, I'm happy to let him die. Ren wants to... Uh, sorry, Garth wants to save his life. Mm -hmm. So I think it's on Garth to explain to Autumn mm. what happened. He was meant to be our scout. He let us get ambushed. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm in bear form. I cannot talk. I'm just going around. I'm yeah. sniffling him. Like... I'm feeling a little bit put out by the quality of my companions here. Mm. You know, I dealt with three of the Bullywooks on oh. the first round. Mm. It's true. You were fighting one for like three rounds before you Can managed you to kill him, him and he got fucking one shot, so. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Okay, well, three hours later, you're gonna get back to Autumn's with your cart. Mm. And um, with her, you know, multi-story tower, she can see you coming. She does. She meets you down at the gate as you're like pulling the wagon like onto land, which is a bit of a bitch to get it from water to land. And then you can unfold the wheels and everyone together lifts it up so it can, you know, then roll. And Autumn comes like trotting out, looking around like, excuse me, I just sent you out from here. What's going on? Where I was like circling around her and sniffling and he's like, he wants a treat. <laughs> She's not giving you any yeah, treats right now. Treat. <laughs> we got ambushed and um, a bully one shot into the sky and uh, put a spear through Ren. We need either healing magic or to stay here a few nights. Why didn't you explain to them who you were? I don't speak Bullywug. Why don't you speak Bullywug? Because I'm not a Bullywug. Growl's gonna look at you and like, shook his head. Who are you then? I'm Garth, but I don't speak Bullywug. Grow smells you and picks up the Bullywug smell and like goes over to Autumn and he's like, <laughs> mm-hmm. I see. She looks over at Ren. His wounds are hastily bound. You can take the healing magic out of my cut. Hmm. That's nice. She regards you for a moment after you say that. Because that's the entire cut. <laughs> <laughs> that's the entire roll. It's, it's at least 50 gold pence. Gold pieces for a break your life wins. <laughs> break your life wins. And she watches you for a moment. Like, you've just called her out as being able to perform healing magic. Yeah. 
which she's never done in front of you. No. And this is a moment where she's like looking the bullywug who just admitted he's not a bullywug and doesn't speak bullywug, but thinks she has healing magic up and down. And you can see the gears turning in the wizard's head, like processing new information, recontextualizing relationships. Mm. And then she will roll up her sleeves, her red robes, her red wizard robes. She'll roll them up, put her hands together, rest them on Ren's chest and uh, mutter, whisper kind of loudly a prayer. You know, dear Martha, hear my words. Bring this man back from the brink of death. His time is not done. I have need for him yet. Dear Martha, please save this sorry soul. And um, a little bit of like soft light will emanate from the hands. Your wounds will begin to knit over. There's a couple of coughs and hiccups and um, your eyes will blink forward. You, you still need like 24 hours or like you need a night of rest to recover, um, but you can take a... <gasps> I think Rao is on his side mm -hmm. as this happens. He's sniffing him the entire time and he's noticing that he's getting better. So he's getting like excited and he's like running around and he's like... Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll reach out a hand if I can to the bear and kind of like pat him on the side of the, the muzzle. Just like give him a little affection. No, it's okay. Yeah, I'm good. Mm -hmm. And I'll um, kind of open my eyes. Can I speak? Haltingly. <clears throat> Brink of death. I'll say, uh, close one, lads. <clears throat> and then fall back asleep. <laughs> Shake my head. I will, uh, you. go up towards him. Sort of take her aside if I can. And say, uh, this is quite embarrassing. But, uh, I'm wondering why he's here if he can't fight. And also, I'd have preferred to know about the bear. What would you like to know? Well, about... I would like to have known that he was a druid. I'm sure he would like to know what crimes you have committed in the past that have made you a wanted man. Well, that's not relevant right now. But the fact that... Is uh, it not? It's not, no. Not How here. do you not know? Not in this swamp. By the time you get to civilization, it would your past now. not catch up to you? Hopefully not. If you wish to know his secrets, you must trust him with your own. It is a two-way street, sir. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm being too harsh, but... Ren here. Why is he with us if he can't fight? She takes a beat. She looks at you. You know, you've pulled him away. Ren is over there, like, on the cart, dying, yeah. practically. There's the bear next to him. The I'm Bullywug is nearby, like clearly the three of them are communing. And she looks over uh, specifically at, at the Bullywug and goes, <clears throat> The two come as a pair. They have an interesting and complicated history. They are my friends. And you say he cannot fight, but I assure you he can. Okay. Everyone so has bad days. If you require payment for that spell, it shouldn't come out of my cut. <laughs> we only survived our fight because of my magic. And I'm the one who burned his wounds. I'm not going to go and complete this mission without a reward. Just because he bit the dust. Sir, I will pay the group. How you split it amongst yourselves is none of my business. Well, do we still get our full reward? Right now, you have done nothing and you get no payment. I but appreciate if you that. bring the money, if you bring the glass, I will pay you your 108 gold. Okay, that's fine. You talk amongst yourselves. I understand. You're, that's fine, Watson. Thank you. <laughs> what school did you go to? <clears throat> a tower far from here. Does it have a name? Uh, it had a name, yeah, it has what a name. What was its name? Uh, the Backbone Tower. <laughs> Storm oh no, wait, sorry, I missed this. Storm Crow Tower. Storm Crow Tower. Yeah, oh. Storm Crow Tower. I see. We called it the Backbone Tower because of a mountain range nearby. Ah, right, yes. right. I respected Tower. I am a wizard of good repute. I was top of my class. I can assure you that whatever history I have and the circumstances of my uh, dismissal are a uh, uh, an inconvenience and a misunderstanding. And I would hope that at some point I can 
bring myself back into the fold, but for now I must keep a low profile. And you said your name was Arrakis. Arrakis, yes. Of the Storm Crow, Crow Tower. Tower near the Backbone Mountains. That's right. Hmm. Interesting. Do you know it? Not yet. I've, uh, I was not born into my position. I earned my education and my success, and I think that deserves some respect. You're clearly a wizard of great power and unusual talents with your prayers. I've not seen the like of that myself, but uh, I'm not looking to make an enemy of yours, and I have good respect for you. I just perhaps wonder about your, uh, your companions here. Mm. I'm risking my life traveling with these folk. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, there was a great wizard who saved the life of a pitiful creature upon the grounds that it is not our place to judge the pitiful. And that came back to save everything at the end of the day. These men and beasts with you are not even pitiful creatures. You may not understand the value they provide. It may not be tangible to you, but to me, there is much at stake here. There is much to be gleaned from the party assembled. You are the odd man out. Your value here is your knowledge, which is, to be frank, easily replaceable. The value each of these people provides is wholly unique to me their value as mercenaries to move goods <clears throat> is aside from what I care. So you may not understand why I choose them, but I do. I hope you manage to work well with them, for I intend to have a long relationship with them. And you are welcome to stay and participate. It would be nice to have someone who knows the ways of scholarly magic. But if not, that's fine. I will always find another young, eager wizard. Well, don't think I'm dismissing your words. I respect your position and your power. Uh, the circumstances of your situation here are not known to me. Yes. And I respect your wisdom on this. I am a little bit concerned for my own well-being. Um, things have been rough for me mm -hmm. recently, and I need to know that my back's against the wall, that I'm working with people I can trust to help me. Has Perhaps anyone... my experiences have been soured by this initial mm. encounter, but uh, if you vouch for them, if you vouch for him, I say, motioning to Ram, then I'll give him another chance. Well, on your journey, do your best to learn a little bit about Ren. And let us have this conversation again when you know more of him. Be not hasty to judge. There is a deep history here. Okay. I trust, oh. I trust you. And by association, I'll give him a chance. Keep your eyes and your ears open. There is more to this group than meets the eye. Well, clearly, I say, pointing <laughs> to the bar. He's like in the corner. Cleaning his crotch with his mouth. <laughs> Did you notice the Bullywug who does not speak Bullywug? Well, I don't know what language he speaks. I, I heard him say that, though. It's strange. I what do you think of it? I don't know. It makes no sense. Many of the uh, elements of this group don't make much sense. Isn't it fascinating? It is. Ren here is an ex manic court. There's a Bullywug who doesn't speak that language. There's a a foreigner who presents himself as a man yet seems to be more beast. Yes. I'm starting to think, uh, I thought I was the outcast, but uh, seems I'm closer to civilization than all three of these. Well, when you have reflected on the nature of your quadrant, I would love to chat with you and see what you think. I'm sure we'll have much to discuss once this job is over. Mm-hmm. Do you not also appreciate the mysteries of life? Of course. Uh, well, what could be more intriguing? And she nods at the bear. 
and at the Bullywog. Uh, being able to spend your time delving into mysteries is a privilege of safety. Unfortunately, the time that I've spent uh, delving into the mysteries of the world is behind me. Now I must focus on survival. At least until I'm secure. When you look over, you see Garb holding Ren's hand. Okay. But, uh, perhaps I've acted hastily in a moment's passion. I don't appreciate my life being threatened five minutes into our journey, but perhaps it's just bad luck. <laughs> I will, uh, I will reflect on my shortcomings, Orton. You're a wise woman indeed. Let us take a holistic picture of the world. It is more intriguing. It is, there are many mysteries to life that I would love to learn. They may provide me answers. You and me both, okay. Well, rest here for the day. And she kind of speaks this up and like projects it to the rest of the party. Rest here for the day. We will see that food is provided. Um, give me a few minutes to prepare the tower for your arrival. And she'll head back into the tower and shut the door <laughs> and a few minutes later open the door and you'll, yeah, 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 After yeah. You'll smell, the, you'll smell the chicken wafting your way. After she leaves, I will walk over to uh, Garth, who's holding Rem's hand. When he knows that you're coming, he lets go. I uh, he come over and say, Garth, can I have a word? We can talk here quietly. Yeah, I don't think Rem's your listening. Okay. Where's, well, where's your mic? I just don't see it. Oh, it's okay. falling into my shirt. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, perhaps I judged you too harshly. Yes. I'm gonna approach this with an open mind. Let's work together and see what we can achieve together as a group. Hopefully uh, your friend here makes a full recovery. Kind of looks down, nods. Okay. I'll leave you to your uh, your grief. When I, I walk off, maybe to uh, hang out with the bear. Growl walks up to <clears throat> your character and he's kind of looking up at him. I'm just mm -hmm. like, I think I hand you a piece of beef jerky from my pack. He's so happy about this. Yeah. He like takes it, <laughs> rolls on his back. He's like chewing on it. Excellent. So, Ren. Yep. You're gonna wake up probably the next day. Well, um, I would hope that like <clears throat> does Garp stay with me in the night? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> can I wake up during the night? Mm -hmm. You'll wake up to Garp probably like conked out on like a chair nearby. Uh, yeah, I'll wake up, and there is a sort of feeling that I've never experienced in my life, which is that I am a burden. Um, all my life, like my age has come to catch up with me. I have been like a problem so I've been someone people turn to in times of doubt or difficulty like for solutions or you know I you know I lived a life of physical labor whether it was fighting or just carrying and doing things and the fact that today I like so completely failed um, has really taken its toll on me mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> if Garp is asleep I won't wake him but what I'm feeling right now is like a genuine extreme feeling of helplessness. Like my mortality has come home to roost and my age has come home to roost. And I'm starting to come to terms with the fact that I can't charge into battle anymore like I did when I was young. And that would be what I would do. And I've been in a period of adjustment, learning to be a more sneaky, roguish, skirmisher, thiefy kind of guy. And, my instinct was when I saw my friend in trouble was to charge after them, but that nearly compromised the entire party. Yeah. And there is part of me that wants to add, to just say, I don't, I don't think you can go with me anymore. I'm just not going to be useful enough. Um, and I almost go to wake up Garp and tell him all of this. Uh, and then I reach into my pocket and I hold on to something and I remember why I'm here. And I steal myself for tomorrow, and I go to sleep. It's a hard night. It's a tough night for the party. It's a tough first night. It's a mm -hmm. tough first encounter. Yeah, yeah. Bro's chilling. He's got food. 
It's all worked out for him. All right. Morning comes. You're up one HP. You can get up and get out of the bedroom at least, move around. Autumn will come down and um, ask you as you're like sitting there. Maybe the, everyone's gathered around for yeah. breakfast or something. And she's going to put like both hands on the back of your shoulders that you're sitting at the, when you're sitting at the table. Um, and she will sort of lean in and she will whisper a prayer to Martha, goddess of life, goddess of healing, goddess of creation. Um, a, a prayer that will sort of empower her hands and you can feel like an itching on that chest wound of yours that the whole thing like stitches and knits back together and you will gain uh, up to 10 hit points which is more than you need. <coughs> it's a lot more than I have. Yeah. Uh, I feel the warm healing energy pulse through my body and you know I was kind of hunched over and in a bit of pain you know my wound is still fresh but now I feel an awful lot better and I kind of sit up straight. Do I see him getting healing? Yeah everyone sees it. Hold my hand. It's up. very open. Do you mind helping me as well, Autumn? She'll come over to you. She'll, she'll get you one. <clears throat> and when that's clear, that's not enough. I think she's got a second. Uh, she'll get you six. Six in total? Okay. Six and one, so seven six, total. Seven. Okay. But that's all she's got. Thank you. So, let's try this again. Did I get one for the night's rest or no? No. No, no. didn't think so. I am preparing cure light wounds this time. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. All right. So cautiously, back to the right. Let's try this again. I'm really living up for names. Oh, well, last time you rolled a 95 on your encounter oh, check. Oh, really? Yeah, and yeah. 95 equals bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, today's a 33. Ooh. So it's easy. You get the full day through the swamp without... I mean, you well, see creatures... Before we set out, Garp probably wants to rush ahead again, right? No. This time he's going to save. Ooh. Like, closer yeah. back. Growl as, like, is going to scoot in front of the party in bear form, and he's going to, like, tap Garp, and he's going to signal, like, whoop, whoop, that would go together. Yeah, in front. Mm. As a group, I can smell, you yeah. can swim, and we do it together. Yep. Did um, um Garp spend the rest of yesterday in bear form? Uh, uh, Growl is. Growl, I'm sorry. Growl has not changed into any human form. Okay. So you have three transformations still. Yes. But wouldn't you have to change in order to change your spells? Or no? Thing? Oh, that's interesting. Mm. No, because you pray for your spells. So you don't need to be in human form to pray. You do need to be in human form to cast. Yes. But you don't need to be in human pray form to pray. pray. Yeah, cool. um, which actually brings us to a point I, I was waiting for an opportunity to bring up. Typically, a cleric makes very clear, like, I am praying to this deity for these spells. But Grau's a little... He's, he's a different bear. Yeah. What is it like internally? Because you, you don't even get full druid spells at this point. But what is yeah. it like internally when you are... Um, trying to get your spells for the day. Are you making a conscious prayer to a specific deity, or what does it feel like to you? I feel like Grau feels some power inside of him. Just, especially when he's in bear form, in his natural form, he feels like very in tune with it. Mm -hmm. Like he's riding on a wave. And when he goes into a humanoid form, it's like he's standing above it and he's no longer really touching the water. Mm. Um, and when he's in bear form, he's just floating on this wave of energy that he's very in tune with and very naturally kind of can go through and sift through and kind of, okay, this is this spell, it's inside of me right now. It's very, like, easy and natural to him, I think. Okay. Very cool. All right. Well. Okay, well, I relay my sleep spell. My <laughs> yeah, spell. Yeah. <laughs> the day passes without much event. You make it to the road, the, the road, what passes for a path um, along the, the maw. <clears throat> oh, and a three the very next day is fine. Um, you make it all the way out to Keygate on the second day. You see the walls of the town approaching. It's this big semicircular shaped wall. It's a, a palisade, like tall palisade wall, like, you know, 20 foot tall trees that they've just chopped down and then put in an earthen barrier with like a little mound and a ditch before it. 
um, and there's a road that goes across a, uh, a rampart, not a rampart, a drawbridge to the wall. Um, and you can see the town beyond and a flag flapping in the wind. Um, As the city comes into view, Brow is going to get the party's attention and be like, stop, he's just tapping his paw. And he's going to run off behind a tree. And you can just hear some stuff. <laughs> He'll walk from behind the, the, the tree, and he's still kind of wobbling, he's still like, <laughs> not really in control, but he's a human now, and he's, um, yes, I'm Gal, hello, <laughs> I'm Gal, nice to meet you, hello, <clears throat> hello. I, uh, I go up to Ren, and I say, Ren, do you have experience with key gates? Do you know this town? <clears throat> um, that is a question for Neil. How familiar with this town am I? <clears throat> Um, fairly familiar. You live in the swamp, you've taken a couple of jobs moving cargo through the maw, which is dangerous, but if you travel in a large pack, it's not so bad. So you have come through here a few times. Um, you have like a general understanding of the layout of the town, like you know the tavern that you prefer to go to. Would I, would I know anyone in the town? Would I have existing relationships? Would I, maybe I would know a local thieves guild, if there's a thieves guild. Would I know maybe a couple of beggars, mm. someone like that? Or well, even would I have one main contact in the town? The person you know for certain is Captain Damus. Right. Captain Damus is in charge mm. of security here at Keygate and sort of is the one to st hand, hang out with the other guards. Captain Damus is a, a male halberd fighter half-elf um, who's at least fifth level because they've got weapon they've got mastery with their halberd so they're a solid fighter and with them they've got like an entourage of like shit zeroth level fighters who help oh. them out and a bunch of archers who help them out and, like damus will usually take the front when a monster comes and be like i will tank you all try and get some dps on this creature um and they're sort of they're the head of security they're an important position they stay out of politics and they just sort of protect the town. And they've done that for actually a rather short time. They're new to this area. They've been brought in by the Verasi Empire from somewhere else to like stand as security. So Captain Damus wears the the cape with the it's a black cape with the big bla uh, white V carved into it for the sign of Verasi. Um, and they they don't really give a shit about politics. They don't give a shit about who you are, or what you're doing. They're just here for the town security. Now within the town itself. Um, if there were to be such a thing as a thieves guild, you wouldn't know of it yet. Like, if, if, in a hypothetical world where there's a thieves guild, like, they don't advertise that, mm -hmm. right? That's the sort of thing that you really have to... I might know, like, a band of thieves, or something, but not an actual guild. Right, right. You might have met other unscrupulous folks, um, but you wouldn't know of any, like, organization right. within. It probably doesn't even exist, you know? Have, that... I, have I been in this town before? Yes. If okay. you cross the Maw, you have to come through here. So I've been through here. You've been I've through here. I've met probably Captain Damos. And... Yes. And they have seen that there's a Bullywog yeah. that travels with a human. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you've dealt with them enough that, like, they will let you pass. But, like, I'm probably, fine. like, security check, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. I feel like Growl has also been here mainly to purchase meat pies yeah. and he yes. knows all the vendors and where to yes. get the nice food so he's probably known to these people as like this yeah. weird guy who comes in sometimes puts some gold on the counter and then sloppily eats his food and then goes back you are familiar with a shop in town called jeffrey's yes. and jeffrey sells small meats and meat pies and that Wonderful. that is like that's what you know you are yes. one of their best customers you always wildly overpay for your yeah. food because you don't have any concept of money. Yeah. Um, and when they see it. you coming, they br they bring it all out for you every yeah. time. They're always happy to see you. Okay. Um, I so also, I'll... Oh, oh go ahead. Sorry, I would also like to just work out what my backstory is here. My, sorry, my, uh, my cover story is because I would have a cover story that I'm using as I'm traveling through these lands. So I want the name of a small wizard tower that I would know about that I could say that I, would, I studied up and the town that I'm from. Tell me the names. Um, okay, so I want something small. Um, you did. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what about the Harkness Tower? Okay. Is that a real place? Do you care? Because you might not... I don't yeah, know how long you've been traveling, so you might not know of many small, actual, like, useful towers out there. Well, I think I would purposely be seeking one out. I don't want to say a big tower, because then I'm increasing the chances that somebody in the town 
knows somebody mm-hmm. at that tower and can okay. second guess it. So you're there. talking about like a tower where wizards come together for organized magics, like a, a proper educational facility. Yeah, like where I studied. Oh, I studied at this place, but it's right. in the middle of nowhere and nobody knows it. Right. It's like so, my girlfriend lives in Canada type thing. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> she, she actually does. She goes to a different yeah. school. Um, <laughs> so the thing is, a long time ago, there were lots of these wizard towers. Mm-hmm. At the end of the Age of Might, um, bad things were happening in the world. The gods got pissed. They fucked the world up. And in the process, a lot of magic was lost and destroyed. A lot of clerics vanished, and a lot of the wizard towers sort of crumbled. Yeah. Um, and then in the wake of that, which is like 1,500 years ago, there was a lot of like blaming of the clerics and the wizards for the problems, for like causing that, like, because the peasants can't cause the gods to get yes. break apart the world. Obviously. It's yeah. the wizards' fault. So Makes a lot sense. of these like great educational facilities were undermined mm-hmm. by local populations. Mm-hmm. Some resisted and like decimated local populations. Others capitulated and said like, "You don't like us. We're just gonna go. Let us take our stuff." And others managed to negotiate like. So would I more- claim to be a wizard from out? Like trained from outside the system. Um, no, if you're wearing red robes, you're definitely yeah. from within the system. But there's not that many towers remaining. But you would also know that unless you're a wizard, you don't fucking know any tower names. You don't know any of this shit. So you could make up a name and people would just accept it, or you could name one of the few towers that are actually super real. Um, the the tower that would get you the that no one would be able to check up on would be the tower in Valesburg. That was sort of cursed, and it's got this like fear zone based around it, and it's sort of unoccupied, and it's in the middle of a major city, but like the tower itself is cursed, and so if you were trained in there, like the, the only person who could check up on you would be like a high-ranking person in the Verasi Empire. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So none of the none of these goons out here, not even this guy, Captain, whatever the fuck his name is, yeah. Deimos, could I'm possibly. I'm not planning to give this information unless asked. I just wanted to have it. Yeah. Because I feel like my character would have a story yeah. that he's been saying. Okay. Do they yeah. take your weapons when we enter? If it's a fully walled city, they will take your weapons. This is just a half wall to protect against the swamp. Take well, to answer. Not gonna take them. Uh, what's your name? Arrakis. Uh, to answer Arrakis's question, I'll turn to him and say, "Oh, I've, I've been here loads of times." Um, I'm very familiar here. I've done a lot of work through here. Um, I know the guard, Captain uh, Captain Deimos, and uh, this is where I pick up food for me and Garp, and occasionally do some tricks. So we're not gonna have trouble here. And I pull meat off. Pies. I pull out my backpack, and from my backpack, I pull out a sack, and in the sack is a little ferret that I then put on my shoulder. Uh, oh, do you pull it? It's yeah. I'm an entertainer Smart. when I'm in the town. Meat, meat, meat pies. You want meat pies? Yes. Jeffries? You like Jeffries? Jeffries. Jeffries, yes. yeah. Jeffries, yes. Then. He's hungry. He's always All right, well, hungry. I don't have any money. You, you don't have any take money? The lead here, I, I, I feel like guess. I have some Of course, yeah, I'm familiar with Captain because, Davis. Like, Autumn has paid me a lot for like different little jobs, and the only thing I spend it on is meat pies, so mm-hmm. I probably have some on me. Roll me a d6 for how much gold you have, and a 2d10 for how much silver you have. This one, yeah. I have seven silver. All right, three gold. Mm-hmm. And 2d10 for how much silver? 2d10, which would be this and this. Mm-hmm. And then you can add them together. Um, this is eight. Eight. Eight silver and two gold? Three gold? Three gold. Three gold. Three gold. Three gold. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Ren approaches the gate first. I'm closely behind him, and I think we have our bully walk and our I'm human. human. <laughs> Who is pulling the, the cart, which is in cart form right now? Me. Okay. Seven yeah, strength. All right, perfect. Right, yeah, I'll approach the gate, and mm-hmm. who do I see? There's Captain Deimos there, with a, a slew of, of plebs, and some archers on the wall. And Captain Deimos will see you, and give you a familiar wave. Captain Deimos is good oh, at recognizing people. I'm Grau, I'm from far away. I'm Grau, hello, Deimos. I'm Grau, from far away. Hola. I'll, I'll spread my arms, uh, and I'll say, Captain Deimos, good to see you again, and I will kind of the ferret is well trained, so I'll have the ferret kind of loop around my arm mm-hmm. as they're entertaining for the soldiers. Mm-hmm. Um, Grau's eyes are locked on the ferret the entire time. He's <laughs> so the, the ferret is trained to like slalom around like, my arm. Yeah, and back he's up and around. following it super intensely. Mm-hmm. It's like it's a little little trained ferret that does tricks. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm like, I'm here again to do business in the town. May Excellent. I pass? 
Well, you and know I'll the rules. Bow, I'll bow graciously, like theatrically, like, may I pass? Anyone that passes through the swamp needs to have all of their belongings and carts checked. So uh, open your backpacks and let me inspect your cart and on through you can go. I have nothing to hide, Deimos. And I will proffer my backpack and uh, hold my arms out and allow them to search me. Mm-hmm. Gra is just standing there nodding, smiling. Mm-hmm. There's no little spell book that I have. There's mm-hmm. no like uh, indication on it that it's not mine. How would anyone know? Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't say the spell book of someone famous. No, okay. no. Yeah, no. Right. I open my backpack then. Sure. Um, they go through your bags. And um, Ren, you open your backpack. You let Captain Deimos uh, inspect it. And what's in your bag? I have a maintenance kit, a bedroll, Mm -hmm. a blanket, a mess kit, a journal, a writing kit, a traveling tea kit, and a book. Right, so he goes through the bag and it's fine. Then he goes underneath the bag where the bedroll sits and he begins to squeeze it. And all of a sudden, there's a little bit of movement. And out through the end of the wrapped up bedroll pops this like swampy colored little winged creature that's maybe like 18 inches tall and it starts like flapping around and cackling with laughter. Gro immediately turns around he lets out a growl. Gro will like, when he hears it, he'll, I immediately check my bag. Yeah. And I'm like looking for something. Yeah. Um, You can check through your bag. You will not find any creatures, but what you're looking for, you do find. Good. Yeah. Uh, but this little creature, this little winged creature starts like flapping around. It was tucked like in your, your bedroll and it starts flapping around. And all of a sudden, like arrows start flying from overhead in the direction of the critter. Um, and I have to see. I have to Where I was like notes. chasing after it mm-hmm. on all fours. <laughs> <laughs> as a human. As a human. Okay. <laughs> Um, and the creature hovers in flight for a moment, and it pulls its knees all the way up to its chest, and out comes this like weird squeezing, grunting noise, oh. and leaking from the bottom of this creature is just like the most like watery, fetid, like defecation possible. Jesus. <laughs> and it's just like <laughs> down to whoever's below it. Now, Fred, did you say you were chasing under? Oh yeah. Death? Oh yeah. Give me a, a saving throw versus breath weapon. <laughs> <laughs> you want your breath weapon or higher on a breath weapon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is versus breath, it's 16. So this plus a 16? No, no, 16 or higher. I need to pass 16 or higher. Yeah. It's a 20. Oh! oh. All right. You dodge the watery poo that uh, descends from the gremlin's butt yes. onto your, your, well, not onto you, but beside you. Yes. Yeah. I like rolled it beside. Do um, I recognize this creature? I am, I'm looking at it like, uh, do I get a chance to pull my dagger and stab at it? Well, it's obviously a gremlin of some kind, but it's quick. And by the four you can get your weapons out, it's like 30 feet in the air okay. flying around. Um, but it has no resistance to magic. It doesn't need plus weapon, one weapons to hit. It's got two hit points. The archers on the wall will make quick work of the, the little gremlin. And then it'll fall to the ground and it'll splat. They ran from us. That's XP. Yeah, that's, that's XP right True. There. I uh, checked my bag as well. Uh, nope, you're good. Okay. Nothing in your bag, nothing in your pack. Ground notices the position he's in, and he like, looks around and he gets up and like... <laughs> <"Just> <laughs> <laughs> I'm gone. Nice to far away. <laughs> There's a lot of looking at Growl by the guards. Um, they've seen bigger things, maybe. Yeah. You know. And... Uh, once they check the rest of your stuff, and they check the cart, and they check under the cart, and see there's no more gremlins here, uh, they, they let you pass through the town of Keygate. Now, it's been a bit of a journey through the swamp. I don't know what your disposition is like uh, in civilized areas. So either you can rest here for the night in proper civilization, get nice food, get a nice rest, live somewhere comfortable, or you could just pick up rations and continue on your journey. Grau no. insists on going to get the meat pies. Ren insists that we take a rest here in the town yeah, because yeah. it is rare that we get a chance to live in civilization in the swamp. And a soft bed is worth 10 nights on the swamp. That is true. Do yeah. we have gold to spend on this? I have seven silver. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure we could get. And also Ren uh, can do things to get money while it's, we're in town. Uh, 
it, there are three levels of accommodations in this world. There is, I'm broke and I'm going to sleep in a flea-bitten room with 30 other people, which is just like a common room where you can lay down. Um, there is, I'm going to like get a shared room with someone in a, or sometimes an independent room, but like a moderate area. You can, you can survive. And then there's the like super ultra fancy nice places. Mm -hmm. um, and depending on how you want to rest, you spend more or less money. Well, how much we total for um, mid the bottom tier? The mid level one um, food, drink, and sleep, like dinner, breakfast, and lodgings, is five silver. Okay. Uh, which per is, person? Per person, which is real nice, real easy. Yeah. And anything that I've rolled my gold, it's 3d4 for a wizard. Um, I might have spent some of that. You can roll your money? Line. I rolled my money, but it's not on my sheet here. Right. I'm gonna roll my mouth. So I got a one, a four, a one. So that's six gold. Um, I have a bed roll and things, so maybe I've got three gold. Yeah? Three gold. Okay. Ugh. We did roll your money. We rolled it. I don't remember what it is. Yeah, um, so, what time of the day is it? Um, Mid-afternoon. Mid-afternoon, okay. So I have a few hours to where I could maybe scrounge together a little bit more money if we need it. Yeah. Um, you know, picking pockets, performing ferret tricks. I would like to stay in a mid-level room. I don't really want to stay in a fetid. Growl uh, cannot stay in a common room because he will turn into a bear if he falls asleep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What's your name one more time? Arrakis. Arrakis. Arrakis, do you mind uh, covering my room? I forgot my... Uh... You don't have any gold? gold? That's why I'm doing this job. Mm. You need gold? I'll, I'll... Growl gives you two gold. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Growl. I'll pay you back when we uh, get paid. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Friends share company and food. So I will pay five silver mm -hmm. for tonight. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'll also pay five silver. And during the day, I would like to try to do some performing with my ferret. What I'll do is basically I stand at the street and I'm like, hey, come see the coin, the coin snatching ferret, right? And, so like little kids will come up and they might have one copper and the ferret will kind of come over and take the copper out of their hand. And it's a game, right? You pay a copper, the ferret does a trick. Mm -hmm. So how many kids do I entice to my ferret trick game? Once again, we're back at luring children in the yeah. <laughs> No, <situation>. this is, <laughs> but this yeah. is fun shenanigans. I'm for not, now. Okay. Fun for now. Like a clown. Yes. Right, because <laughs> clowns aren't scary at all. <laughs> um, and this ferret is also trained to pick pockets. So, if I see someone who has a little bit of money, I will send him to go. Maybe like a noble kid, like yes, to try comes and over, and then you send it in yeah. to get the gold. So I'm just going to read this from the player's handbook. Sure. Um, pickpockets. The thief uses this skill when flitching small items from other people's pockets, sleeves, girdles, packs, etc. When palming items such as keys, and when performing simple sleight of hand. A failed attempt means the thief did not get an item but does not mean that the attempt was detected. To determine whether the victim noticed the thief's indiscretion, subtract three times the victim's level from 100. If the thief's pickpocket roll was equal to or greater than this number, the attempt is detected. For example, a zeroth level victim only notices the attempt if they roll a 100, or if the thief rolls a 100. Well, a 13th level character notices the attempt on a die roll of 61 or more. Mm -hmm. In some cases, the attempt may succeed and be noticed at the same time. So here's how uh, my pickpocketing works is I'm performing tricks with people. I have the ferret out, right? The ferret, the, 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 the gist is you hold out a copper, the ferret comes over, he takes the copper and he does like a little spin and then he brings the copper back to me. That's how I get my money. Um, every now and again, I will like approach somebody who I think looks like they might have a silver or a gold on them. And I'll kind of let the ferret run onto their neck. And while they're like, oh, there's a ferret on you, how great. I'll like, that's when I'm like, oh, give me him back. And that's when I might try to get into their pocket and grab something, right? right. But and, I want you to feel bad when your ferret dies. So tell me the ferret's name. The ferret's <laughs> name is Abigail. Mm -hmm. Not Scamp. Wait, Not really? Scamp. Yeah, Abigail is her name. Mm -hmm. That's convenient. <laughs> <laughs> Do you even know the reference there? No. That's funny because it, that was her character name and she had a ferret. Yes. That's funny. Okay. Yes. We discussed this in character creation. Okay. I said that the ferret will be called Abigail. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that'll be another death. Okay. What is your pickpockets chance? My pickpockets chance is 75% because I put everything into pickpockets. <laughs> oh my god. Another 20. Not only do you come across a young noble kid, you come across the <laughs> <We're> rich, the <laughs> nice. eldest daughter 
of the local lord who runs this town. The, Would I recognize her? The, the Baroness who runs this town. Now, you probably don't recognize her. You can tell that it's the Baroness's daughter because she wears a, a brass, a mm -hmm. bronze tiara. And generally, like, if you wear a, ground, a, a gold headpiece, you're the king. If you wear a silver headpiece, you're a count. If you wear a bronze, head, bronze headpiece, you're a, a baron. And those are like the three major ranks of nobility. So this is like the kid, and so she wears like a brass tiara, which you would only wear if you were the, the daughter of the baron. Does she but, have someone escorting her, like a guard? Absolutely. There's like, you know, a seventh level fighter standing right next to her, walking her through town. Uh, it is, so while I... <laughs> while I'm going to losing his character in the first <laughs> While I am, you know, entertaining the children and stuff like that, do I catch her eye with my performance? Does she, like, come over curiously? Oh, Go absolutely. On. She's walking through the town. She's got some, like, other kids with her who are probably, like, her handmaiden, the... Her mom's handmaiden's kids, or whatever that she's like chilling with, who, who accompany her everywhere. I um, every time the pharaoh comes back to me, I'm pretending to be afraid of him. I'm like, ooh, I'm like, you know, entertaining children, <laughs> and then and then I'll put it onto another kid, and then that kid will be like, ah, right, and, and I'm slowly okay. working my way around the crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm taking up coppers, I'm taking up some, and I'm working my way towards this noble kid. Well, Am I, are the guards like, you can't do that with her? No, 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 the guards are keeping, they're letting the kid be a kid. And she, you know, once she sees a ferret and she sees the games, she bullies her way through the front of the crowd, like, out of the way to, you know, to the peasant <laughs> kids. Yeah. And like, uh, presents herself. As if like, I'm important, you need to do the trick with me. Entertain now. me now. Like, yes. What is the most expensive thing that I see on her person? Well, it's obviously the bronze tiara with Fine. diamonds. There's no no way I'm getting it. Oh. <laughs> uh, does, does, is she wearing clothes that have pockets? A is there a ring? She has um, three necklaces on, one that's short, one that's medium, one that's long. She's got three rings, two on one hand, one on the other. Her the clothes are really nice. <laughs> she's, uh, got, she's got a pair of like little tiny studs that are probably gems of some kind. I will. <laughs> She's got one of these like bracers on her. Uh, I am. Um, I'm, I'm like. I'm gonna be putting on my best performance here, right? I'm like. I'm doing the tricks, and I'm like making my way over to her. Um, so I have to get invited to the castle. Um, <laughs> the ferret jumps onto her shoulder, and he's running around. I'm taking him off. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, my lady. I can't. And then he jumps back onto the arm, and you know, jumping all around her. And in this time, I try to remove the shortest necklace. The, the the one that is the... No, no, sorry. Uh, what would be the longest? longest I would go for the longest. Oh. Whatever the easiest one is to remove. Whatever the easiest well, one I think on I could get. Well, yeah, it depends on, on the class. class. Yeah. yeah, which one do you think so I could get has, easily? Like, as he's looking, he looks at the class. Well, it's all happening very quickly. You're going to make a pickpockets check. I'm going to just... see what happens. Because there's no time to fully assess the gear of this child, right? You're, you gotta, you're in and out in a moment. <laughs> yeah. So what is it? What's your pickpockets use? Seventy-five percent. You want to roll seventy-five or lower, and and there's a seventh-level fighter watching, oh. so they have a twenty-one percent chance. If you roll a seventy-nine or higher, we're I good. Think, well, hold on. I think that maybe the seventh-level fighter should have a little bit of a disadvantage because of the ferret as a distraction. Well, also, it's not happening to him. It's also mm -hmm. not happening to. But that might give him an advantage because he's able to watch <clears throat> from a distance. Rather than like he's also like a not, he's also a seven foot of fight. He's yeah. seen shit like this, right? That's uh, true. Like, what is the vibe I'm picking up from the seventh level fighter? Is he like watching me like a hawk, or is he kind of relaxed and he's like, oh, this is just been. He's a good bodyguard. He does that. He's like trying to maintain that um, that like, like cold, like uh, dispassionate. I'm not getting agitated. Like. I'm just trying to be here and do my duty and present a strong front. And he's watching the kid. Okay. Like his eyes are on the child. And so if you're near the child, his eyes are on you. But if you're over there, like, he's not paying attention. So when you're interacting with the kid, like, you're... you're being okay, so I'm going to change my tactic. Mm -hmm. Instead of going for the necklace, I'm going to, as part of the act, I'm, I know a little bit of courtly dancing. And she probably has been trained a little bit. And so I'll do like a small two-step type thing as I'm as I'm, as the ferret is like like we're like I'm like doing like a little silly dance that you might do with like a niece, right? At a, at the a ball. Like running up and the ferret's running like around the arms yeah. like a racetrack, and she's giggling, and all this time I'm working the ring off one of her fingers. Mm, okay. While we're holding hands and I'm dancing. Right. right. You'll get maybe five or six seconds of dancing before you see like the furrowing brow of the knight who's like, you should not be touching the child this much. <laughs> okay, and then I'll... And then you'll like, 
That's Grab enough time to yeah. make your check. But like, there's definitely a you had your fun, but like. Okay, cut yeah. it off. Yeah. Um, Wrap right. it up. Though. Rolling a d100. Hey, Lower you're all, better. <laughs> you're all high here. Yeah, you're on your own. All right. That is. That's a six. Yeah, that's, that's a, a 76. Seven. Oh, so I he's miss. Okay. He's okay. He missed I miss by one. You miss by one, but they don't, don't notice. notice. But they don't yeah. notice. By three. Oh. Right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Threading the needle. Um, so yeah, I failed I fail to get the ring, and I notice the guard's getting upset. So I, I, for, I dance away, and I even try to put the ferret on the soldier. And is he having it? Um, yeah, as you approach the soldier, you can see like the body shifts a little bit. The hand goes from the side to the hilt of the sword. Not drawing it, but definitely doing the like. I'll, leave I'll, me alone. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll do my yeah. I'll do my bow trick when I notice this, where the ferret climbs up my head and I bow down, and then the ferret stands up and he bows. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, it moves on. And it's, it, this is an appropriate reaction. This is how everything is supposed to go in society. Yeah. I, I can, pushed a boundary, uh, but I didn't like yeah. do anything inappropriate. Right. Right. Does like can we get something here for maybe the little girl? Be like enthralled, like really like him, or yes. Well, or... I was going to ask you to make me a charisma check to see what oh, she tips you. Absolutely. Oh, tip? oh, okay. <laughs> All right, I got a Honest plus work. eight. Here you go. That is a two. two. With plus eight is a ten. That's... But he was way better than that in person. I feel like my yeah. narration. It was come good. up with something good. Yeah. Yeah. You deserve a tip. He does. You deserve that fucking a bitch. Tip. <laughs> <laughs> and the girl. With all this wealth on her, dripping with money, her pockets jingling with coin, leaves you tipless. This wow! I bitch. don't believe it. Oh yeah. my okay. god! How yeah. many how many coppers did I gather at least from the poor kids? That's crazy. The the poor kids put out. Oh okay. fuck yeah! You get forty coppers. Crazy. Bad. <laughs> 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 The poor children tip you well. Thank you, thank you. Behaves. You don't recognize as real. You know, they, they've had to work for their money. They realize yeah. you're working hard. Yeah. This rich kid? Nothing. She's entitled. I can't Carly related the boy. I can't, uh, dude, I can't believe I missed it by one. Um, anyway, so I, that's my performance done. I'll spend a little bit of time. Maybe if I, you know, I'll, I'll say, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'll say my name. Come see me again. Yeah. I'll be around. What do you give? I give the name of... Uh, Renata's ferret. Oh, okay. Renata's ferret. Renata's ferret. Or, let me think about that a little bit. Oh, Renfair? Renfair. I'm <laughs> Renfair. Oh, That's okay. a great one. I'm Re did, I'm Renfair. Did the little girl give her name? No. No. Okay. No, fuck no. She was haughty. Yeah. She she was like, ooh, the ferret. And then the ferret played with her for a moment. And then you walked away and she's like, come on, let's go. And just turned and left. No name, no tip, no acknowledgement. And the soldier moves on with them. We got to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of um, using your money well, while this is going on, what is the name of the meat pie? Jeffries. 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 Grau is going to Jeffries, um, and he does what he always does there. He puts all the coin he has in his pocket on the counter, and he will just sit there and wait until they stop giving him meat pies. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll be there probably. Mm -hmm. um, I guess just kind of watching. Can you tell me if they like shortchange him? Oh, I am putting one gold and three silver on this counter. Yeah, they're definitely not paying, giving him enough food. Hundred percent. They're definitely taking advantage of him. Okay, I take a note of it. Yeah, um, but you do get multiple a lot. so many multiple pies. meat pies. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Can he eat like a bear in human form? Like, as in, can he oh, can pack so that much yeah. food in there? I don't think so. No. Can can he like selectively shapeshift his well, gut? No, <laughs> back to bear. He eats a full meal as a human and then shapeshifts back into a bear. Is he hungry or is he full? Good questions. I feel like this is important for such a food yeah. centered character. Okay. Oh. So, oh my god, oh. bear new cocktails. No way. Speaking of food, <laughs> yeah. I will take all your old stuff and I will Thank give you new so stuff and beetle juice. Amazing. Mm. So I'll swallow the dry ice. Thank you, Joss. Here you go. Here you Put are. This, this is amazing. Yeah, used to this. We need to do this more like this. Is brilliant. I don't know if you guys want later. You can like flag me down if you do, but they have a thing here. Where if you roll a 1d20, you get a bonus die. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
I would be happy to join in if you guys yes. I hate shots, but like it's very yeah. special. Let's do that again. Yeah. Hundred percent. Are you guys done with the fish and chips too? I'm done. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you so much. Enjoy. This is what I'm talking about. Service. You know what I'm saying? This is awesome. This is brilliant. Um. Hey well, guys, if you want to support these kinds of endeavors, <laughs> Save or Die, sorry, patreon.com slash Save or Die. Thank you. Every little bit counts and counts towards doing amazing tips like this. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you want us to tip our servers, then make sure you... Uh... <laughs> you tip us. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> that ungrateful bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe these came with gummy worms. Yeah, I, that was very nice of you to let me have the red ones, Jerry. I for a, I I made a face, but you looked away. I was like, dude, you want the fucking red ones? Would you, would you <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. I was just I was fucking with you. <laughs> um. Oh, okay. so Brow's eating a fucked in the meat pie. Yeah. What is so? What is the food situation? Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. The meat yeah. pie situation. Yes. 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 How um, we have to figure out a little bit. I think of the weird shit. Okay. The so. Your HP is based on your base HP. Your your bear HP is your HP. So when yep. you shape shift, you maintain your bear HP. So I'm going to say you maintain your bear metabolism. Yes. So I'm going to say no matter what form you are, you need to eat a bear's worth of food that day. Nice. Which, if you're in a gnome yeah. shape, your stomach isn't that big. And you yep. you probably can't maintain a gnome shape for multiple days mm. at a time without getting really hungry. Yep. Mm. You can't. You just can't metabolize enough food in the I form like of that. a gnome. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's good. Cool. Yeah, so he's hungry, but like he's getting, he's hitting his like human limit on these meat pies, uh-huh. but he's still hungry, so he's just sitting there, he's like, fuck. Oh. But he's trying to shovel another one in, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you do you ever like eat your fill and then gather the rest and like wander off to become yes. a bear and eat the rest of it? Yes, or? absolutely. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's also quite a weird feeling to be physically full. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. But yeah, that's right. Right. Well, yeah. have you ever been depressed? <laughs> you try to fill the void in you, and like it fills up, and you can't eat anymore. But you're like, I still need some more happiness. It's, it's like it's like when people have like that parasitic worm. Yeah, mm. where it's like you're hungry more and more. And more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh, they're good. good. They're really good. It's really good. Nick is like, no. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, I'm not been. Depressed. Okay, yeah. so I think um, as. As as no. his stomach draws to a close, he's gonna to try to gather up more meat pies to like mm-hmm. take home with him to the room. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, sorry, no one. Neil killed Malachi. Oh, right. yeah. yeah, it's a few oh. weeks of sense. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's what Grau's getting up to today. No, Gar, you are of all the people here gonna have the hardest time in society. And when you're with Ren, yeah, it's not too bad. But when Ren's off doing his own thing, and you're with Gar, like, you notice the wide open stares and be like the gawking. And the con- yeah. and the, the fear when the the bully one with a pole arm walks into a shop, yep. like and like Grau is not helping your image here yeah. at all. Yeah. He puts up his hood when he's in town, mm-hmm. um, and it kind of hides. Mm-hmm. But if people look, you mean, you'll right. see a man with hands that are right. frog. Right. Um, so he probably does try to stick close to Ren. But when Ren does his thing, he's doing his thing. So this time he went with Grau. Um, he noticed. The people kind of shortchanged Rao, and he took note of it. But I feel like also at Joffrey's, because they like Rao as a guest so much, they're like protective of him almost. Like, I feel like if someone comes up to him and is like, hey, you're being weird with these meat pies, the guy behind the counter is like, hey, this is this Rao, this is our guest, fuck off. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. the weird drunk at the bar who's like been a guest there for 20 years, and he's yeah. sometimes weird, but the people are like, hey, let him be, it's just how mm-hmm. he is. Yeah. Huh. So you're, you're kind of hanging out and shadowing Rao. Are you interacting with people? Are you keeping to yourself? Like, what's He's... the vibe? No, very much. I'm just like sitting next to Grau, kind of chilling. He's just not chill. saying much. He's just he's there. Mm-hmm. He's there and he's watching. He's taking notes. Not like physically taking notes, but, right, but mental he's notes. Me- men- mentally judging things. Yeah. Okay. And, and Grau wouldn't be the one to like initiate conversation unless it is to get food. So like, mm-hmm. yeah. No. Yeah. It's a... Okay. Okay. Well, the day can pass fairly uneventfully here. Uh, at night, I pay for his five silver, because he's doesn't I, have any. Yeah. 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 He gave you two gold, yeah. you, you pay his in-room. Yeah. I sit in the corner of the inn, in the shadows, with my hood up, drinking a few beers. Not Edgy. doing too much yet. Nice. I come over. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, in, you I'll engage in conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, the five silver includes drinks, no, Neil, or not? Um, no, it, it's okay. just meals. How, how much is the drink? Uh, so a beer is five copper. Okay. Yeah, I'll get a beer, and can I get like a mini beer for the ferret? 
too. You like can little... get an empty glass and you can pour some of your beer into yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So what? You come up. You come over to me while I'm sitting in the corner. Yeah. You, you I come over. I come over. I pull up a chair because you're alone. Mm. I put the chair down. Pull it back. I sit back, kind of kick my frog feet up, put them on the table, and I say, uh, "Give me a beer." Oh, they won't serve you. I'm not surprised. No. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I can get you a drink. Do you Thank have you. shoes? No. Your frog feet are up on the table. Yeah, yeah. my frog feet. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I stand up from my table. Do you like wiggle them? I pull my hood down. <laughs> like wiggle those little toes. I'll go to the I'll go to the bar and I'll get him a drink. Mm -hmm. Give me a drink. So. I, I'm going to spend two silver on drinks tonight. Okay. Yeah. That's two drinks each. Yeah, yeah. Um, Can you, like, pick up a beer with your frog feet and, like... They're not... No, they're not... Uh, I was thinking you could be real inside. weird. I get back to the table and I, I put the drink back down on the table and I sit back down on my seat and I say, uh, maybe we got off on the wrong foot. Thank you for um, saving my friend. Of course. You know, I've never met someone of your uh, stature before and I'm given my circumstances I'm uh, quite suspicious and defensive so I'm sorry if I came across as uh, combative. It's not your fault. Uh, <laughs> I would have been suspicious of a bullywug as well. Makes sense. Suspicious of wizards. Um, well that's just uh, that's just being smart. They can do nasty tricks. Yeah and most of them are out themselves. And, uh, but uh, you know so a successful journey, at least we've made it through the swamp. I'll cheers. I'll cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. I, I eat my gourmet one. Nice. Um, at this moment, Ren will arrive to the table, I hope, mm -hmm. uh, with ferret in tow mm -hmm. and a whole lot of copper. Mm -hmm. And he will say, good haul today, Lance. I did miss out on a golden ring, though, so a little bit of a sad moment. And that little girl, the Baron's daughter, and he'll kind of heavily put his drink down the table. She stiffed me on my performance. Can you believe it? You've been stealing from folk? How do you think you survive in the swamp? I don't know, but just be careful. Do you remember what I said about causing trouble in town? I didn't. What do you, I never said I was stealing. That was an assumption you made. Maybe you seem right. to judge people by their cover a lot. I do. I've, uh, I've met some unscrupulous types on the road. I think... We all have. We all have met a lot of unscrupulous types on the road. Um, but I trust my ferret and I trust my frog. And I'll, I'll, uh, I will give the ferret the signal to go steal gold from Arrakis. Go <laughs> make the make the, make the check. It's a playful thing. I'm not actually like I'm not trying to hide that I'm doing it. It's like the ferret is very obviously okay. like trying to get a coin. Well, Rob, I mean, you can steal it all. Yeah. Like he's very obviously yeah, trying to. Do he's very obviously trying to get a coin out of your pocket. And that's a three. That's a three. Okay. So actually, you you don't notice the ferret like no, no. curls goes well, down the chair, know, comes up on the other side of you, and just like, I put three silver and two gold. So roll a d six. Okay. I think on a one or two, it's a gold. I think that's fair. Yeah. yeah three. Okay, so it's a silver. You steal a silver. I take it. I take out the silver. No, I'm not actually. But I'm not actually going to take it off you. I take off the silver and I flick it in the air, but I flick it towards you. I make a dex check to catch the silver. Which I pass. So I, I catch the silver. And I just say, say oh, I, 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 I think you. I think you dropped this. I open my pack. And I'll, and, I'll just, and I'll just say to him, like, well, you know, you weren't looking that carefully. And I'll say... I, uh, I give you a nod in, in, in a way to sort of acknowledge the... The, 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 the craft. Skill, the craft of it, yeah. yeah. I think we broke bread at this, at this table and maybe some tensions of ease a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Keep your pet away from my bag. <laughs> I'll say Abigail wouldn't be caught dead in that bag, Frogman. <laughs> She was. She would be dead. <laughs> Abigail will give you a disapproving look. It's well trained. How did you... As a boy, I always loved small fluffy creatures. Um, Lots, rabbits. Well, all creatures are beautiful under the gods' eyes. You're a religious man. I didn't say that. <laughs> um, but but I'll, I'll go on to tell you that like as a kid, I always loved rabbits. I always loved ferrets. Uh, I don't know if there's small fluffy creatures, like what fluffy creatures we have in this world, but if there's guinea pigs, I like guinea pigs, if there's like little swamp, womp rats, mm -hmm. love those. Anything mm -hmm. small, fluffy, I was just, it was just a, a passion of mine. I raised pigeons, animal handling is my thing. Mm -hmm. I, you know, horses, I befriend her of goats, I've pet pigs bellies, any sort of animal I make friends with. Okay. Um, I'm a friend of animals and... I can see that. 
Yeah, and I'll say, well, I'm friends. Well, and I'll say to you, well, <laughs> well, I'm friends with you, <laughs> and I'll give you a little wink <laughs> as I sip my beer. I take, I, I laugh about that. But that's funny. Um, all right, I think I feel somewhat. Usually, I like to sit in the tavern on my own. I've been forced into a group here, but actually, it's not so bad. Mm-hmm. Despite having to buy somebody else's drinks and the other one robbing me. <laughs> <laughs> but at least these people aren't going to turn you yes. in. Like, these people are similarly in awkward situations. Mm-hmm. Like, what? Actually, this is a great opportunity. What is the vibe you are picking up from these three unusual people around you? Do you think that they are, like, on the run? Or do you think they're just weird? No, like, I think that they're outcasts. And I don't think that they've got much. Um, incentive to suck up to the authorities right um so i feel like i feel like quite comfortable none of them have really pressed me on my history and how i got here and i think that's kind of like quite comforting because i think maybe over my journeys i've run into other wizards and i've had to leave when they've been like what exactly where are you coming where from, from? Like, what have we actually you've been doing and it's all been a bit mm-hmm. sketchy and just had to leave whereas these guys don't seem to be i mean they're obviously <laughs> Two of them, at least, are outcasts through their own just nature. Right. And he's told me that he was at court. So I'm actually thinking that we might be in a similar you... situation where we were at once in the favor of the like the, the system and now and kind of like outside. that. Yeah, yeah, outside it, yeah. So, okay. yeah, feeling a bit more comfortable, maybe. Okay, <laughs> all right. Well, the journey to... Bailbrook. Bailbrook, thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And uh, points for anyone who can figure out the naming conventions here. Um, mm-hmm. You on your journey to Valebrook. It's going to be another few days, another like four days there. Um, but these are generally safe roads, right? You're okay. within the confines of civilization at this point, uh, and so the only dangers on the road are going to be like the extremely rare monster or bandits. Mm-hmm. Bandits are rare. Um, you know, there's an empire here. They are fighting wars. This is like behind the front lines by quite a distance. So there's not as much of a military presence. And also a lot of the monsters are in the fold right here, like the orcs and the ogres and stuff like that. Um, or not. Those that would be in the fold have been moved up to the front. Yeah. So, so who's fighting right now? <clears throat> so the empire, this is a great shot. Thank you. This is a great opportunity to do some lore here. Um, once upon a time, maybe a decade ago, a little more, uh, a new power rose out of a a town called Valesburg. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was this cleric, this cleric named Oris, and he's like the hunchback. And he is a cleric of Verasi, goddess of death and destruction, who is not always evil. Like the Grim Reaper takes you to the other side, nice fellow, not necessarily bad. Hades, the god of the underworld, Mm -hmm not necessarily evil. Rossi's in the same realm. Like, she's in charge of death and destruction, so she does terrible things, but she's not inherently evil. Yeah. Uh, yet this cleric is, like, a hardcore death cleric and uh, has built an empire in her name focused on destroying his enemies and conquering the world and burning and pillaging everything in his way. Mm. So unquestionably, an evil guy who is happening to worship this deity. Um, and he's a powerful cleric. He's gathered together an empire, and he's gathered together these four generals underneath him who, who work with him and to help conquer these lands. Um, the area that you're in right now was brought into the empire maybe seven or eight years ago, um, and the empire has just marched ever eastward from here. They've gone to the west, to the edge of the world, to uh, the, tide, the storm tide kingdom, and they've conquered that, and now they're heading east, and they are hundreds and hundreds of miles to the east from here. And so this is well inside yeah. the empire. Are they in Arcadia? Um, um, you wouldn't know about that. Yeah. What is, you what, it. <laughs> I got it. No what is the situation like on the ground in the streets? So like usually when you're living in like an oppressive regime, there might be poverty, there might be violence. There'll be a lot of like rebellious graffiti, like sort of passive active resistance. If people are not accepting that we're under the foot of an evil empire. Yeah, the first few years under the Empire were sort of like that. Like, the local kingdom was overthrown, the Empire took over, and at first there was like a, okay, whatever, the rulers have just changed. But then you realize that, like, the rulers have changed, and now orcs are patrolling the streets, and people aren't too happy about that. And the first few years were really rough, with a lot of problems, with a lot of um, 
sort of rebellious resistance activity. But then as the war moves ever eastward, the like the monstrous creatures that make up the backbone of the army move eastward and they kind of like eventually they change the local kingdom to patrol the area and work for them. And so then it's a little bit more a little bit more normal and a little bit more of like we don't have the effort to actually put into the oppression because we're still fighting this war. So the locals can run things again and it gets like a little bit softer. Mm. And then the the resistance activity sort of dies down, but there's still that underlying like our, our capital used to have a different name. Mm. We used to actually be ruled by this family. Now it's these fucking assholes over here. And so there's still like a baseline, like- What, what about like taxes? Is it the same? No, they're higher. The higher, yeah. So there's a, the, that's obviously going to- And as, uh, is there- to sex as well. Yeah. yeah. Is there um, like, are there like extremist groups that are like super anti the Varasi Empire? Not as, so much um, because the empire is powerful enough that they, they will use like, um, ESP and, so, and, and thought uh, mm. detecting magic and like at first crimes skyrocketed and then it plummeted as like execution was the penalty for a lot of crimes and mm. population dwindled a little bit hold on do you need to do a thing yeah cool all right so we're taking the journey from Keygate to Veilbrook and there's just maybe bandits in the area right probably not any monsters except for the party Yes. And it's a few days' journey. Really quick, when we're at the end, who's sharing a room with Grow? Probably me. You paid my room. Yeah. yeah, I didn't get my own room. It's, he's... Well, I feel like I would share with the old man, actually. It would, what kind of room did we get? Well, How many people um, fit in the room? It, it's going to depend, because you, you're not sleeping in the common room, but you might have to bunk with someone if there aren't enough rooms. That's just the way of life. It's not an insult. Like, yeah. you can yeah. never guarantee a, a room to yourself. Well, if I have to, I'll share with Bro. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he's the one you trust the most. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but unfortunate, uh, fortunate for you, it's a slow day. Everyone can okay. get their own rooms, and it's sense. the same price, right? That's smart. Because uh, I was going to say, it's going to be stanky in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. right. When he wakes up, he'll notice that I'm in his room in the middle of it. Okay. okay. And <laughs> why would you do the eyebrow thing? <laughs> uh, I'll wake up and I'll say, what is it, Carp? No, I'm like sleeping in your room. Oh, you're asleep. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll notice that he's there. And are you covered in a blanket? There was an extra one, yeah. Yeah, I'll kind of stand over you for a moment. And uh, I'll kind of think to myself, like, the loyal frog, and then I'll go back to bed. All right. He's a good frog. He's a good, he's a good frog. Uh, yeah, good I, was, frog. I was planning on being like a lot meaner for a long time, but then he fucking died almost. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so I was like, all right, well, he's gotta be a little bit nicer. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, well, um, uh, Yawn, would you roll me 2d10? 2d10. Oh. Yeah. It should happen. I get you a... Nineteen. Or nine and a ten. Nine and a one. I'd like to say nine one thing ten. before we continue. I am now checking my bag often. Mm. Like, often. About, for like the methods or whatever that is. Okay. Uh, you know that the gremlins predominantly live in the swamp. Yeah. Like that, that's where they go. They try to sneak into towns with yeah. people's stuff um, because if they just, you know, come in normally, they'll get spotted. But if you can sneak in a bag and then wake up in the middle of the night and fuck shit up, like you have unlimited time to fuck yeah. with things. So they, they use people to, to infiltrate. Cool. So you um, get to 10 on a 2d10. You got a 19. 19. No, you roll oh. a 10 and a 9. That's okay, yeah, so there's a D100 and there's a 2D10, and those are two different rolls. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so if 2D10 10 is you additive, D100 is one is a 10th oh, place, okay. one's a 1th yeah. place. So this is a 10. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's a 1 and a 9. Perfect. Um, yeah, the journey will go very easily between Keygate and Veilbrook. Not a problem at all. Um, just, you pass four days on the road. You see folks, there's wagons, there's commerce, there's patrols of guards, yeah. but it goes really relatively smoothly. I get I get more nervous as we get closer and closer to the big city. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the prevalence of the number of guards, because like, as I've been traveling, I would have been avoiding cities of this size. Yeah. Can they roll a charisma check to pick that up? I was actually going to ask the two of you, not not the bear, but the two of you to roll a charisma check to see if you six, notice his yeah. um, stress. Um, 16 plus 6, 22. Yes, yeah. you will notice a little bit of stress. Uh, 19. 19. I guess you, you might be at the head of the party and he's a little bit behind you. 
Um, but you, with your cloak yeah. at the back of the party, notice like the body language that he's projecting when the guards show up. He's like, his back gets a little stiffer and straighter. His head goes a little bit more forward. Yeah. He's like marching, but he's not, you know, you can see the, and then when the guards are gone, you can see like the slump and the, the looking over his shoulder, which is looking your direction. Yes. One time when like the guards are like walking by and he's like feeling nervous, I give him a pat on the back and say, uh, we'll keep you safe. Thanks. Okay. That was in cuneiform. Yeah. No. All right. Well, um, after a few days of journeying, you come to the capital city, Veilbrook. It is on the edge of a forest. In fact, there's like a little bit of sort of light woods where there's plenty of distance between the trees and not a lot of undergrowth that the, the little road goes through. This is a paved road, like a nice paved road that comes through this area. And you go through the light woods for a few hours, and then you see the city before you. And beyond the city is like a much thicker, denser forest. Okay. Um, and this city has a, a wall all the way around it. And you know when you get here that you're going to be asked to give up any weapons and armor um, when you walk what in. What about spalking weapons? Um, the guards will search you. And if they think you have spell components, they will take well, them. Well, they'll know I'm a wizard, right? Because of my robes. Yes. So they might suspect that I've got spell components. Yes. And I've got a bag full of rose petals and all the things. Yes. Um, I'm gonna maintain outside. We might want to roleplay that encounter. I feel like we're quite important. Let me. Let me. Yeah. Think before here we get there, um, I'm going to. I'm gonna stay outside. I don't think a capital city is gonna want. Uh, You're not going in. No, I don't think a capital city is gonna want me in my current state to go inside. Ren, do you know this place? <clears throat> um, I'll kind of ponder for a moment. And Neil, do I know this place? You have come in through here once or twice. Um, you've had jobs to like pick up goods in the city before and bring them back to Autumn, but you, I don't think you know the place. Like, it's a little bit crawling with um, mm. authority figures, and in the smaller villages and towns, like if you pickpocket and someone maybe catches you, you've usually got a good chance to get away. But in this place, like the authority is strong enough that if you get caught, like there is no trial. Mm. You just die on the spot mm. and the forces are overwhelming. So I would like to try to pickpocket a guy. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I would assume that this place is way bigger. So yeah. the yeah. alleys are more sprawling. So it might be like easier to get away. I have an 85% um, chance the, to climb walls. The thing is that they've got these like, they've got whistles and they can lock down the walls really, uh, really fast. And if they start whistling, like, there's a, there's a pattern to whistles to attract people, yeah. and so you can actually get cornered, and maybe you escape, maybe you don't escape. But, but it's like, gonna be hard to get out of the city at the very minute. It can get hard to get out of the city, yeah. and if they find you, like they're just gonna kill you. And if there's a wizard amongst the people who are chasing you, all they need is line of sight, and then it's magic missile, and yeah. it's over. Yeah. Um, especially with my health. Yeah. Especially yeah. with your, your frailty. Has, yeah. has Grau been here? Uh, no, this is your so. first time to the city. Yeah. Yeah. Grau like looks up at the enormous walls and he's like, Blah. Imagine all the meat pies. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, so Nick, you yes. are a wizard. And with being a wizard, with the way that the educational society is built up, like there is a special place in society for wizards. You have these towers, you wear these robes that indicate what your alignment is and how you practice magic. Mm -hmm. And with that comes a certain amount of responsibility. Wizards police their own. And a wizard who um, endangers civilians or fucks with locals, who, who gives wizards a bad name, yeah. will be sought out by other, other wizards. wizards. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and so generally wizards are given a bit of a pass. They're gonna search your components and if there's anything in there that indicates a spell that they feel especially uncomfortable about, they will strip it from you. So like if they found like, I think it's backwater or fireball. Um, it's not so much the fireball, because if you cast a fireball, like the wizards are gonna come and kill you, yeah. but it's more of like the espionage or, it's no spell that you're gonna have a first yeah, or yeah, second yeah. level spell. You don't have to worry well, about like it for now. Like or something like that? You don't know yet. Yeah, okay. Essentially. Um, okay, but I feel, I'm feeling like I'm not gonna get in trouble when they search my body. You're not gonna get in trouble, but I will say that you are representing all wizards and all of your actions in society. And if you do something that makes people afraid of or gives wizards a bad name, like, and that gets back, people will come looking for yeah. you. And when you're dealing with like the towers of high sorcery, there's not really much escape. Right, like there, there's gonna be ESP, there's yeah, gonna yeah. be memory read, there's gonna be a way to track you down. Well, this is what I was thinking because they know 
they know my name as someone who's like done what I've done. Mm -hmm. So it's more just about being like, because that's relatively low key. But if I were to attract the attention of someone powerful enough, they could find me if they were so inclined. Yes, if you were to fireball in this city, and maybe you escape anyway, you're going to like, you're going to have given wizards a really bad name yeah. and someone's going to come out. If you've just like done something minor, killed a person out in the middle of nowhere, stolen something, but like they're not entirely sure. Like we think it might be this wizard person, but it's yeah. not like affecting the general population. Yeah, seal team six, I think. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but the, the fate of wizards has been in the Age of Iron, the wizards got hit hard mm -hmm. and they've been desperately trying to like maintain some level of like accept us as people so, uh, yeah, in society. Yeah. But like, let's say in the future, mm -hmm. his wizard starts like, I don't know, he kills a, a few civilians. Is he gonna have other wizards coming after him because he did that? It's really gonna depend on the context. Definitely. If you're in a city and you kill some civilians in a public way and people are outraged, then yeah. that outrage will get back, get right? Back, get but back. if you're just like in village number 10, and some fucker is fucking with you and you magic missile him and there's witnesses, but like they were clearly fucking with you. Yeah. Like, there's they... also the fact that, you know, as a shadow, I'm not Malachi. I'm not yeah. a big personality trying to impress my power on others. Mm -hmm. He's a shadow mage, so he prefers to stay unseen and yeah. Yeah. Un ambiguous to like sort of yeah. the people around him. So he's not in a, he's not trying to like present his power or anything. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. he's trying to keep a low profile at mm -hmm. all times yeah, yeah and that that is sort of an innate thing to wizards here is like yeah keep a, i can defend myself but i'm not going to you wouldn't walk down main street and cast detect magic because you yeah. start casting a spell people don't want them know, yeah, know what yeah. you're doing mm. you might panic the folks so you always have to you always have to remember that they're all dumb and you're way smarter than them and you have to control yourself otherwise the dumb peasants right yeah, yeah. like you you are the one percent and they are the dumb mob, it's and true. you have to maintain a certain amount of civility. Otherwise, the dumb mob will come for yeah, you. So, works. like, yeah. yeah. So, like, you, you know, we you know kill so many with a sleep spell. Well, right, right. Yeah. You gotta. What's the um? What's the spell that you throw down and it just kills like anyone who's not like a fifth level cloud kill? Cloud kill, and yeah. cloud kill can kind of handle it. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> that's application, so yeah. it's hot. Oh, yeah, I can get it. Oh, bummer. All right. Anyway. We come up to the gates of the capital city. We're walking through the light woods. You see the city coming up. You know you're gonna have to give up your weapons armor. Your bags will be searched. They're gonna look for your components. If they find anything they don't like, they'll take it. Um, I'm not going in. It's just gonna be harder on all of you. Growl is uh, staying outside as well. That's a good question. There's a lot of meat hiding there. with you guys. Okay. He's not afraid. You're out of money though. Yeah. Okay. It's more, more figured out. I, I'll hand you the gold. Um, I only have one gold, so here. I think um, as we're going up to the gates, I'll have taken off my component pouch and put my dagger on top of it and I'll offer it for checking. I won't wait for them to ask for it. It's I'm going to offer it mm -hmm. when we get that. Excellent. Yeah, I will offer all my equipment and my bags and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Let them search through it. Excellent. Yeah, they'll search your bags. I don't think any of you have any contraband on you. Um, no. There's I nothing unusual. I have a bag, I'll have the core stuff. Do they ask anything about us? Or they um, no, stuff? they will give you a very cursory, like, who are you? What are you? You're like going through customs. Why are you here? Are you carrying a bunch of money? What's your purpose? How long are you in town? When do you leave? Like, do you have, you know, they're going to see how much money you have yeah. so they know whether or not you're going to be able Grau to afford to stay is here. unable to answer most of these questions. He can say, I'm Grau, I'm from far away, I'm here to do a job. Yes. And they'll job. look to you, who they just assume is like the grandpa or yeah. the uncle. And they give a look at him like the simpleton, right? Like got kicked by a horse, right? <laughs> and and he looks really big and strong, mm -hmm. right? And I'll, I'll, I'll and I'll just kind of sh sh shrug my arms and say he pulls the cart. <laughs> They're not lying, but they understand the nature of what's happening. Like, yes. There's a lot of people who get kicked by horses in this world. Okay, yes. it happens. I also give a false name. Which name means. do you give? Well, my name is Arrakis. So I say my name is Sakara. Sakara, which is a rock is backwards, but you know, yeah, yeah. They won't get that. <laughs> nice. All right. You, you um, feel so smart. Yeah. <laughs> so, do they confiscate any equipment from us? They will confiscate um, anything bigger than a dagger. Okay, so they. Oh, so I can keep my dagger. You can keep your dagger, okay. um, but they will take your arming sword. They'll take my arming sword, and is there like what is the retrieval process? How do I like? Do they give me a like a like a laundry ticket, like come back and get your dagger. Yeah, they give you a wooden chip. That is associated with my weapon. Yeah. Okay, perfect. The, I will the put- The quarter staff as well, they take it? Okay. You can have the staff. 
Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. I have a, I have the wooden chip, um, and I will keep it. Mm -hmm. And which, by the by, um, as a rogue, you would know if you can hang out at the gates and see what shit someone gets for the gear that they give to the guards, and you steal that. You could then retrieve their gear with that. How has that never occurred to me? I never thought of that. That's that's awesome. It's a that's bit it. of a problem, though, because if you get caught, that's just the death penalty instantly, right? And so if you try to turn in the chit and someone recognizes, like, oh, I took this amazing broadsword from this other person, yeah. but this guy's picking it up, like... You would need to do it like at a change of a guard. It would be, yes. But also, it like, would need to be a couple of days. If comes in, who everyone knows, and you steal his chit, they're mm -hmm. going to know that, like, well, you're not. Yeah, my the great. Unless I've got a friend in the guard. Yeah, yeah. Right, so there, there's room for crime here, but in the big city, um, they don't fuck around. And if yes, you like and to I would live, know right, if you like to live, you can always make more profit by staying alive. Yes, being alive is very profitable, I've heard. Extremely yes. profitable. Being dead, not so much. Well, it depends. If you sell your body as a zombie, you're on your deathbed, that could be a thing in the necromancer world. It's like, when, like, I want to be buried when I die. I want to sell my body to the local necromancer. Maybe I want my wife to be well off after I'm gone. Boom, there you go. Maybe a cool necromancer character. Yeah. I, I, that, the, I suppose, that's a, that's a some, fascinating... Some um, people get cremated, some people get buried, some people get turned into trees. I want to be a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> there are consequences for your eternal soul. Yes. Exactly. Oh. Which you might still do if you love your wife enough. Yep. Rumor has it that this German king, um, you know, loved his wife, but, you know, caused her death. And so <laughs> afterwards, he tore down his family ancestral home in order to <laughs> provide for her um, ever after in her afterlife. Yep. That's yeah. right. It's a thing. Okay, interesting. Yeah, have well, you ever been to Gothenburg? No. It it's on might have list. happened near there. Somewhere in that area. Yeah. 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 Um, on a mountain. That's why it's called Gothenburg, because it's the mountain near Gotham City. Oh, uh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. So, okay, no crime. Well, maybe a little crime. Minimal crime. Maybe. Minimal crime. Well, I have, I have a very special type of crime that I'd like to introduce the gang to, but we'll get to that. So we get through the gates, no problem. I kind of hang around for maybe like a minute or two, see if anyone comes through with something nice, but nobody comes through. No, 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 it's just, it's an ordinary procession. Uh, and I, I asked the guard, it's like, excuse me, where's the, where's the gnome district? Or where's the Cranford district? Uh, the gnome district? Yeah, they'll give you directions. You know, you, you go down yonder street, you hook a left at yonder road, and then it's beyond the fountain. Uh, because when you say, like, the gnome family, they, they immediately, like, seven it. families of gnomes live over here. Now, luckily, this is Solom and not Arcadia. And so the tinker gnomes here do not have a rhyming cultural oh trait. It is, does not exist here. <laughs> We're good. Devin Nash's influence is not felt. <laughs> it is not here. So, um... I say to Ren, as we get past the guards, you know, have you got much experience with gnomes? I've known a couple of gnomes. Um, in fact, I've been in their homes. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite hard because you have to stoop. And to be honest with you, the toilet's too big for a poop. <laughs> or too small, too small for a poop. <laughs> No, um, I've known a few gnomes, um, but mostly as passing, as sort of passing entertainers or merchants selling wares. I don't really know them. I know they're proud of who they are and proud of their things, and they care deeply for family and like they do these family business things, like they're crafters and they're merchants yes. and stuff like yes. that. In my uh, in my wizard tower, my school of speciality is quite closely aligned to illusion. Mm. I've dealt with a lot of gnomes through my training. Yes. Perhaps I should be the ones to talk to them. Well, I, you are... Grouty. I like gnomes. Uh, I sometimes, I spend time with some gnomes. It's not, they're very nice to me. I look like them. And we can... You don't look like them. I, sometimes I do. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. I, you know, I suppose I believe you. Uh, I can, if, I can talk to them if you want. Oh, you can be... He, he, he can be a man. I don't understand what he is. <laughs> Neither do I. I just know that sometimes he's a bear, and sometimes he's a strange man called Growl, who likes to eat a lot. Growl, uh, if you can... If you can uh, endear yourself to the gnomes physically... Yes. Perhaps uh, you can be with me when I speak with them. And I can get into the house if I'm a... No, it's really hard when I'm... I, it doesn't fit. It's not... 
I don't like it. My thing was with, with, with the gnomes, with the gnomes, is that um, <laughs> they are uh, they're quite what's the word? Uh, they're orators. Hungry. They like to speak oh. a lot in riddles mm -hmm. and in complex language, and I wonder if your uh, accent might betray. I'm from far away. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think I leave the laboratory stuff to you. And we'll let Growl handle the ingratiating, and I'll handle the plan while we're in the city. Ingratiating. In befriending, making friends. Why friends share food and company. Yes, they do. Why don't you um? <laughs> why don't you just watch the door? Well, that way, if the gnomes get freaked out and try and make a run for the guards or anything like that, what? you can be there to stop them. Why would they freak? You're not going to do anything weird. I'm not going to do anything weird. <laughs> obviously, I'm not referring but, to me, Red. You're, oh, you're talking about Growl. I'm talking about Growl, yes. He, <laughs> quite, he might, you know, you ha you have any intention, he could maybe upset them slightly. You have you can, a point. You have to go to, to people and be polite and say your name and where you're from, and then they will give you food. You're from far away? Very far away. <laughs> I'm surprised that works. Now, while we're here, we should keep a low profile. We should not, you know, I agree with that. start any fights or get into any no. trouble but there is one thing i would like to show you that's going to be an important skill for us to know uh <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're here for a job we should probably just do what we're here every we, for. we get the glasses we're careful with every the moment we is an an the, yes. every moment is an opportunity and you should never let an opportunity pass you by um and I'll say, but I'm, I'm happy with this plan. I mean, well, happy perhaps is maybe a bit of an extension of what I would say, but I, I'll accept this plan. Um, and I'll say, if that's all we need to talk about, let's get going. Okay, let's just do this quick. The last time we spent in the city, the better. I don't like it. So yeah. big, there's so much. So, it smells. They're watching us here. Trust me, there's eyes everywhere. I assume we start making our way. Yeah, to you're walking the, into the district. Uh, what sort of districts do we pass through on the way? Are there any nice districts? Uh, no, the route that you take goes through a lot of the middle class and lower class districts. Um, the, the fancier stuff is probably deeper in, um, but not the way that the guards told you. Maybe they saw the group and they like directed you through the lower class districts intentionally. Maybe this is just the fastest way, but you're, you're just going through the regular uh, sure. zones. Uh, like as we're going along, do we spot any alleyways? And in those alleyways, oh. are there any houses with open windows? Well, there are a great number of alleyways. Not many windows. Nick knows this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there are a lot of open windows. There's not a lot of glass. Right, not a lot of glass. Not a lot of glass. A lot of open windows. It's just like shutters that would open, and you can see they've got locks, and so you can shut them and lock them if you need. But they're open most of the time because yeah. you need some fresh air. But right. you know, you only leave your windows open when you're home because everyone locks their doors when you leave because they're civilized. Mm -hmm. So I'll poke down one of the alleyways, and does it look like? Uh, <laughs> does it look like anybody is home? Yeah. yeah. I inspect the house. The people well, all right, all right. Let me roll. Let me roll for it. Okay. I'm just, I'm taking a peek. Yeah, you, uh, everyone's walking. You need to take a piss. So you just head into the alleyway like you do, because that's how civilized people do things in the alley, not in the streets. Mm -hmm. um, and sure, there's an open window right near where you might want to take a leak. And uh, you poke your head in and um, roll me a d20. Oh, absolutely. A five plus ten. No, no, no. Oh, just a d20. Just a d20. Five. Uh, yes. You look in a window, and uh, inside there's a woman, and she she's cooking at the stove, and uh, behind her is her. It must be her new husband because he is. Um, still in that honeymoon phase and she's making some sort of you know afternoon meal and um, his hands are a little wandery and as you like come by the window and you look in and she's got she's in front of the big fire and she's cooking something and the husband's coming up behind her and is like you know oh hey, martha baby. sweetie oh that smell oh it's wonderful and awesome so they're distracted is there another window to their house um, there's another window, but it could just be a different house. There's a hundred windows. I walk up, I walk, <laughs> a lot of windows, man. I walk up to that window, and does it look like there's a door from this room to that room of the kitchen? No, it doesn't look like there's a direct room between, uh, door between the two. And is there anyone in that room? Um, 
No, that room appears to be empty. Okay, I send my ferret in uh, to do. Do a you want to know what's in that room before you send the ferret in? Sure. Okay. Yes. What's in the room? A dog. <sighs> oh God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> It's the kit. It's the the dining room, and they've got the silver candlesticks out, and they've got the like. It looks like she's making a f nice dinner for them, and they put out their like oh, finest equipment nice. onto the table. They must have just gotten married, and they're still fresh. And she's making a nice fancy meal, and the silver candlesticks yeah, like are there. Gift. Yeah, these are probably a brand new wedding gift from friends who care about them, <laughs> and it's. I send the ferret in <laughs> to steal <laughs> a silver item. <laughs> Can the ferret carry a silver? He can probably get a fork. He can get a, the ferret can get a fork. Like a teaspoon? He can get a teaspoon or a fork. All right. Cake fork. You roll, I think you, you roll a 1d10 for how long the ferret, like it takes the ferret to find something. It's going to take the ferret seven minutes. It's going to take them a lot longer than that to finish dinner. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, what did he get? You find any coins? Maybe a silver spoon? Oh, the ferret. What does the ferret get? Abigail's a she, right? Abigail's a she. That's right. She. Abigail. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. 12. Hold on. I gotta make these other checks. Listen, oh, I okay. have a ferret. I gotta use it, right? They're, if they're the, if be the dungeon busy. master gives you a button, you press that button. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Abigail squirrels her way in through the window, right? Mm -hmm. Starts sniffing around, crawls up on the table. Gets a gets a nice pair because you you put the um, you put the knife and the spoon next to one another, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Like four. Pounds. No fork. Yeah. Four, and then knife and. I thought the spoon goes above. No, the it's the yeah. well. There's multiple spoons. Oh, that's um, true. No, it's multiple forks over here, spoons over here, knives over here. Well, your American and European standards are different, yes. by the way. Um, so there's a, there's a pair of forks. There's a salad fork and a dinner fork, and they're silver, and they're brand new, and they've recently been cast mm. with like, you know, it doesn't have, they don't have a family sigil, but they've got like the initials of the married couple on them, and the fairy <laughs> comes, and they grab like one of the, the pairs of the salad fork and the dinner fork, and Abigail comes squirreling her way back up to you and scrambles up the wall and drops in your hand a pair of, um, uh, what do you call it uh, when it's embroidered with a name? Embossed? No, no embossed. but like you got the his and her towels and it's got the... It's a, embroidered or embossed. No, but there's a term for, um, it's marked with your name. Oh, oh, uh, emblem or uh, crested? There's a, there's a term. Embossed. Monogrammed. 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 There's a pair of monogrammed silver forks oh, that, yes. that Abigail drops lovingly into your hand. And you know, this is this family's, it's one of a set of two. Set and it's the only one. thing that they've got <laughs> that, that really matters to them. It's like, it was probably a gift from their patron on their wedding day. And they're never gonna get something this nice in their life, except for the candlesticks. How much is it worth? I mean, Can it's... I make an appraisal? Like, how much do I think it's worth? Okay, like the cost to sell is gonna be way lower than the cost to buy, right? Because mm -hmm. yeah. you can't, no one's gonna buy one embroid uh, embossed. Well, I'm thinking to get them melted down. If you melt them down for the silver, it's probably uh, three silver for each one. So that's like six silver. I mean, that's pretty good. That's a, that's a pretty good amount of money for like just looking your head in the box. Yeah, I do like the moral calculus in my head, and I'm like, this isn't even that good. I kind of look at the ferret, and I'm like. She's like called? looking at you like she wants a treat because she did I, right. I give her a treat because she did okay, um, but like not good enough. So if there's like a windowsill, I'll just pop the thing back because it's not worth stealing, not worth getting in trouble. I'll put it back and then I'll show the party and say, and that's how we survive in a city. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I think I would have walked off when I realized what you were doing. Because mm -hmm. so you wouldn't want to be associated. Watch, yeah, in case you got caught. Bro, I was jealous and wants a treat. Mm -hmm. I will. Give, <laughs> I will give you a ferret treat. Nice. So, what What are your ferret treats? So uh, they are small little baked biscuits of a swamp moss that are like condensed, mm. and they got a little bit of like swamp spice on them because that's all I have access that's to. Swamp spice. Yeah, the swamp spice. You know. Yeah, Grandma loves this shit. Yeah. It's, uh, well, like specifically, this is a plant called um, ferretus. Uh, that swamp is a bit like camp. Is a bit like catnip, but for ferrets. So the fer ferret is completely useless now. Or is this right, right. It's just like it, that's the recharge. The ferret's just like it's like curls up in a pocket and passes out for a little while. He does a few popcorns, then jumps in his sack or her sack, yeah. and then gets back in the backpack. Excellent. 
Um, anyway. I wait at the end of the road, sort of watching what's going on. Once I realize that they've... We're doing crime. Uh, no, stop eating or you're not going to eat any food left. I only have like 10 fries left. Okay. Give me a break. Right. <laughs> it's like a tasting menu. Yeah. Yeah, we'll Is that a lot of food? How many courses uh, of it? I don't know. It's going to be a lot. Like 10 or something? I don't, seven. I don't know. We'll be fine. fine. We'll, you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. You, you were eating donuts at 2am, okay? Oh, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so crime over. Uh, but you guys witnessed the power of a ferret. I can occasionally get a gold coin. Nice. Mm -hmm. Maybe platinum one day. Oh, you never know. Um, and we make our way to the normal. We keep thing. moving towards the line. We probably know when we get there because the rate of the roads become less wide. The no, no, because no, less tall. It's not a full gnome district. They oh, okay. live in a, a normal area with mm -hmm. roughly normal sized houses that just have mini doors within the major doors so that the gnomes can come and go fairly easily. Yeah. Um, but you do know the gnome's place when you get there because it's standing outside is a black robed wizard with a large white V across her back and a dozen guards. Um, including a couple of like knights in plate mail standing around next to her. And she is enraged and shouting at a gnome who's like standing on a stair, uh, a stool, so that he at least comes up to her chest. Is the gnome scared? Uh, no, the gnome <laughs> seems to be like completely oblivious to the mortal danger that he's in. Wow. We've agreed for Brown not to change into gnome form for this, yes? Oh, I thought you were, you were, I thought you were going to as well. Okay, then somewhere along the way, Grau would have slipped into an alley behind some sort mm -hmm. of thing, and you would have heard a little... <laughs> yeah. Then he comes up, Hello! <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cole. I'm from far away. <laughs> uh, as soon as I see that wizard in the guards, I, like, go around a different corner. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'll, I'll let uh, Arrakis walk away, and I'm like, mm, I'm kind of, I'm spying this, and I'm like... This could be bad. We kind of need whatever they have. So I'm going to try to get close and try to overhear what they're talking about. Now, how does, do I need to detect noise or can I just like no, slide up? No, detect noise would be like in a still environment trying mm. to hear something. Sne well, sneaking. Let's, let's just read. Let's not, let's, let's do it by the rules, by guys. By the book. Let's read the book. By, by the, the book. We're going to rename the show, By the Book. Oh, that's a good name. That is a good name, yeah. <laughs> how good... A good thief pays attention to every detail, no matter how small, including faint sounds that others miss. His ability to hear tiny sounds behind heavy doors, down long hallways, etc., is much better than the ordinary person's. Listening is not automatic. The thief must stand still and concentrate on what he's hearing for one round. He must have silence in his immediate surroundings, and he must remove his helmet or hat. Sounds filtering through doors or other barriers are unclear at best. Okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll get close enough and I'll try to listen in. I'll try to... Oh, oh, it's not hard. She's mad. She is vocalizing. She's projecting. And you can hear her shouting at this thing like, Do you know who I am? I am Zara, the magistrate of this kingdom. And when I order a set of glassworks, I expect it to be done. And you can like barely hear the little gnome be like, Oh, well, I'm so sorry, Zara, but uh, there is another order that I have to fill, and, and the orders come in at a time, and I, I follow the, the when the orders come in, and there's nothing you can, that's just, that's the process, don't you understand? And she's like, <laughs> I, process, I make the process, I am the process, when I say I need uh, three beakers, you deliver me three beakers post-haste. Who is this person for whom you are doing work instead of Zara, the magistrate of this region? And the gnome goes, oh, well, I'm so sorry, but my, my client list is private and I cannot tell you uh, what's happened. She's just like, you can see the fuming on her face from, uh, she is the emblem of the empire here. And she, this is the only glass worker in town and for miles. Nothing she can do. <laughs> and like the gnome is just completely oblivious to the fact that this person could kill the gnome instantly and suffer no consequences. Mm. Like, well, the world just doesn't work that way. <laughs> Obviously the first person in line gets the job done right. <laughs> Um, so I have some background questions before I say what I do. Uh, did Autumn, does she, she obviously likes her privacy, so she wouldn't like me going around and being like, oh, the order is for Autumn, right? Yeah. So, that's, uh, and who even knows what people know about her and if that's her real name, who even knows where she lives, maybe she's got like magical wards keeping her safe. And I maybe wouldn't know all that, but I would, I feel like I would get the vibe that walking up here and just being like, oh, hi, I'm here to like step in and help out this situation. The order is for Autumn. Um, now, based on the context of the situation that 
I've picked up. She's frustrated because she can't get what she wants, but she also can't kill him. And so, because if she kills him, she's not getting her glassware anyway. Ever. And so, I'm just going to loiter and see what happens. I'm going to loiter mm-hmm. and see if she walks away she's in frustration. She's going to steal our auto. Well, she's not getting it. Well, she's going to steal our auto. Dude, the gnome, gnome, gnome right? has literal ironclad willpower, okay? Yeah, He's that not giving them up. Work better, right? The gnome is too dumb to realize what's going on. Yeah. 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 Well, um, after some arguing, Zara will at least say, What are you making? That is so important. And the gnome's like, oh, well, you know, we blow glass. <laughs> and Sarah's pissed. And she says, okay, small creature who inhabits my <laughs> realm. Surely you wouldn't dare stand in my way from simply watching who comes to fill this order. And the gnome goes, no, of course not. I don't know the streets. Takes a deep breath and like looks back at her guards who are quarreling. You know, you, you ever seen Life of Brian and you've got the two Roman guards and they're talking about biggest stickus and the guards are doing their best to like, <laughs> keep us. Str- These guards are like the most attention they've ever been in their entire lives, not making eye contact with anything. Um, and she glances across them and tells them to surround the building. And the guards quickly spread out and surround the building. And she goes and paces and fumes near the fountain. Wait, is the fountain still still near the, uh, is the fountain still near the there's like a, there's a bit of a square, it's actually a circle, but there's a bit of a square here with a fountain in the middle, and then there's like houses all along the edges, and they're like two to three story buildings, and the gnomes is one of them, and there's a couple other gnome houses in the area, but there's other like humanoids here too, and so the guards like, you know, they cover the square a little bit, and then they go into whatever alleys are on the sides, or other streets to like find the, the back sides of the building, and give it a nice little surround. Okay, well, I'm still not watching. I'm probably trying to listen. I'm probably, I I can't hear what's being said, probably, but I can hear that the shouting has stopped. Mm -hmm. So I'll wait, hopefully, for Ren to come back. Uh, I'm gonna just kind of scope out roughly where the guards are. Not like looking to do anything yet, but I'm just gonna get an idea. I'm gonna look and I'll be like, okay, there's a guard on that corner, and they're kind of, he's pacing. These are professional guards. Uh, They're at least first level fighters, Mm -hmm. um, and they're working for Sarah, the black-robed wizard of Rossi, and so they position themselves like uh, where major intersections are, and then a couple like right near the front door, and then the rest of them have gone back around. So there's like three guards plus two knights plus Zara in the courtyard, and then the rest of the guards have like surrounded the building. Now, those ones are probably fairly spread out. They're probably a little easier. If they didn't notice you coming, you could probably take them down pretty fast. Mm. Um, um, I am going to return. <laughs> uh, I would like to attempt to mug again. No, uh, <laughs> I'm going to return. I'm going to look for Arrakis and Growl. And no, well, at the end, just G- Growl. Yes. Growl. Okay, sorry. I keep thinking Growl. Um, yeah. Find Arrakis and Growl, and I'll let them know what the situation is. Uh, What's going on? Little bit of a pig in a blanket here. We've got... That's a pig? No, sorry. No, no, no. A little bit of a problem. Problem? Yes. Okay. Yes. A uh, problem where... There was a lady, she was screaming. Who was She that? was screaming. Was, that wasn't... I think she was that so was, angry at the little guy. I think that was the magistrate, so... It was? Yeah, and she... This isn't worth it. I'm starting to kind of feel the same way. She had some black uniform that you, you're supposed to run away if you see them. That's fast. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. fast. Yeah. Yes. However... We can't cross her. No. Not even a little bit. Um, what does she want? She wants some glass blown. Um, so we're going to have to try to figure out a solution here. Now, she was yelling about being an authority, but I know she can't kill him. She's just going to observe the house until someone comes to pick up this order. I'm sure she could kill him if she wants to. Oh, she could kill him, but if she kills him, she doesn't get the glass, right? And it's hundreds of miles, I heard her say that. So she can't kill him and not get what she wants. Now, she could decide that she just doesn't care about that, but you know what it's like, these wizards, right? She can, she can kill people without them not giving her food? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's not good at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, uh, we don't want to fight her about this. I mean, no. Let me ch- I checked the list. What was she asking for? Um, what he's being asked for is pretty standard lab equipment for um, doing some alchemy and some basic chemistry. Yeah, uh, so you said, like, she said beakers, right? This woman is asking for a specific thing. And when you look at your list, yeah. um, 
she used like a general term for beaker, but as you know, as a wizard, like you're gonna have very different beakers for very different types of things, and beakers are kind of a catch-all. Um, so maybe she's looking for something on the list, maybe what she's looking for isn't on the list, but she has a specific item that she wants. So, well. Audrey well, says that if you are very nice to people and you introduce yourself and you say where you are from, then you can talk to them and you can figure it out. What if we go to her and we say, this is our glass, please don't kill us, we're very nice. You can have the glass and then maybe the next glass can be for us. That's what, I, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. We send Growl here. He's a gnome. He can, to the guards, he might just look like part of their family, mm -hmm. their business. We can have a conversation with them. We don't want to die over a few days. We can let them have our order. We can wait around in town for a few days. No, I think I think we could negotiate a settle uh, an agreement. We could say, oh, I can't help but over here that you were looking for this order. Um, if some things that you're looking for are in our order, um, we would happily give them to you in exchange for just paying for our lodging. I can't. I can't speak to her. It's too dangerous. <laughs> well, I, I, I can speak to her. Okay. I, and like you'll see, like Ren, I'm very nice. Ren will like sit up and he'll kind of take on a more refined sort of air as he kind of settles into the sort of like courtly persona that he has, and he's a little bit more refined. He's a little bit more elegant, and he's you know the Girl kind of mimics your movements. <laughs> Sorry, Have he mimics ever your movements. Seen yeah, good. Her before Zara in our lifetime. No, you've never seen her before, but you can tell by the clothing that she wears, and she's probably got some sort of. Not quite a crown, but maybe like um, like some sort of tight necklace that mm. would dictate that she is the magistrate. Because you need you need some sort of highly visible marker, usually yeah. a hat of some kind, so that when random see you, that they know that you're a person of interest. So I think for the magistrates, it is like um, not quite a choker, but like a, some sort of collar. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna tell the party the plan that I think will work is we play dumb like we don't know that she's guarding. But no, and we'll go up and we'll pick up the order. And if she stops us, we'll be like, oh, oh, of course you can have these. But like, but um, we're gonna have to wait around for a few days. Could you pay for our lodgings? And like, that's all we want. And that I think that's our best approach because she gets what she wants, and it's nothing financially to her. Now technically, she could just take it from us. Um, she might. But if she does that, then we can let her. I mean, just an out of character. <clears throat> but if you do that and you just ask for your lodging to be paid for, you're gonna have to pay for the glass again. Because no, you... she's hyped no, I would, I would, I would, I would say like, oh, you can have the glass, but just pay us for what it was pay cost, what and it we'll. And then, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Presumably, yeah. she's already paid for her glass when she ordered it. Mm. Oh, maybe, just yeah. like, just like Orson paid for her glass when she exactly. ordered it. Exactly. Yeah. Right? So... you're right. Yeah. So, uh, does anyone have an objection to this plan? I think that can work. What is an objection? Uh, it's when you say no. Oh, no, I say yes. Okay, perfect. Um, good growl. I'll give him another biscuit. Uh, <laughs> you can handle this, Ren? I can handle this, yeah, of course. Okay. You've spoken I... to wizards like that before? <laughs> no. You can't, speak to her. <laughs> you can't speak to her how you spoke to me. Of course not. You understand that, right? Of course not, my lord. Okay. So I will dust myself off, try to make myself as presentable as possible. I will- He's gonna use the ferret and steal. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, how, what level five did I get from her? <laughs> uh, I will lay the ferret around my shoulders, just sleeping, kind of like a fashion piece, and I'll take on a slightly more courtly, pompous air, and I will bring my bear gnome uh, with me, and we will make our way- The rare, the rare, <laughs> rare bear gnome. Oh, now I want gnome bears, like yeah, a little. Stick the, stick the gnome on him. He turns to a Yeah. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna, kind of, we're, we're just like nonchalantly making our way up. We walk up the steps. We knock on the door. Yeah. Well, it's also worth noting that um, when he's a gnome, he looks very much like his human form, but just more diminutive and gnomish. But like the face translates. So if you mm. saw him in human form and then you saw him in gnome form, you'd be like, is, That's the same guy. Is it the? Are, are they related? Yeah. What is going on here? Like, yeah. there's enough of resemblance that you can tell. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but the idea that it was a polymorphed no would not occur. It would be not more unless like, you were already suspecting. That's so weird. Magic. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. So, I'll just brazenly walk up to the door. Um, plan yeah, as hand. you get to the door, like you don't even get up close enough to knock. But when it becomes clear that you're headed for that door, you'll hear a "You halt!" Uh, I halt. And I'll, I'll I'll turn around and. And Zara will like stride up to you with long, quick steps. 
Um, I'll the two of you. take note of how she looks. She's a black and white wizard, did you say? She's a black wearer wizard. I'll, she's black and I'll be like, ah, oh, yes, my lady, how may I help you? I have the next order here. Hello. Oh. I'm Carl. I'm from very far away. <laughs> Do you? I, I believe our order was put in a long time ago. Uh, and I've been sent here specifically by my patron to pick them up. Um, but You're doing a job. We're not in a massive rush, so if you would like to jump the queue, that's more than, more than amenable to me. She looks at you, she looks at the door that the gnome has gone back into, um, and you can tell that she wants to, like... Give me a charisma check, actually. Sure. <laughs> it's like my dump stat. Uh, it's a nine. Eight plus three is Hello. eleven. Okay. It's a dump stat, dude. Not it's not yeah. good. You can tell that there is, um, there are lots of thoughts running across her face at the same time. You don't know what they mean. Uh, what's your charisma? Seven. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a charisma check, Bear. Seven plus eight is fifteen. Wait, that's not that's a D20. Like, that's not a D20. That is not a D20. Thank you. Do that nat twenty. Nineteen. Nineteen. Nice. Nineteen. That's plus twenty-six. Oh, you said you're from far away. <laughs> 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 Um, now, you've been trying to learn how to adapt with humans, yes. right? You've been trying to like read these expressions. And so when you see this woman, you understand the expression of um, what you want is something you can't ask for because it would get in your way. Like you, you felt that on your face yes. and learned how to correct that. Yes. And so you see this, this thing passing across her face where she like clearly wants, but cannot even express her want because it would be wrong, yes. inappropriate. Um, but there, there's, she has to hold back her speech as you offer this like very polite thing. Mm -hmm. And there's this like hard emotion across her. Yeah. Do, do you have any, does the bear even care? I'm Kyle, I'm <laughs> from far away. It's nice to meet you. I'll turn and put my attention on Grau as he speaks. I was like, this is Grau. It's from far away. Are you related? to these tinker gnomes oh no i'm from from far away from far away i don't have any relatives not at all i see perhaps we can reach an agreement milady um i would suggest that uh if items in my order fit the bill of what you need um you've already paid they will not take my order until the last one is picked up. Ah, okay. Yeah, but we could pick our order up, and if there's anything that you need from ours, you you can you can have that, and you pay for the extra pieces, and everyone gets what they want. You are the most gracious. <laughs> Who are you, and what do you do? Uh, my name is Renfair. I'm an entertainer, and I'll kind of tickle the ferret, and he'll run down my arm. Ferret's high. Um, <laughs> but not anymore. No, not anymore. <laughs> And I'll say... Uh, what does an entertainer need with glassware? Uh, my patron requires it. Um, we're doing a job. We're doing a job. Who is your patron? Uh, I think I'm working with a middleman. Um, so I'm not sure. I think there was... It's a whole thing. I almost died on the way here. <laughs> um, but suffice to say, uh, it's, it's probably some researcher in one of the schools or something who wants to know. I don't know her name. Yeah. I don't know... Nate, I don't know her name. Or his name. I mean, I'm not like, I mean, it's not even that well paid a job, so I'm not really like, I'm not in a hurry. She, get your glass. So I make my way into the house. I knock, knock, knock. Yeah, um, the, the little door opens. It comes up to, you know, maybe the midst of your thighs. And uh, of course they see, they see growl. And the gnome just opens up it in uh, the common tongue because, you know, you never know what type. Of, I mean, you're obviously a forest gnome. They're a tinker gnome different species. They're a little bit taller than you are. Um, you people live in trees, they live underground or in houses or something like that. Uh, and so they kind of like, ah, cousin, welcome. What, are, what can we do for you? Would you like to come in? Would you like a meal? Yes, yes, I would like. Yes, I'm very cousin. hungry. Thank and you they, very they open much. the door. Do they, do they open the big door for me? No, they open the small door for him. I, I say, uh, Grau, I also need to come in. This is my friend. Can he come in for food? Fr friends share meals? The gnome looks up and goes, oh, well, that's a lot of food. I'm not hungry, I say. Oh, well, um, any friend of a friend is a friend of mine. 
God, I love gnomes. <laughs> uh, and then they shut the small door, and you hear like a plop, plop, plop of someone going up a stair, and then like a clink, 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 clink of locks being undone, and then it. Is the lady still standing there? She's standing there with her hands on her hips, like 15 feet away. As the door opens, and the two of you walk in, and the door shuts. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, what do I see in this house? Because it's, it's like a normal sized house, but gnomes are living in it? Yes, and so it's been modified by gnomes. And you've got these like, imagine this room, right? But you have like a layer that comes out about halfway through on the walls that comes out to about the, not quite the middle, but where this table would be. So you've got like double floors along the perimeter, but mm. with like human walking space in the mm. middle. That's cool. Mm. Very mm -hmm. cool. Well, the gnomes have like little stairs on the side. They've got little stairs, there's little balconies, uh, and this front atrium is sort of like a greeting area, and there's like a little seating spot where there's like not the thing that sticks out, and there's like a little booth for people to sit. Mm -hmm. But you can see through the open door, there's like a glass smelting shop in there. You can feel like it's hot in here. It's really hot in here. It's kind of, kind of humid. Yeah. I let the, I, I turn to the gnome and say, I'm here to pick up uh, Autumn's order. Oh, yes! waiting for that. That's been done for just a little bit. Um, well, of course, I'm so glad that you've come. We, we cannot take a new order until the last one is gone because there's just not enough room on the shelves or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And you know, you've got to finish a job before you start a new one. That's just proper work ethic. You could never have two jobs going at the same time, right? Yes. Yeah, it would just never be possible. So so thank you so much for coming and pick up the order. We've been waiting for it. She's paid up front. Um, it's going to be a lot of glass. Do you have a cart to pull it in? Because it's a lot of stuff and I know you're going the long distance because Autumn always orders things from far away. She's always got new people coming. I never the car. Before. We Oh, you pull the cart. Oh, that's pull the cart. Yes. Okay, good. So, uh, if you could bring the cart up front, then we can get the glass in. There's many, many pieces of glass, and they're a little bit fragile. We've got some. We've got some hay that we can put with them. We've got some bags. We can. We can put them all close together, and then it'll be fine. And then they'll all fit in the cart nice and neatly. And then you should be able to take it away. But the are already paid. Don't worry. There's no tipping. Tipping is a, a pretty abusive system. You don't need to tip around this place. So it's going to be fine. Just. Um, just I agree. By. Uh, you know, um, I do, and I kind of like kneel down. Is he is he standing on one of the levels? Uh, no, she's just sitting on the floor. She's on the floor. sitting on the floor. I'll kneel down to her and I'll say, um, I do think I have a little bit of a problem. Oh, that's okay. You know, no, I there's a lady. Small things are not that big of a deal. Small things are great. I love small things. Me, and my buddies are all. Okay, small. let me let me you know? rephrase that. I've got a really big problem, like oh, bigger than that's me. That's actually very difficult because if you've got a dragon-sized problem, then you're gonna have a lot of fire around your hands. I've got a magic. Why don't you tell me about your problem? Because maybe we can help. You know, it's always possible that we can help you out. Um, you know, we might be small, but we're mighty and we're smart. And we can also, you know, we, we got a lot of skills, we got a lot of glass blown. Maybe we can put your problem in a glass bottle. That always helps. You know, you put ships in the bottle, you can put problems in a bottle, it's be wonderful. So like picking up how gnomes talk, I'm gonna start talking to her in like gnome comment. I'm gonna be like, well look, the problem that we have is there's a magistrate outside and she's really, really angry and she really wants some glass bottles. Oh, and I think you've made some glass bottles and we wanna get those glass bottles to her. Uh-huh. Well, so we what we need to do, yeah, yeah, I know, I, I get that. But we're going to give her our glass bottles, and then you'll make extra glass bottles. Well, and she's we'll got to create an order. It has to go through the process. Here's what we'll do. Okay, we'll fulfill our order, and then we'll get gold off her, and then we'll fulfill an extra order, and then we'll be. It'll be like you it'll did two orders. Days to make that That's happen. totally fine. I'll stay in a I'll stay in a tavern. We'll just get a little bit of gold, a little bit of money. It'll be totally fine. Well, well as long as you got the money, as long as you got the specifics of the order, and you got to expect to accept things, it'll be fine. One hundred percent. We can oh, totally do lovely. that. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Oh, this doesn't sound like a big problem. This sounds actually quite very manageable. Yeah, actually, actually, I feel a lot better now that I've talked about it. <laughs> um, well, why don't you pick the car about that? Wait, how do you pull the car? You're very small. It must be a very large car to pull these things. I mean, you can just be a large, but they're large small. But, you know, the illusionists don't really have a lot of the large balls. But also, like, how, that won't last for very long. So, how do you pull the car back and pull this glass? That seems really like a very difficult task. I mean, forest gnomes aren't known for their great strength, but they are known for their interesting houses. Do you want these glasses for your house? Does Autumn live in a house that's made of a tree? Do you live in Autumn? Are you Autumn's servant? Or are you Autumn's slave? Or are you just Autumn's friend? Or does she just hire you to do things? It's really weird that you can pull a car that big, though. I mean, it's a lot of glass. It's taking us months to blow. But do you, do you alter blow glass? What do you do for a gun? What do, are you are you the bakers? I've heard about the bakers. Elves that live in the trees. I think it's the Keebler family. They're very good. They live nearby. They actually live in. Oh, are you part I'm, of? Oh I'm, my God, the I'm gonna do so like the finger thing and like. <laughs> <laughs> There's like an interest as the finger comes towards. And I'm just like. What does that gesture mean? I'm not. Oh, just, I've just seen a gesture just, about just, like just, few different people, but I'm mean, still not sure what it means. Uh, like, like I need weird. you to be quiet. I need you to be quiet. Other people need to talk. I like pinch the lips. <laughs> 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 and I just say, and he's just like sat down in like a bear pose, and he's just like looking around. And he's like, <laughs> Why don't you before. make my friend dinner? Oh I'm... my god, I completely forgot about the dinner. We should have, we offered you dinner because we not but so much food with us. Uh, sweetie, 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 but it's like we have a guest here and another guest, but the other guest doesn't even the large guest doesn't even. We need food for the small guest. And then the gnome hurries up and 
freeze out while still talking in order to go make you dinner. So I go back outside、uh, <laughs> to the Zena. What's her name? Zeal. Zeal. Zena. Zara. 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 I go back out to Zara, and I say, "Okay,、uh, I think we might be able to make this work.、Uh, do you have your order and the gold for it? And I'll get it fixed up for you right now." Composure. <laughs> <laughs>、um, yes, this is what I need. And she produces a list, and she produces a small bag of gold and silver mixed together. Okay, brilliant.、Um, well, do you want to pop in with me, and you can pick out the things you need? Why don't you bring it out, and I will inspect it to see if it matches my needs. Totally.、Um, oh, getting new glass made. That'll take a few days. I couldn't bother you for if, like I don't have much money for traveling. I couldn't bother you for the couple of silvers for my inconvenience. She reaches into a pocket and just pulls out five gold and just drops it. I take it. I'm like on the floor. You're so gracious.、Uh, I'm, he's fast. I'm sure. I I, 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 I grab it. I'm like you're so gracious, my lady. It's been a pleasure doing business with you. I'll be out with us. Ren with now. of the Fair family. Ren Fair. Well, it's that's a stage name. I see. Yeah. Where are you from, Ren Fair? Oh, you know.、Uh, I used to live nearby, and I, you know, I, I'm a bit of a wanderer. I like living alone. I'm kind of a hermit. I like to live in. A, I'm terribly boring, unless I'm entertaining, and then I'll wiggle the ferret. <laughs> <laughs> and who did you say your patron was? I'm the magistrate of this area. I know anyone that's worth knowing. Um, it's my I, job it, to know. Towards the swamp area, I don't actually know their name. Okay. Thank you. I wait. The return of your glass. Thank you so much. I'll be back in a moment, and I'll pop back into the house, and I'll start. I I, I kind of don't know very well, like what this glass wears. It's like a volumetric flask. Like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I just kind of start. To, I like. I'm like a flask. Okay. The,、uh, everything well, flask like. You have to bring the cart by, right? Did we not have it with us?、Uh, I don't know if you did. You bring it up to the door? We would have、yeah, had it. I, yeah. yeah. Pulled it. I could have pulled, pulled it. You could have pulled it. I could have pulled okay. it. Okay.、Yeah. See,、so yeah, it's up at the door already.、Um, and so when you go in, you know, there's a couple of gnomes who have come out and they're starting to set different pieces of glass on the little walkways around, and you can start moving it in. And they've got some sacks with hay that you can like pull hay out of, like you、mm -hmm. know, make it all nice and soft. And I'm going to try to specifically only take out the things that I think she might want,、mm -hmm. so as not to reveal the nature of like what this、mm -hmm. entire set could be used for. Excellent.、Mm -hmm. Oh, natural twenty. Yeah, the first three things you pull out are the three things that she needs.、Oh, so,、bam. godlike. Yeah, this done. Is,、uh, and she takes them and she thanks you politely, but with clear restraint and frustration. I will give her a huge whatever the gesture is that is appropriate for her station. I'll give her a big bow. bow. Whatever bow. I'm showing her, like the respect that she deserves, keeping her composure. She accepts it and she walks away. What's her hotness roll? Oh shit, Zara. The wizard, the magistrate of Verasi. Oh, damn it! <laughs> she is kind of a babe, though. She. What was my hotness roll? I mean, it wasn't seventeen. Oh <laughs> shit! God damn! I'm right, my thumb. I go to the notes. Yeah, give her a little bit more. Yeah, you know? maybe you can get She's her to dinner. Silky black hair. It's done back. The robes are form fitting. She's got that like nice clear complexion. The big eyes. The dark lashes. You know, it's it's um it's that math teacher you were telling us about. Oh,、um, absolutely. You know. I'll I'll like you know in the course of the <laughs> in the course of the conversation, I'll say to her, well, you know, if you're ever looking for an entertainer for your for your house, you know, I can pop by and I'll kind of give her a little like like a roguish wink, you know, like I'm. I would love to have your contact information. I <laughs>、uh, I live in a swamp. I don't. I don't have an address. Then how could I ever reach out to you? Well, I always stop in the, and I'll give the name of the tavern that I I stay in. In the town.、Mm -hmm. I see. In Valeberg or whatever. So if you happen to be in town. And if I happen to check the taverns the day you're in town, you well, would you be happy leave, to do performed work. You could leave a message in the tavern for me. I see. That's not exactly reliable. Well, I mean, I pop by every month or two. I see. 
Good day, Ren. Bear. It's been an absolute pleasure. Mm. And I'll give her another big sweeping bow. She give her a charisma check. You gotta, you gotta give me a little bit. Give her a charisma check. Oh, it's a not 20! Oh, Alright. It was... It was my fun. Oh, okay. okay. Right. Yeah, you, you roll the nat 20, you do the bow, you do the wink, like... You're doing all the right things, but the information you're giving her is completely useless. You're like, hit me up if you need something, baby, but I don't live here, I'm never in town, it's like, impossible to get a hold of me. And like, that's just her type. Like, the guy who's always unavailable, and is just like, charming, but completely useless. Like, she like, turns to walk away. There's like, like a... I can oh. fix him. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Um, that worked out well. <laughs> this one thing, it always rolled the dice. Yeah, all right. Well, um, what was it with your charisma on? It would have been a 28. 28. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, that's great. Uh, well, it doesn't take too much longer for the cart to be filled up with things. Grau is destroying whatever meal he's been served here. Yeah, well, they're he's... making bread and they bring you some bread, but then you eat the bread really quickly. And so yeah. then they bring you some of their salted fish, but then you eat the salted fish right away. And you don't know this, but Tinker Known Society is. You have to keep feeding your guests until they're full. <laughs> yes. And Rao keeps putting away everything they make. And yep. soon, like, they're the frantic barrel in the background. <laughs> is like being opened, and the belly of this little like, forest gnome is like getting to the point of bursting, and yet he's still hungry. <laughs> um, what are you gonna And I should say, while they're doing this, they're asking about your life. Oh, yeah. Well, in, in great detail. Do you, are you married? Do you have kids? How many kids do you have? Because I know that Tinker Gnomes like to have lots of children. You know, we, we, we get to a lot, we do a lot of work and we burns a lot of calories. We gotta burn our calories another way and we gotta do a lot of things. Do you have a lot of family? Do you have a lot of kids? Uh, what, what's your wife's name? I don't see any rings on your hands. Uh, does that mean you're single? Do you do, do date for uh, Tinker Gnomes? Because we've got some kids in the neighbors. They're not very nice, but we would love to have maybe have some other options. You would like to see one of our kids? Susie, Susie. I mean, unless you would like to see Bobby. Would you like to see Bobby or Susie? Uh, Susie, come here. We have a, we have a suitor for you, Susie. Okay, uh, crowd, this is Susie. Susie, this is a, this is my first daughter. Uh, Susie, this is Grau, and Susie's like, hi, hi, Susie. She's too young to like, you know, she's still in that adolescent phase where you know the, the speech isn't quite so rapid, and she gives you a bit of a wave. <laughs> hi, I'm Grau. I'm from far away. <laughs> oh wow, that's a great name. I'm Susie. I'm from right here. Nice to meet you, Susie. I'm Grau. I'm from far away. Oh, it's very <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, oh, would do you, would you like to go for a walk? What, 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 a walk? A walk? Like out in the forest? Yes! Yes? <laughs> yes? She looks to mom, mom nods encouragingly, and uh, you know, <laughs> starts packing some food in like a little napkin and ties it together and hands it to you and says, Well, why don't the two of you take a walk? I'm sure you're each at least 45 years old and it'll be fine. That's the appropriate age for them to speak in dating. So off you go! And uh, when you come back, you know, however it goes, whether it's good or bad, you always have a place here. We're always happy to be guests. You're always, you're always welcome as a guest in our house. And we love to have more gnomes around here. It's a very human centric and works in your area. There's not often a lot of people of our type here. And I know, you know, forest gnome taken are very, very different, but like, we're, we're basically cousins, and but not that type because it's totally. You two should uh, like, really have, feel free to have a good time together and you know explore the world and see the woods. But they're a little bit dangerous. You gotta watch out for the displacer beasts and, and the other creatures. But you know the vampire keeps the monsters down, so it's probably fine. And what am I doing? I'm, I'm just getting in the way. True love. It's just a few. I mean, go on, kids, have a good time. <laughs> and she'll uh, hurry the two of you out the door. And little Susie will, um, you know, she's a little bit bigger than you. She's a tinker gnome, so she's a little taller already. And. Uh, Jill to take the sack of food. Growl like steps outside, he like, there's a pillar to this house, he like scratches his back <laughs> on it, he like lets out a massive fucking burp. <laughs> I'm Growl! I'm from bad and far away! <laughs> Give me a charisma check, Growl. 17. Oh, one. nice. Plus? Yeah, that is a d20. 17 plus 7 is 24. <laughs> She's a what, it, man? <laughs> She's only met Tinker Gnomes before. And here is this forest gnome. He's from far away. He's from far away. He's got his accent. And he's not observing the societal rules. This bad boy is scratching his back on the post. Oh la la. Oh. Um, and yeah, I guess she will begin to lead you out of the city, which is the same way that everyone else is going. 
Right. Well, no, Wes stayed in the state. No? Yeah, they need to stay. Well, but you, you're going city. back to where he is, and that's the same direction. Yeah. Oh yeah, so I would, I would, she would know. I'd stay in the city too. That's the best part. What I have seen when Zara and her guards left. Zara, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think when they leave, I'll give them a few moments, then I'll head back like towards the. Yeah, well, you head back in, building. and then you see this large gnome holding the hand of Mini Growl. Yeah. And the large gnome also has a bag of food in the other hand, and I think that, you know, she's taking the lead with the bag of food. It's Growl is coming along. Yeah. And... yeah. We're going to come back in like 20 episodes, and Zara's going to be like, I've been thinking about you. Um, so, so wait, he's going on a picnic date? Yeah. He's being led away with food right now. Do with that what you will, but he is like not in control of the situation. He's just going along with whatever is happening. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll tell her or tell you. Be like, oh, I'll be back at the tavern tonight. Tonight, like, like <laughs> he what? doesn't know what tavern. I, oh, you before. weren't at the tavern. Yeah. We'll meet you back here. Wait, you'll bring him back, right? I'll say right. to the girl gnome. Well, eventually. What? Okay. I don't like to think about what those gnomes are going to do. <laughs> Red, what happened? I, I, and they I go. draw you off. Uh, the gnomes go. All right, uh, you guys can talk about what happened. We can... I'll tell them, well, you know, I displayed the <clears throat> habits of my station, good sir. I charmed a black witch with my wit <laughs> and uh, beauty. You charmed her, did you? Absolutely. You should have seen it. I think she likes older men. She was, uh, she was, she was nice looking for a, for a... I prefer personality and particularly actually black witches because you know, or black wizards, sorry. Um, the thing is right about a red she wizard. She like a witch. Well, some people like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I say the thing about a red wizard is you never know where you stand, right? You good, you bad, white, white wizard, a little bit too do-gooder, they do a lot of nice, yeah, but a black wizard, they're always out for themselves, and when you know what someone wants, you can just give them what they want, and then they will, might give you what you want. Well, your perversions aside, did she get her glassware? Oh, oh yeah, good? yeah, we're good, we, we got our stuff. We will probably have to wait, I think the gnome said like maybe three days. We get some gold for the... Oh yeah, and I'll jingle out like five gold coins, I'll, I'll flick one to you. I catch it. Was, so it all went according to plan then. Was that yeah. bag of gold that um, she gave him the entire payment? Or was there stuff left? Uh, there will be a little left over. There's more money in there There's than the things will well, cost. You will end up with a two gold extra you can add it to your sheet. Red nice. is what you wish John was. Yeah, so, yeah. that's what I <laughs> thought. Yeah. 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 So does that mean in total I ended up with plus seven, seven gold. gold? Yeah, but you're going to have to spend some of that on lodgings Lodging. for everyone. So. Yeah. yeah, but I, I'll write seven down for now. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll spend later. Uh, but anyway, the gnomes are going to head out the front door, and I think you're near this. I was about case. to say, it's going to be really complicated if no one comes out, because then I'm going to have to come to the city as a bullywug. Right. It's going to get a little messy yeah, here. But thankfully, they... Growl's on his way out I don't with a date. But he looks like Growl. He looks like but Growl. But he's a gnome. But he's a gnome. But you know <laughs> that he changes shapes. Yeah, I'm going to let him But come he looks out. like Growl. I, I, well, I feel like I notice you. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> see a guy far away from the gates with a very black coat, yeah. cloak, and he's like kind of sitting there with his little frog hands, but he's trying to like hide him. Gar! Go! Go, hello! I get up. It's me, it's, I'm Go, I'm from far away. Do you remember? I'll, like, I'm Go. Go like this over. <laughs> this oh, is this my... your friend? Oh this my god, your friend is he your friend? Wow, oh, you have lots of friends, that's really weird because you've got so many friends and they're all so tall. Wow, oh, this one's so dark and mysterious. Are those weird flesh feet? Oh my god, that's so fascinating. You know, I haven't seen any creatures with feet before. What type of creature is this? Hello! Hello, Grouse friend! I'm the Grouse Dean! Nice she's coming over? You. Yeah, she's coming over. I'm Susie, I'm Grouse friend, nice to I'll meet you. undo the helmet. Ooh! <laughs> wow, look at you, look at those big eyes. That's, that's really fascinating. I've never seen a creature like you before. What are you called? What's your race? What's your species? Give a look How to, I give a look to Grouse. away. What, what, how many family do you have? Are you married? Do you have kids? Anyone? Can you tell me about Crow? And like, she's trying out her adult speech, right? She's trying, she's on a date. She's trying to oh, act like see, a proper yeah. adult by the fast speech to like impress your yeah. friends. And also she's not been able to get like any information out of Crow because like, have you ever like started learning a, learning a language and then someone talks it yeah. extremely quickly at you? There's no yeah, chance Crow's no, getting no, no, any no. of what she's saying. Mm -hmm. He's just going along with the food. And she's, she's doing her best. I'll say, uh, do I know this about gnomes? About Tinker Gnomes? Yeah, you've heard of it remotely, but I don't think you've had a lot of dealings with them. We don't like the fast speech, kid. Talk slow, and maybe he'll understand you. 
Oh, I'm from far away. I don't. I understand. I try. I don't understand well. Yeah. Yes. Good. See? This is this is good. Yes. Yeah? Yes. This is good. Yes. You like when I speak slowly. Yes, this is very good. Yes, yes. I can speak slowly for you. Thank you very much. That's so good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's no good. <laughs> uh... Hi, I'm Susie. I'm Browns D. Susie what? Uh, Susie, Susie Blower? I'll let you two, uh, I'll let you get the line. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm Garth, and uh, this is my friend Grau. He's from far away. I'm from far away. Yes. So nice to meet you, Grau. It's nice to meet uh, Garth. It's been nice to meet many of Grau's friends. Yes. You two are going to be together soon, so I think that it's nice that uh, we're getting to meet. When is the marriage, do you think? <laughs> this is just the first date. It takes many to get married. What is a date, Carl? <laughs> uh, a date's what you guys are on right now. You know, a date is where you sit down and you eat food together. Oh, I like that. We've been on lots of dates, Gal. <laughs> 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 My frog eyes bulge. No, we are. I did, Gal. I did. <laughs> you, you met my friend Ren earlier. We go on lots of dates. <laughs> oh. Well, here's his new estate, so please have a have a seat. Do you know where my um my friend is? The older man. Did you see him with him? And oh, so the he two humans. Exactly. Yes. They said they were staying in the city for a few days. Okay, everything's fine. Uh, yes. They picked up their merchandise, and they bought some new stuff that will take Ma and Pa a few days to blow. Yes. Okay. Yeah, mind <laughs> <laughs> are we are we seen? From anywhere except for by Susie and Garth. You know, there's probably some guards on the walls that, that can see you, but okay. uh, they, they don't give a shit. If I kind of sneak <clears throat> off and maybe into the trees a little bit, they would probably lose yeah. sight. Yeah. Because the thing is, my belly is fucking bursting oh. at this mm. point, and I'm still hungry. But you've already transformed today. I can transform back into a bear whenever yes. I Yes, but, but you can't transform back into something else. Into a gnome yes. or a human, you could do a fork. I would a only have my. Is it a fuller or a It's a fuller. Fuller? Okay. That's I right. I only have my orc left today yeah. until sunrise. Right. Okay. Do you have to sleep or is it sunrise? Sunrise. Sunrise. Okay. Um, yeah. Grau will move out a line of sight of the, of the guards and he will. <laughs> and he'll lean out. <laughs> and like, Susie bolts. <laughs> I, I, I try and grab her. Uh, give me what? a strength check? <laughs> uh, 18 plus 17. Oh yeah, you, you easily grab hold of this tiny gnome and restrain her as whatever extent you need. Yeah. Kind of pull her into the forest. <laughs> oh my god, he's a bear! He's a bear! Susie, Susie, Susie. He's a druid, and he just changed into his bear form to eat. He's a druid. Garp, is that you? <laughs> Crow, is that you again? <laughs> and I tap my paw. And then I will, like, I point to the food and I like, point. Uh, give me a charisma check, Grau. <laughs> oh, that's dead. 11 plus 7 is 18? I I think the date's over. And she will drop the knapsack of food. And I'm still holding on to it. Um, would you please let me return to my home? Yes. I'd like it over. Thank you, friend mm -hmm. of Grau. Nice meeting you. Um, I mm -hmm. hope that we can get our order and... Um, my buddy Rao will be back soon for more dates. Your that's, parents love him. That's okay. No, I insist. I don't want to date a man who turns into a bear. We don't always get what we want. <laughs> I'm afraid he would break the house. You see, we blew glass, and he got very large, and it could damage everything. But he controls it. I mean... He does look soft. Yeah, go, go pet him. Gar's feeling very self-conscious right now and feels rejected because he's, <laughs> oh. he thought she was his friend. 
Oh. And they were on a date and it was nice. So oh. if he's with his friends, he feels comfortable to turn back yeah. into a bear. Oh. But he's done this before and gotten rejected. <laughs> so this is bringing up a lot of feelings. Oh, right. I'm, I'm, helping, I'm helping you out right now. She looks at the bear. Gives her big bear give, eyes. Make, her, make a morale check. Because you're a bear and she's a tiny girl. So right. He's like digging his claws into the ground. She uh, tentatively approaches the bear and kind of quietly goes, Get out. <laughs> Carl, are you in there? She like reaches out a hand to your snout and gives it like a little rub. He's very soft. It's kind of wiry, but it's kind of soft and nice. He's a good protector. That's why we keep him around. I see. And she like gets a little bit closer and does the like leaning into the bear and goes, Oh, it's so cozy. <laughs> um, I pull out a skillet and I will pull out three candles and I'll light them. And I'll get their little picnic blanket, and I'll, you know, oh. create them a little scene. That's oh, nice. nice. Yeah. Oh, that's it's sweet. heartwarming. That's Thank good. You. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, um, well, I'm um, growl. Do you turn into a half orc or to an orc later in front of her? Um, I think I'm chilling in the woods right now. I think I'm very content with where I am. Okay. Um, I need you to. I I can handle this. Okay. When it's like the night continues on. Yeah, when the date goes and the food is gone. The food is gone. Susie, I think that I, um, I said he's my, our protector, yeah? Yeah. Well, my friends are staying inside the city. Would you mind if I, me and Brow spend the night out here? I don't want to be all alone in the forest. I heard that there's displacer beasts out here. Well, uh, if anyone's going to protect you, it's a forest gnome who can turn into a bear. Exactly. Does that mean I should go home? Yes, but maybe I grow up and come tomorrow morning? That would be nice. Really? I have much to tell my parents. <laughs> Good. Maybe keep the bear part to yourself. He likes to keep that kind of a secret, and he felt really, um... I'm sure it was very personal for him to show you that. Well, that's Ooh. kind of an important thing. I really <laughs> wanted someone to talk to about that. Maybe mm. let him tell your parents? Ooh. Brown, will you tell him tomorrow? I look at uh, I look at him like, why would you fuck me like this? <laughs> <laughs> he said, yes, I speak very little bit. Oh, thanks, Brown. I will keep your secret till tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, goodbye, Susie. Uh, Blower. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Turning into a bear? Out here. I point at the empty bag of food. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know if there's much more role playing to be done in the city. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Like you just wait a couple of days and then you can leave. What happens with him? That's the only thing we got to do. What time is it? Uh, oh, cool. It's half four. Okay. So we should. We can call it here and come back. Um, well, let's at least yeah. finish out the Susie Grau storyline, okay. and then we'll okay. end with us leaving the city. Sure, right. yeah, sounds good. Grau. Yes. What do you do come morning? Um, right, nice. Okay, so we have an issue, obviously. Because I entered the city yesterday as a human, introducing myself as Grau, and I left as a gnome. They, do, would they have taken note that we had left? No, so, anyone can leave, but they okay. check who comes in. Okay, so it would be plausible that... Okay, I'm going to turn into a gnome mm -hmm. on the next morning. Yeah, you garb all night and just shit talk to you for doing this. <laughs> <laughs> you are one of the dumbest people I've ever met. If Ren was here, I would have left you. I cannot believe that I have to deal with this now, and now I have to talk to some stupid fucking gnome all day. <laughs> And now you're going to be a gnome again. I hate gnomes. They talk too much. <laughs> Strau, in his bear form, is just, he like looks at you very intently. He's always listening because he's always listening for new words to learn and to add to his speech. And he'll just nod along and like, <laughs> dig his claws a little bit. I'll feel good because I'll feel like you're getting it. You know, I'm yeah, yelling yeah. at you and you're like, yeah, I really did fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talk back because I'm a bear. So yeah. I'm like, so yeah, I, Gar vent, I've been for a while, and then uh, eventually, you know, you keep doing the thing. I'm like, all right, you you get it, you do it more. Okay, you've learned your lesson now. Nice. Now go in there and woo that girl and her parents. <laughs> all right, you're a druid. You're a sorry. You're a. It's hard for you because I know you're a bear. 
<laughs> but what you're going to tell her is the normal thing. Uh, you are a forest gnome who's a druid. And you love food, and you turn into a bear to eat more food. Because you were full. And you're going to compliment their food at the end of that. Turn into a gnome. Now, same thing happens. You go in the city, they ask who you are, what your business is, you're proud you're from far away. Yeah. They check to see if you have any money to make sure that you can stay, that you're not like just going to be a beggar on the city streets, but Rao is broke. He's got a goal. I got one goal, but he gave me a reason. Oh, city. that's true. Yeah. So when the guards ask you how long you're staying, what do you say? Does Growl have a concept of. Um, he, I mean, he would know days, and we yeah. talk, yeah. Um, just an idle tool, yes. They'll let you in. Sorry. Just an idle tool, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah, yeah, they, okay. they just pass you on through. Thank you very much. I'm Growl, yes. Yes, yes. Okay. You're bouncing through the streets. Yeah, you you can follow the smell right back to, to little Sue's house. Yes, and uh, it can come on back up to the door and. I think before I left the forest, I picked a flower. Oh. 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 So lovely, Charlotte. Um, because I feel like Autumn would have told me that you know gifts and little little bits, you know. Of course, yeah. Yes. Everyone loves a gift. Yes. So I come. Or oh, I'll, I'll knock on the door. <laughs> yep, the, the little door opens, There, there's uh, the, the, the mom gnome who's in charge of everything, and she sees you and she goes, Oh, wow, it's so nice to see you. Susie tells me you like it slow. Yes, yes, that's very good, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, yes. Um, I have brought you this, I'm Gao from far away. I'll give her the flower, because I don't know who I'm supposed to. She takes it. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I, and he's, he's so, this is so overwhelming for him socially. Uh, I need to say something to you. Um, I, Susie, um, yesterday, she, uh, we, she got a bit scared by something I did. Well, and... that shouldn't happen until the fourth date. Oh, I've I've been on many dates with people who's out some getting scared. So it's <laughs> Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I your food is very delicious delicious, very good. I eat so much of it. I eat so much of it. The fish? The fish. The fish was so good. And so I I didn't tell tell you and I'm sorry. I am Druid. Druid. Yes. Druid. Yes. Oh, yes. And sometimes I get very hungry when the food is very good, and I go out and I turn into the bear. Scare. The, the bear. I, I know, it's very, very scary bear, yes. But bears are also nice sometimes. Um, you, you pro there's nice bears. Um, and I'm a very nice bear, so when I went out with Susie, I was so hungry, and I, I turned into the bear, and I think Susie got very scared. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, I, I'm sorry if I scared her. So you're a druid? Yes. Forest gnome? Yes. From far away? Very far, very far away. I'm glad. And if you and Susie got married, would you live here in the city? I don't know what get married means. Oh, the, the forest gnomes. You, you just, you all mix together? I'm from very far away. Right, and then yes. where, where you're from, do they, they all just... Oh, you know, once a season you find a partner and you smell them, and when they smell very nice, you can, you know, do the thing. And then the next you go to sleep, and then the next season you come out, and she maybe has the babies, and maybe you go find another woman in that year to make love to. I see. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm afraid it's not going to work out between you and Susan. She doesn't want to be my friend anymore. I don't want you to be her friend. <laughs> is it going to make her love her more? Is it because bears are scary? 
No, it's because forest gnomes can't commit, at least not where you're from. Because we really need a partner for Susie who's going to be around and be there to ride for her and to be able to live in the city. She needs to be with her family. She needs to see her friends and her colleagues. And, and we're going to go lower. We're going to get a lot of glass. We're going to get a lot of glass. And she's like walking it, slowly just, backwards. And, out and of she the just door. follows with you. You know, she's walking and talking, <laughs> trying to explain it to you that, like, it's really, it's not yes. a compatible lifestyle. Yes. Uh, that it's not personal. It's just we're different people. And, you know, and she goes on and on and tells you how she doesn't want you around her daughter anymore. All right. Wonderful. We handled that. Yeah. I mean, we handled we it pretty good. It. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Uh, so we get the glassware after a few days? Yeah, you get the glassware after a few days. I have a, I have two questions. Uh, how much do I pay for accommodation? Is it 100 silver to uh, one gold? It is the two of you. Grau, do you stay in the city with them, or do you go out of the city every night? Uh, I feel like now I stay with them. OK. Yeah. So it's going to be 10 uh, for the first night. 5, 10, 15. Yeah, 10, 10 the first night. 15 for two more nights, so but a silver, 30, it's 10 silver to one gold. Right, so it's 35 silver, um, plus any other drinks and beverages and lifestyle. I imagine you guys have a lifestyle in the city or not. Let's, Let's say six gold total. A lot of meat pies. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, I had seven, so I have one gold left. Yeah, that's yeah. I drop I drop the one well, full no, gold I have on. Too. I'll pay for it. Yeah, okay. I'll pay for I drop the one full gold I have on meat pies. Excellent, uh, excellent. All right. right. I'd also like to make note of this uh, with Growl. At, Towards the ends of some sessions, um, Rao is very interested in this con interested in this concept of marriage that they talked about, and he's also very interested in the way that you addressed um, Zira, the way that you like you spoke very <laughs> differently to her, and you mm. used words like "milady." So during one night in the tavern, Rao's going to be very careful, like listen to you very carefully as you explain, like what does "milady" mean? When do you say that? Why did you change the tone the way you did? What is this marriage thing? What was this? What is this date thing that they've been talking about? And um, mm. I'm sure that uh, that Ren will tell them a lot about that. Yeah, Ren will explain an awful lot about like uh, you know people have different ranks in society. I'll I'll use like bear metaphors of like bigger bears are scarier. So you acquiesce. You looked at you you make yourself look small to them. Small so bears. Yeah, absolutely. Bears. And <laughs> when somebody is of a higher rank than you, you use honorific terms like. Milady or my lord or whatever is appropriate for their station, um, but you know you can also push a boundary by flirting with them a little bit because sometimes the audacity of someone who's below your station flirting with you is kind of enough to get you in the door. Oh, this is going to make him ask you what flirting is. So this is going to be like a two-hour conversation. Yeah. Oh. So did she ever reach out for him? That's the other question I had. Is did a message ever for the setup for the next episode? Did a message ever come to the tavern? Am I going to dinner? With Sarah. The message did not come to the tavern yet. Okay, yet. Um, can I see your character sheet? Sure. Okay, and can I see your character sheet? Oh, This she's is one of the great things about being at the table, oh, is you can just ask for character sheets and make rolls, and it's so much easier. He's seeing if we're recognizable. Damn. Maybe I shouldn't have flirted. I flirted with danger. Okay. No, it's fine. Um, no messages come for you. So we, so we really quick because we probably have like a four-hour conversation about like human relationships. Is that like a role I can make to kind of gauge how much Grau picks up of this? Yeah, I need you to make me a wisdom check to see if you can pick up on this like emotional, intuitive, social you have a teaching structure. Proficiency? I do not, but I probably should. You should have. I should have taken it. I ran out of <laughs> proficiency slots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You've just forgotten how to teach, probably. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's also, so it's hard to teach a bat. It's mm. hard. So it's it's a wisdom check, yeah. Yeah. So I'll roll and add my wisdom. Yeah. Okay. Um, eight plus thirteen is twenty-one. That's all you needed. So you understand you you grasp the concept yeah. of like flirting. Okay. As much as a bear could do. Yeah. yeah, you know, you rub your scent on the tree, and then does yeah. any other bear come and check it out? Yeah. What is Grau's opinion on human flirting versus bear flirting? And most of this is going to be just this is so fucking complicated, man. Like I don't, I, like a lot of it is like okay, this seems a lot of the concepts you would explain to Grau are like this seems too hard. I don't want to think like when you start explaining like ranks and what they all mean and what like do different. He's like, okay, yeah, maybe it's it's not. Uh, but like he tries to still get like the general concept of it. That's like, the important part. Of it. But he, he thinks it's all like way too complicated. Yeah, you just he much rather the sniff test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. easier. 
Well, that is going to wrap us up for our first session of Saber Die Outcast. All right. Um, we'll be back at the next episode time. Whatever that is, yeah. Whatever that, that is. is. We'll, we'll be posting it in the chat right now because you're viewing this as a live premiere on YouTube right now, and we're in the chat right now. We posted it. We've already posted it. It's right. live. Yeah. You could have skipped to the end and found this out before you watched the whole show. Yeah. You wasted your time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and you we will that? not be in person next time. We'll be in our normal online space. Mm -hmm. Yes. I wish we were in person. And this well, was so yeah, much it's fun. It's going to be like flying economy after flying business. Oh, dude. Sure. I mean, there are conditions under which we can do this again, but that really depends on the depends status on the of the viewers. Patreon. How yeah, yeah. much yeah. the Patreon makes. Absolutely. Well, maybe they don't like this. Yeah, I think maybe. I thought it was awesome. I had a great time, but you know, for sure, okay. different strokes for different folks. I think maybe what's going to happen next is we might be after this premiere going live with an after show. Mm. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, that would be oh, awesome. Yeah. So, if you have any questions, if you're a Patreon, go hit us up there. patreoncom slash or die. We'll get the link. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. Cool. All right. But well, thanks for watching, everybody. Thank and you don't so forget to uh, go to saberdie.com. Also shout out, your dice. shout out to Ooh. Stormcrow and to Stormcrow Manor, Manor. Stormcrow Manor in um, Toronto for hosting us. It was wonderful. Yes. Um, Food is time. amazing here, by yeah. the way. Shout out to the uh, camera team. Thank you so much. And um, shout out to Jess, who supplied us with drinks and food and everything. Yep. Yes, sure. definitely a big shout out to Jess. A lot of work w went in to make this happen. And it went amazingly. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see. Maybe the recording's fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.